Nestled along the sun-kissed shores of the Mediterranean, Valencia is a town that shares many cultures. Now that the Last Fires Festival is over, spring is finally here, and so is the racing. Welcome to Valencia, where spring breathes new life into the vibrant streets of this coastal Spanish city. Just 30 minutes away from the city lies the Catedromo Internacional Lucas Guerrero. This track is a thrilling playground and it hosts the first round of the Mondokart.com FIA Karting European Championship. Year of opening 2014, the lap record set just two weeks ago at the pre-round to this set by Zach Drummond in qualifying 52.991. That is the time that drivers were aiming to beat yesterday. Unfortunately, no one got near it. The track itself, though, an absolutely superb venue. 210 metres the main straight, 135 metres the back straight. Total track length, 1,428 metres. The track being nine metres wide with only two metres of elevation. It is a flat circuit, but it is a very fast circuit. The amount of turns out there, there are many of them. 19 in total, 11 to the right, eight to the left, and the one hairpin. There are many overtaking opportunities around this track. The biggest one being in towards turn number one, you can send it right down that inside line, but you've got to be careful on the exit. In towards turns three and four, uh, six and seven, you've got 11, 12 and 13. And of course that final chicane where we saw lots of overtakes yesterday, and I'm sure we'll see many over the course of today as well. Top speed these drivers will be reaching is around 132 kilometers an hour. That will be into the braking zone of the final chicane and into the braking zone of turn number one. Average speed around 97 kilometers an hour. It is a very fast circuit and our drivers, I'm sure, will be delivering those speeds over the course of today. We had 10 races yesterday. We have got 20 races today. And myself, Anthony Jordan and Andrew Mather will be going through those races. Andrew, uh, welcome to the FIA European Karting Championships. Uh, we're looking forward to today. So many exciting races that we've got ahead of us. Very much looking forward to, that, to uh, today. It's going to be uh, a pulsating day of action. Uh, 20 races across the course of the day. 10 of them in, uh, in the juniors. 10 of them in the OK category. And of course, the first championship points of the year uh, looking to be uh, awarded with, uh, with the races that we've got today. Who can get the best of starts for the 2024 season? Uh, we did have a series of races yesterday as well. So the qualifying heats process has already started. We had timed qualifying as well. Uh, tricky conditions for the drivers. It was hot. I think it was the first day really of, of the racing season where you could say, yes, it is properly warm out there. Bit cooler today, 18 degrees track temperature, uh, air temperature, I should say, at the moment, but it is dry. This man was well on form yesterday. Dries van Langendok for Forza Racing has uh, been superb so far this weekend. Andrew. Certainly has. Uh, was an outright pole for him. Oh, actually it was, yeah, outright pole for him in uh, qualifying uh, yesterday. Took uh, a heat win as well in his first race. Really dominated, just drove away from the rest of the field, wasn't it? It was a class act, a, a classic three time Langendog performance. He's been the driver to beat. You know, the, the reigning world champion in the OK Junior category has, uh, has been showing once again his form. Very intrigued to see how this young man gets on today, Anthony. Kenzo Craigie uh, staying at the junior level for another year. I think he's turned a real corner this year as Kenzo Craigie, the, uh, the young Mercedes backed driver and uh, a lot of people are expecting big things from him in 2024. Yeah, 100% indeed. Looking forward to seeing what is going to happen. Uh, the next race that is coming up is the first race of the day. OK, Junior qualifying heat A versus E. Nine at laps, 13 kilometre race distance. And there you can see just in the background of that shot, our wonderful marshals out on circuit. We couldn't thank them enough uh, for their hard work and commitment being out there all day over the course of this weekend. Uh, again, we couldn't go racing without them, as well as the officials out in circuit as well uh, with the FIA and, of course, all of our camera crew that are bringing you these live pictures over the course of the weekend. We can't thank them enough. There you can see the first race of the day getting lined up, ready to go on this one. Really looking forward to this one. Like you say, Van Langendonk, Kenzo Craigie signed this one on the front row. Uh, Craigie only finishing fourth in his first race uh, yesterday. Uh, all these groups have only had one race uh, so far this weekend. Some of the others will have had two. Uh, but right now, we're going to go through the grid of the first race of the day. Let's take you through it. Three San Langedonk and Kenzo Craigie starting this one on the front row of the grid. Alex Malota and Sebastian Mins, who unfortunately got a penalty in his first race, finish P11. Uh, Boris Leiser and Daniel Keller, they go from row number three with Henry Domain and Arjun Kraling on row four. 
Uh, Remek Samcek and Alexander Zulfakari, they go from row five and the top ten from Bodden Cosma and Rocco Coronel on row six. Theo Battisti and Oliver Rasmussen, they go from row seven with Luke Corner and Zhang Jose on row number eight. Alex Martinez and Xiao Xiyun start on the ninth row of the grid. William uh, Kalajic and Scott Lindblom start on the tenth row of the grid. Uh, Lindblom third in the World Championships in this category last year. Benjamin Maniak and Augustus Tognolo start on row 11. Scott Marsh and Travis Teo start on row 12. Max Endicott and Marcel Chebo start on the 13th row. Row 14, Sun Hansi and Alexander Uznim. Maria Neto and Cole Denham start on the 15th row. Alex Brunner and Philip Planeta on row 16. And it's Francois Cadal who completes the 33 runners for the first race of the, year, of the day here at Valencia on the first Saturday of this new FIA karting European Championship season. There is Pasquale Lupoli on the gantry. Our race director will have his eyes fixed on the drivers at the end of the formation lap. He will be calling the start of the race. And uh, fingers crossed, Anthony, we get a nice clean start and uh, get the carts barreling into turn one, where it will be tricky. First race yeah. of the day, a lot of nervous energy for the drivers. That run through the long turn one, where it then tightens do the kink of two but I think it's turn three and four that's where we're going to see the first bit of action we did see a few starts yesterday uh, be a, a bit compromising for some drivers not able to get beyond that point of the circuit no exactly the first race of the weekend yesterday started in a bit of drama 10 carts being retired on the opening lap yesterday so it was certainly a very shaky start for many of our drivers but hopefully after a good night's sleep and a, and a rest so many of our drivers will be ready to go racing today. Will be a busy day. So many heats to get through, uh, but I'm sure the day will fly by. Welcome to everyone who is joining us from around the world. If you are watching on YouTube, Facebook, or on motorsport.tv, uh, make sure you do hit that like button and the subscribe button as well to make sure you do not miss any future action from the FIA Karting European Championships. We are lined up into the final corner as we enter into the tram lines for the first time today, but not the first time this weekend. The lights go green and down and towards turn one we go. Great start then from Dudy Lang and Doggy holds that inside line. Watch the Ricky Flynn cart coming down the inside as they all sweep in towards turn one. Nice clean start through turn number one. And now they come into the pinch point. Turn three. This is where it all went wrong in the first race of the day yesterday. Is it clean this time around? No, it isn't. There's drama in the background with a couple of carts off the track. Yeah, a couple of drivers in the bo uh, bottom third of the order. Just being a bit too eager, perhaps, and tripping over one another. There is a yellow flag out. I think it was one of the... Uh, the I think it's uh, Alexander Uznim who's not made it through sector number one. Maria Neto, I thought I saw a Tony Kart going off the circuit. There is Maria Neto out on lap one of this first heat of the day for groups A and E. Main field going round onto the back straight then. The fastest part of the circuit out of turn number 14. Flat all the way to the chicane as Maria Neto uh, most importantly is OK. But we'll have to watch this race from the sidelines. End of lap one. Van Langendonk leads four wide into turn one. How about this for a start? What a brilliant move by Boris Lysen there in the 272 Sony cart. <laughs> four wide. It shows how wide this circuit is. But, uh, well, the drivers getting very aware of each other and keeping themselves in the race. But uh, that was a wild moment for Lysen. was indeed. There's Domain and Coronel making moves as well. You can see the uh, Koski in the middle of that as well trying to get involved. Well, Van Langendonk leads the way. He's opening up the gap now just that little bit. It's uh, up to four tenths of a second, but I've got to say Sebastian Mins doing a good job. Mins, who started uh, this one, uh, P4 on the outside row, is looking for a good result today after a P11 after that penalty. Here with Domain, uh, the battle further back as well. So Fakari there, Daniel Kelleher also involved in this battle as they go down the start finish straight once more. We go on to lap three of nine here. Very close racing all the way throughout this one. This is, uh, this is Boris Lysen, uh, who's up there. Arjun Crailing just ahead. This is a good start for Boris Lysen. He had a P3 yesterday. He's looking to uh, get another P3 here. He's been making those moves here. He started on the, uh, on the third row. Just getting those starts nailed. That inside row always working out for our drivers here. Yeah, it's a big advantage to be first, third, fifth on that inside because it's such a long first corner. And as you say, gets very tight on the exit. There's been a warning flag 
uh, shown to the 257. That's Max Endicott. Max Endicott started in the second half of the field and is currently down in 30th place. And not good news for the Briton there. And we need to keep an eye on Rocco Coronel. has been preparing very well for this first round of the new uh, FIA Carlton European Championship. He's already gained five places in this race. You'll uh, spot him quite easily. The Dutchman in the background there with the bright orange helmet proudly uh, displaying the nation's colours. He's up to seventh place now for Victory Lane, trying to close in on Alex Melota. Here on your screens is Arjen Trailing. The 217 has had a good start to the season, was fifth yesterday. He's trying to hold on to this third place. Here comes the attack from Lysen. Once again, down the inside goes Lysen. And now it's the attentions of Kenzo Craigie there in the Prima Racing 214 that Crayling's going to have to deal with. And uh, who else is also on the move? Scott Limblum. Well, we saw this yesterday from Limblum as a response there down the inside from Crayling. Craigie tries to get down the inside of Lysen. This is all over third place. Scott Limblum didn't have a good qualifying for Tony Cart yesterday, Anthony, but he's uh, once again on the move. He's gained nine spots so far in this race, and he's up to 11. Yep, certainly so. Through that final chicane once again. Very wide there for Craig. He's got to be careful. He doesn't run out too wide there. Looks at the inside, not close enough. They will Constantina up. Look at that huge amount of rubber that's gone down through turn one. These are uh, Maxi's racing tyres have done a superb job of putting tons of traction down on the circuit. Maxi tyres with a uh, huge showing here uh, this weekend. Great to see the nearly whole team is here. As down the inside, nice little change. Boris Lysen gets through, and so does Kenzo Craigie. Now, Arjun Kraling is having to defend from, I believe, that's Alex Malota just behind on the uh, Hangman Racing Cart. A bit uh, eager there from Kenzo Craigie. Tried to get down the inside, well, did get down the inside of Boris Lysen there through turn 11, but slightly got his braking wrong, allowing Lysen to come back through. And this is all allowing Mins and Van Langendonk for having quite a comfortable race at the moment. Rocco Coronel is joining the party at the back of this group as well there in seventh place. End of lap number six then. Attack from Craigie down the inside for third place. Just about enough room for both of them to get through the corner. And on the second phase, Craigie finds a way through. Brilliant stuff from the Briton. Been working hard for that the last couple of laps, Anthony, and he's got his spot now. Let's see if he can pull away. Certainly has, but he's going to have to defend it here. He's got to have to be careful. That's a big train of carts that have got a lot of momentum. Remember, when you've got a huge train like that, they all push each other along, and that means coming into these braking zones, you do get sometimes forced into a move uh, into some of these corners, but nothing right now as down the inside here comes Crayling on Boris Lysen, that move is done. That releases now Craigie to go on the attack towards Sebastian Mins. But there's a lot of time between him and uh, Mins at the moment. Uh, they're further, like two seconds up the road. That's a huge one. Boris Lysen back down the inside into that final chicane. Just doesn't outbreak himself. Now comes uh, Rocco Coronel, goes wheel to wheel with Artie Crayling and releases that position. Rocco Coronel up into P5. This group needs to keep an eye on Daniel Kelleher as well. The Irishman is going very quickly indeed on the Cart Republic at the moment. Cart number 231 is up to seventh place now. And through this twisting infield section of turn six and seven and then sweeping out into the multi-apex eight, nine and ten. We'll move further down the order. It's fighting through there. That's a good stuff from uh, Melota trying to fight back here. I think these drivers know they're going to have to fight for fifth place, uh, or actually sixth place, isn't it? That's as high as they're going to get in this one, you would think, because Craigie is away, Lysen is away, Coronel is also away. I think Daniel Kelleher has been able to work his way through to the front of this pack. There is Scott Lindblom as well in the uh, the blue and yellow helmet. How many positions has Lindblom gained now? There must be 12 or 13 spots in this one. There's a lot going on in this race, Anthony, to, uh, to kick things off. There's an investigation flag for Anzi and also now a warning flag for Daniel Kelleher. Yeah, exactly. Interesting stuff. Race control being very busy over the course of this weekend. Eyes looking at this battle for P4 here. Uh, Boris Lysen from Rocco Coronel. Make that Rocco Coronel from Boris Lysen. Change of position there through turn number seven as they make their way onto the infield straight. They know they're not going to catch up to uh, Craigie now. He is uh, driven away just that little bit. They are fighting for P4 now. And, well, Coronel seems to have this one under control just a little bit. It's looked very strong 
He looked very strong two weeks ago, did Rocco Coronel. I think he's bringing everything that he learned then back into this one, and he just looks so calm, so controlled there, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's full of confidence at the moment and in very good form at this stage of the season is Rocco Coronel. Final lap then for the first heat of the day, groups A and E. Dries van Langendonk leads by nearly 1.2 seconds from Sebastian Mins. Kenta Craigie third, still the closest battle on, uh, on your screens, highest up the order. It's this fourth, fifth scrap between Coronel and Lysen, and they're not completely done yet out of, of, of dropping Kelleher out of play, because Kelleher's only eight tenths of a second back now, and uh, being pressured, well, pressured slash push, pushed along by the ever impressive Scott Lindblom. They've not given up the opportunity, should there be uh, a bit of a scrap between Coronel and Lysen on the last couple of corners. But for Dries van Langendonk, the great form continues. This has been another very routine race for the Belgian. Strong running from Forza Racing again. And that is the second win in the qualifying heats this weekend for Dries van Langendonk. Takes it by a second ahead of Sebastian Mins. Great result for Mins. He needed that. That is more like it. We've seen the flashes of speed, but not necessarily the results so far this weekend. Second place for Ricky Flynn Motorsports. Kenzo Craigie completing that top three. Yep, that was a nice controlled drive there from Dries van Langendonk, the world champion in this class last year, showing that he could potentially be the European champion in 2024 as well. But we're only on round one. There are many more rounds to go. It's France that is coming up next for the FIA uh, European Karting Championship. But before then, we have so many races to go. We won't think about that just yet. Uh, Van Langendonk taking the win then from Sebastian Mins, Kenzo Craigie, Rocco Coronel, Forrest Lysen and Daniel Kelleher. It's got Limblom from Pelota, Henry Domain and Oliver Rasmussen rounding out the top 10 as drivers make their way back in towards Park Ferme. Uh, we'll go over the full race results in just a moment. Of course, all of them provisional uh, until Scrutineering has had a look at all the wagons. There were many uh, DSQs yesterday, I think, for many technical reasons. So uh, I'm sure uh, they've been very busy. Arjun Kraling finishing in 11th place from uh, Alexander Zulfakari. Bogdan Cosma from William Kalija and uh, Zhang Jose rounding out the top 15. Into the uh, the second half of the order then. Benjamin Maniak was 16th head of uh, Theo Patisti, Augustus Toniello, Scott Marsh and Colt Denham completing the top 20. Good race there from Denham, up 10 spots from the back of the grid. Uh, Travis Teo in 21st ahead of Alex Martinez, Remek Samcek, uh, Marcel Schabo and Francois Cadal all in the top 25. Uh, work to do, you would think, for the rest of the day for Max Endicott, Xiao Shi Yun, uh, Luke Kornder, Sunan Zi, Alex Brunner inside the top 30, but not the top half of it where they want to be. Philip Planeta, Alexander Uznim, and Marie Neto will uh, pick up points for classification down to 33rd. But for Dries van Langendonk, another win in the books. Let's have a look at some of the highlights from that first heat of the day in OK Junior. Routine start for Dries van Langendonk. Mins on the attack as well. Did brilliant to get on the inside. Is always the difficult thing here at Valencia on a race start when you're on that outside column. But he did brilliantly to slot in to third we feared we wondered would they all get through the first couple of corners especially through turns three and four it was the back third that uh, had troubles on this occasion and uh, a number of drivers not making it uh, through completely clean one of them indeed was maria netto maria netto out of the race on turn four disappointing result there for the Portuguese driver. This was a wild moment, four wide at the end of lap one onto lap two. And uh, Boris Leiden was on the attack, sweeping through and taking another spot in the top five. It was around that point where a, a lot of the action was going on. Henry Domain was involved for uh, Energy Corsa, Rocco Coronel coming through once again, showing that he's got strong race pace here uh, in Valencia after a a, a disappointing qualifying. Alex Melosa was trying to gain points out there as well. 
the Hagman Racing driver would, in the end, come home inside the top ten. But it's, Boris Lysen was a very impressive driver for me in that one, Anthony, making some good moves and uh, good value for his fifth place. Yeah, certainly so. I mean, that, that four-wide moment, I think, is a, a true testament to you know, he's always going to keep his foot in it if he yeah. finds an opportunity to do so. I mean, this moment here, not being too phased by, you know, Craigie sending it down the inside, controlled mind, back through, uh, and just dealing with everything. Again, this moment here, keeps it on the outside, leaves that gap, leaves just enough racing room. It's perfect defense, but then lose it on the exit just a little bit there. But again, not phased too much by it. Uh, he would fight back a little bit, uh, but he would lose out to Coronel a little bit later on because then it was just at this point here where you know, too much defence can be, well, a, an Achilles heel, I think, for some. Yeah, he's always going back on the attack as well, going down the inside of Crailing there through the final corner uh, to start lap number seven. Rocco Coronel continued his progress through the order. Uh, in the end, getting up to fourth place. Henry Domain fought back there in the 2 0 8. Be another driver in the, uh, in the top ten at the end of this one. And we shouldn't forget about Scott Lindblom as well. Has done a lot of this so far in the uh, the races this weekend, coming through from the midfield. In the end, the Tony Kart racer from Sweden would finish seventh. A uh, key move there for Coronel, taking fourth place away from Lysen. And all of this was going on behind Dries van Langedonk, probably unaware, but uh, it didn't matter because he was storming to another victory. And the big question, I think, in OK Junior right now is, can anybody stop him? He just seems in such good form right now. He certainly does. That will be the ultimate question. We'll see uh, those groups out a little bit later on in the day. We'll turn our attention now to the senior category uh, for groups A versus E. Again, both these classes only having the one race so far this weekend. This will only be their second race. It is the OK qualifying heat A versus E. 11 laps, 15.5 kilometers. They're lo pretty long races. They only get longer as the week goes on with the superheats and, of course, those all important finals being ever longer. This man here on your screen, Gabriel Gomez. Well, what can you say about this man here? An absolutely superb start to his weekend as well. Outright pole position and he took a win in his first race. We caught up with him after qualifying yesterday. Well, we're here at the uh, the end of qualifying, time qualifying for the OK category here for round one of the FIA uh, Karting European Championship for 2024. Pole position two years in a row for Gabriel Gomez. Gabriel, what, what a lap time that was. Tell us the secret, because for, for CRG and yourselves, what a performance there with uh, teammates first, second and third in that session. Well, to be honest, I was not expecting that. Uh, we were struggling a little bit today because the situation changed a lot. The temperature changed so much today. And we, before the quali, we was missing our two, three tens and was not expecting that. But with this, my team, we make an incredible job. We put everything together, what we test. And now for the quali, we was with the incredible package. How much do you lean on previous experience? As we say, you were on pole position here in, in 2023. Is, is that something you look back to and look at the data or is it a completely different situation here this year? I think it is a little bit, yes. Uh, we have really different hours now. The times are different, but we, for sure we have some information for last year. And what we do mistake last year, we don't do mistake today, to be honest. And then that's it. I think uh, we are doing a good job and let's see during the week how it's going. You had a great performance through the heats and the, and the super heats last year. You were pretty much perfect, if not perfect, uh, per, per my memory. What do you take from what you learned last year plus what we've had with the Maxis tyres so far this weekend into uh, into the next run of races? I think this track is a little bit different because you have a lot of degradation of the tyres and you need to be so careful with the tyres during the hits and more with the Maxis now. Uh, you need to manage a lot during the hits uh, to know when you need to push and when you need to just don't stress the tires and I think is that we now we need to work more on the setup for the the hits and let's see. Well, great to uh, chat up there to Gomez, who's getting himself ready to get going for this race, and it was a good start to his weekend yesterday, uh, taking a race win. But this one's going to be an interesting one because starting on the road just behind him, this is Anatoly Kavalkin who starts on the front row, but just behind Anatoly Kavalkin is Mateus Mogato, the other Brazilian driver who has also took a race win in his first one 
you've got two drivers who's both taken a race win, both very talented, both very committed. This is going to be an interesting race. I'm really excited for this one. When I was going through the grids this morning going, oh, which is, which which is going to be a good one. for race the day. This one, I know it's only the second race, but this is definitely one of them. The fact that you've got the front two rows, all of them have raced uh, once already and have finished at least second. And we shouldn't forget as well, Gomez has got his teammate directly behind him in Davide Bataro, who could yeah. be a big, big player here. And they've got that inside line, of course. Let's go over the starting lineup then. It's qualifying E A versus E, and it's Gabriel Gomez and Anatoly Kavalkin who start this one on the front row. Davide Bataro and Mateus Morgato on row number two with Finn McLaughlin and Mies Huben on row three. David Volta and Vontek Voda, they go from row four. Vontek Voda looking for a good result today after a P17 yesterday. Noah Montero and Timo Ramikas, they ran at the top ten on row five. Kasper Henriksen and Stefan Antonov on row six. Hendrik Peschel and Freddie Lloyd round up row number seven. In the midfield, Thomas Kinsey and Guy Albag start from the eighth row of the grid, U Capo, and Marius Barryberg starts on row nine. Kian Fard, uh, Pardon and uh, Jerisim Skulanov complete the top 20 there on the 10th row of the grid. Philip Caras and Louis Castellini start on row 11. Oscar Rapetto and Hugo Marti go from row 12. Look out for Marti potentially coming through the field here on, uh, on home soil. Alphonse Mirtinen and Peter Stiller start on row 13. It's Nico Latnalate and Jensen Graham on row 14. 29 carts due uh, in this one, completed by Elliot uh, Kaczynski, but we're in, it's 28 because Kaczynski, as uh, happened yesterday, does not take the start. Yeah, does not appear on our timing screens there. Big shame for Elliot Kaczynski. We hope he is well. Uh, well, drivers have ended their outlap. They go on to their formation lap now. And again, really starting to build a little bit of attention here. They've only had one race so far. They've still got many opportunities for some drivers. Wasn't the greatest start for them over the course of yesterday. Today is going to be an interesting one. But right now, let's just focus on these drivers here because Gomez and Tez Morgato, I've got a feeling, are going to go absolutely head-to-head -head in this one, Andrew. I mean, it's, it's a big race at this stage because this would, this would complete this round of results. Everybody yeah. would have raced twice. We talked about the top four all not uh, being any lower than second place. Any of them mathematically could lead... Uh, the intermediate classification at the end of this. So th this, is a, this is a big race in terms of reward of points, not only getting your, your own score up, but preventing other rivals from, uh, from advancing further up that table. Yep, certainly so. Well, as well, the, the, well Gomez is uh, well further up the road. Uh, this is uh, Anatoly Kavalkin here, who's got the rest of the pack. Uh, there you can see the green helmet on the CRG, Davide Bataro. Uh, just coming through. That is uh, Morgato as well, just coming through in the 116. There's Gomez. Uh, you can see Gonzalo Plata there for the FIA just uh, throwing his hands up saying, what are you doing? Slow down, get with the pack. And they've done that right now. The back of the field is not in formation. Let's see if we're going to go first time of asking. And the answer to that is no. We are going round again. Uh, so our first false start of the day. Uh, an interesting strategy that we saw there, like, you know, Gomez well further up the road. The rest of the pack hadn't closed in as there's a cut grinding to a halt on the start-finish line. Uh, and it looks like that is Jensen Graham in the 168. Oh, that's a shame for Jensen Graham. That's not what he wanted. Doesn't even start the race. Yeah, it's been a torrid weekend so far for Jensen Graham. Uh, poor qualifying, problems in the first round of heats yesterday. And now it did not start in the second round of heats uh, whichever way you put it, that is uh, that's going to be a very hard task now for Jensen Graham to make it through uh, into the uh, into the super heats and into the final. Yeah, that is a big, big shame. He's got a lot of work. Remember, it's only the 36 races that go in to that final. Now he starts this weekend with around 90 odd uh, senior drivers. So again, it is a big, big shakeup for these drivers. They need to make sure they get these good results. And for some drivers yesterday. Some of them, in their two races, had two DNFs. So, uh, you know, big, big shame for them. Yeah. Well, this is take two. Here's uh, Gomez just going on to the back straight again. Now, has he got a big gap to everyone? Yes, he has. So he's, he's ahead by about five cart lengths. Um, well, he's going nice and slowly. Uh, so he's waiting for the rest of the pack to close up. They're just choosing not to close in. Indeed. Uh, so, well, Pataro is going to close, at, uh, close up the gap. Those are the two CRGs. On the inside, the CRG is very strong yesterday, very strong indeed. They look to have done a, a bit of magic with their setup. It's a, a good 
place to be if you're one of these drivers this weekend in that team. Still not forming up the grid here. Kavalkin uh, and the rest on the uh, on the outside uh, still holding back. You see Gonzalo plants there. Yeah. Uh, uh, understandably not best pleased with her, how that's going at the moment. Exactly. Well, yeah, I'm thinking that. Why on earth is he not alongside at that point of the uh, the track? Obviously, when you get to the red line, uh, there's no overtaking from beyond that point. But let's see if we're going to go this time of asking. It looks good to me. Lights go green. We are racing down and towards turn number one. And immediately, Gomez covers off Anatoly Kavalkin as they go down and towards turn number one. Watch that inside line. Bataro, McLaughlin, all trying to get through. But here comes Morgato. He's up in towards P3 now. Uh, no, he's not. He's P4 at the moment as he goes wheel to wheel with McLaughlin. And McLaughlin has to settle for P5 now as they make their way into the tight, twisty section. It's Gomez from Bataro. Uh, then it is Kavalkin. There's Marshalls running in the background. Oh, there's Pandemonium. Several cuts off the track. Sir, sure. Skulinov is one of them in the 137. This is all around the, uh, well, the top 20 uh, of the grid. Who else hasn't made it through? Can just about make out one of the ward racing entries in the middle of that. That's the uh, 140 of Kasper Henriksen. Actually, that's a lot higher up than I thought. Kasper Henriksen started on the sixth row of the grid. Also in trouble out there. Freddie, Freddie Lloyd, Yuka Po, uh, Kian Fardan have all not made it through sector number one. Race Turns three well. and four claiming drivers on the first lap again. End of that first lap. It's a CRG 1-2 at the moment in this one. I have to say, that was a really key start for Bataro. It's a, a, a really aggressive start from Kavalkin. Bataro held his line on the inside to make sure that he was there in second place and able to help his teammate through these early stages. Good move. Well, yeah, it was, it was benefit his teammate there as well as all going very slowly there as well. This is not good at all. This is the 179 of uh, Marius Barryberg for DPK Racing. Has he got it going? It's eking into life. It's going very slowly. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Uh, the marshals are saying, no, it's not going to go. You've got to stop. You've got to stop. Sorry, Marius, that is your race over. A disaster for him. Well, the grid's coming back around again, so marshals are working very quick. Yellow flags into the final chicane, so no overtaking beyond this point. They will not be able to overtake until they see a green flag, uh, and that will be down here in towards turn number one. Well, breakaway then for Gomez and Bataro. Uh, like we were alluding to, we'll go back to it now for that race start. Uh, a brilliant stuff there from Bataro. Like you were saying, uh, just covered that inside line while uh, Gomez was defending from Kavalkin there. Didn't send it down the inside, but sending it down the inside here is David Volta. Gets that move done on uh, Finn McLaughlin. Moves up into uh, P5 now as he goes wheel to wheel with them. Uh, this is good stuff. There is Thibaut Ramakers right on the rear bumper of, uh, yeah, looks like Anatoly Kavalkin now, who's uh, lost out a few. Here's Morgato, though, who's got up into third place now. This is what we're talking about. And he's closing in on Bataro here as well. We could see a battle for the lead by the end of this one. Very much so. It's uh, still all to play for. Thibaut Ramakers is coming through the field as well. Big things expected of Thibaut Ramakers in 2024, moving up into the senior categories. Didn't have his best qualifying but has now moved up to sixth place. That's a gain of four from the start of this one. And uh, he's got his good uh, friend, his good teammate ahead of him, Muffin McLaughlin. We've seen those two be able to work together uh, before, especially round this place. Can they do so again here? New fastest lap for Gabriel Gomez. Let's have a look at the start. This Well, this is before the start, isn't it? This was uh, the discussions going on between the drivers before forming up the grid. The two... Uh, CRG drivers just communicating with each other there of how they were going to take the start of the race. As through there, that's the 116 of Mogato going through into second place. So, how does Gomez deal with this? Because he's now no longer got his rear gunner in Bataro there. He's just casually got the 2022 world champion now trying to close him down. Exactly that. Well, back onto the start finish straight they go. Let's see what happens in towards turn number one. Are we going to see a late move here from Bataro? No, but we are going to see Morgato go slightly defensive there. Turn it early, and there's contact between Walter and Bataro. Uh, Walter goes up on the rear bumper. Amazingly, they're both still in this race, but that was a very close call, and now it gives McLaughlin the breathing space to get down the inside, and Thibaut Ramakers is going to follow suit as well. Can he get the move done? No, he can't. Walter covers the inside line. Good attempt by Ramakers there to, uh, to follow his teammate through, but Finn McLaughlin... Another driver who's prepared very well for this first round of the European Championship. 
making another move again. Ramak is down the inside. Oh. Here's the opportunity now for the 1-2-2 two, two of Kavalkin to try and gain a position back or two. He's on the outside now of Walter through the long turn 14. But away is Ramak is away is McLaughlin. That's a really good sector from the Irishman there in fourth place. Kavalkin's going to attack Walter down into oh. the chicane. And getting very squirrely there through the middle of the chicane. Managing to keep it on the road. Walter's back down the inside as they go towards turn one. In comes the Birrell. It's the 153 of uh, Mies Huben there trying to gain in all of this. And I think Yingjik Petrel is also trying to uh, move up from 10th oh. place. Contact oh. between the RFM and one of the Cart Republics gets forced That's off no as Montero. well as no Montero out of the race. The 127 is Wojciech Voda. Not a good moment for both of those drivers. It's all getting a little bit feisty out there. I've got to say, that was quite messy there in that midsection of the race. Uh, it all started with that first move there uh, into the final chicane, and then it just cascaded from there, really. The whole pack came in, and they were all seeing potential moves here. Uh, and unfortunately, just in the pinch point is not the place you want to do it. You can overtake there. It is easily done, but... It's so risky. It's uh, it's high reward, but high risk. It's very high risk, especially in the uh, in the middle part of a race. Investigation flag for Derasim Skulinov in the 137. There has also been a warning flag given out to Anatoly Kavalkin in the 122 parallel entry. We're on lap number seven now. Gomez has full control of this race. Very impressive performance again. From the, uh, from the Brazilian, 1.6 seconds out ahead of Mugato. Finn McLaughlin there in third place. Bataro looking to score well again here in fourth. Uh, intermediate classification situation. This is how things would stand with this result if nobody moved positions between now and the end of lap 11. Gomez would take the lead in the intermediate classification. A perfect 100 score from 100. Uh, so Kunas would be second, Mugato third. Let's have another look again. So Kavalkin down the inside of Woda. Two pieces of contact. They've got to feel sorry for Noah Montero. Just yeah. in the wrong place at the, the wrong time. Innocent bystander in all of that. I think there's a bit of damage as well to the front left of Wojciech Vod. I think the tyre was taken at least partially off the rim there. Uh, but a, a bold one there from Kavalkin. As you say, it's yeah. always a risky place to make an overtake. Turn three and four, and that's why. You could see there from that picture that uh, Wojciech Vod, he had a broken track rod. You could see he was full locked to the right there, but the cart continued to turn left. And uh, unfortunately for No Montero, yeah, like you said, wrong place, wrong time. Big, big shame then for a handful of our drivers, but the race continues nonetheless. We're on lap eight of 11 at the moment with Gabriel Gomez leading the way by 1.3 seconds from uh, Matthias Morgato, who's there in P2. Finn McLaughlin still there in third place as he's dealing with Davide Mataro. Timo Ramakas having a very good race in this one as well. You can see the investigation flag board uh, up on your screens. That is going out to the 1-2-2 two, two out on track. So uh, that is not gonna be well received, I'm sure. Uh, by our drivers. That is Anatoly Kavalkin, of course, uh, who's got caught out in that incident. Well, we watch Morgato here, who is under pressure from McLaughlin. McLaughlin getting through and into P3. On that charge, they are, well, they're, they're fluctuating between Gomez. Gomez is in, well, he's in full race mode right now. He, he's got tunnel vision, he's just focused every corner, every apex, he's just doing what he needs to do. The gap still staying the same really good at managing a race is uh, Gomez, isn't it? He's one of the best through these through these qualifying heats. We saw that here 12 months ago when he when he took the, uh, the maximum amount of points through both the intermediate classification stage through all the qualifying heats and through the super heat uh, as well. He, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with this weekend. And with her, all the drivers only having one and a half sets of Max's tyres, of course, you've got to conserve them. There's no point going absolutely at, you know, t getting a five-second victory, but burning through your rubber and not having anything to play with in the uh, in the latter rounds. He is supreme at uh, at managing these, and he'll want to keep that gap probably around a second, just not give Magato any opportunity to uh, to close in in the latter stages. I feel like a bit of it. Well, I was about to say a bit of a truce has broken out between Bataro, Ramakas, and Walter, and then immediately Bataro goes to the inside to defend that fourth place. That's going to be an opportunity for Walter down the inside of Ramakas. Beautifully done by. David Walter there, up into fifth place, goes past the winner in the OK Juniors here last year. So we know Ramakas is quick round the Cartodromo International, Lucas Guerrero. We're on to the final lap now. 
Gomez still managing the gap at 1.3. Bogato may have to uh, turn his attentions to uh, McLaughlin there. As this was down the inside, this was Kavalkin. There's going to be contact there with Ramakas. Slight contact. It was a few laps ago through the chicane. Uh, but McLaughlin is uh, really putting Bogato under a bit of pressure here on this final lap. Certainly is. He's not close enough just yet, though, to go for a lunge. I think uh, McLaughlin just will just be happy with a P3 here. McLaughlin's first race result was a P6, so he's uh, he's half that what he did yesterday. So this will be a good result still for McLaughlin. It'll be a great result uh, again for Gomez, matching what he did yesterday with his first qualifying heat win. And now heat two for him is another win. Out of the final corner, it's Gabriel Gomez who takes the race win from Ates Volgato in second place. McLaughlin finishes in third from Bataro. Volta from Ramakas, uh, Yindrich Petzl from Mies Huben, Anatoly Kavalkin and Stepan Antonov round out the top 10 with that checker flag. A superb race, so many retirements in that one. Nine retirements in total. That was a bit of a messy one again. Uh, particularly the first half of it, you had a, a number of drivers not make it through lap one. That was one of those races where you just needed to keep it calm and on the island, you would be rewarded with strong points. For Gabriel Gomez, he takes the lead in the intermediate classification uh, for the OK category here this weekend. 100 from a possible 100, second place tied second place in fact for Shilkunas and Morgato on 94 points apiece. Pavan and Turney equal fourth on 91. Lewis Werrell on 88. But uh, Davide Pitaro goes up to seventh place with that result on 82. Costa, Eichmanns and Canton completing the top 10 at the moment. Still a lot of things to be decided. There is your provisional result. Gomez for Morgato. Uh, by just under three quarters of a second, McLaughlin can be happy with third for VDK. Bataro, Walter, Ramakas, Peschel, Huben, Kavalkin and Antonov all inside the top ten. Uh, Thomas can say up a few spots there. Two 11th place ahead of Philip Karras, uh, Guy Albag, Hugo Marti and uh, Alphonse Nietzsche. Both of those last two drivers gaining ten spots in that race, as did Peter Stiller in 16th. Freddie Lloyd, Louis Castellini, Oscar Rapetto and Nico Lahnalate. That was your top 20 into the retirements uh, from that one. Wojciech Voda and Noah Montero, six laps to go through turn four. Maris Barryberg just made it through lap one. And uh, a number of others didn't even make it through that first lap. Here are some of the highlights. Yeah, indeed. It was a great start then from the two CRGs. Gomez covering off the attack from Kavalkin. Bataro holding that inside line, refusing the inside line to Kavalkin as well. They would go 1-2 at the start of the race. It would kick off a little bit in the background. There you can see the carts going off the circuit. Uh, unfortunately, we did get a couple of retirements from that one in the form of Kaczynski. Uh, Graham, who was at the start of the race, uh, I think Graysim Skulinov was there, and Kian Farden, uh, you can just see him. Kian Farden, it's his first weekend with Sodi. Uh, and, uh, well, it's not been the best result so far in this first race of the day. Morgato getting through. That was the moment that we lost Marius Barryberg. Tried to get it started. The marshal's pleading with him. Uh, the cut's coming around. Please get out. <laughs> it's not going. Uh, the race would continue, though, as uh, Ramakas would go down the inside, making moves all the way throughout this field uh, with him and Kavalkin. Morgato getting past uh, Bataro, moving up into P2, would go on the chase. That's when it all started to get a little bit heated, I think. That battle for third, fourth, this was the start of it. Down the inside, Anatolik Valkin going for that move. Robust, but it did work. Then down into turn number three. This didn't work. Wheel to wheel with Voda. Voda broken, goes into the side of Noah Montero. Noah Montero, nowhere he could go. Yeah, real shame for, for Montero, who's making good progress across the course of those early laps. Uh, but for Gabriel Gomez, continuing what he did in 2023 here at Valencia, that's two from two. Driver who took timed qualifying pole position yesterday is uh, looking difficult to beat on what is a very fast CRG machine uh, here this weekend. A couple of carts there you can see being recovered back to Park Ferme. Uh, we will see groups A and E. Uh, in the not too distant future, especially uh, at Group P, they're out uh, quite soon again uh, after that race for them. Let's uh, move on to the next one, though. OK Junior back out on circuit. There'll be the qualifying heat for Groups B 
and F. Another nine laps, another 13 kilometres, 50 intermediate classification points up for grabs, Anthony Jordan. Certainly is, yep. This is going to be another interesting one. These groups that are coming out next have already had two of their qualifying heats. They will go into their third round on this race here. And Christian Costoya, who starts this one on pole position, qualifying was good. It wasn't the best, only by a hundredth of a second. He qualified second overall. Here's what he had to say after qualifying yesterday. Christian P1 in the third group for OK Junior. Another really good piece of work there in time qualifying for yourself and Paolin. Yeah, very good uh, job from the team. Uh, it's a second total at the moment. Uh, uh, not bad for the start of the weekend in the European. And uh, let's keep it. You seem to have a really good racing package across a variety of, of different conditions. It's got quite warm here today. What have you had to do with with setup, if anything, to, to react to these conditions? Yeah, of course, uh, here at Valencia before last week, it changed a lot the conditions by uh, a wet, uh, wet track and now uh, very hot. So yeah, of course, uh, like this, the, the, for the car is very good. And I, I will thank you to, pa to Paroline to make me the shepherd uh, the best uh, that they can. And it's very close out there as well in the times. You know, it's half a tenth of a second here or there. Do you think you've got the, the race speed this weekend? Have you learnt from previous racing experiences here at Valencia to, to get you to the front, do you think? Yeah, of course, everyone is uh, there. But I think uh, you can make the difference with the constants in the races. So uh, let's wait and, and do my best. Well, great to chat there to Christian Costor yesterday, certainly having a good result. Starting alongside him, though, is this man here, Nicholas Schaufler, uh, who will be going alongside there as well. There you can see him on your screen. But let's go through the starting lineup then as drivers get fired up as we go racing for their first race of the day. It's Christian Costoya and Nicholas Schaufler on the front row of the grid. Schaufler at the moment undefeated in his qualifying heats. Can he do the same today? Filippo Sala and Noah Baglin go from row number two. James Anagnostiadis and Thomas Trudier round out row number three. Jacopo Martinese and Jack Rattetroja, who needs a good result today. Two DNFs yesterday. He starts this one on the fourth row of the grid. Dean Hugendorn and Jean Manteo uh, Russo go from row five. Jensen Burnett and Clara Kowalczyk on row six. Alexander Dalstrom and Florentine Hatmer on row seven. Jesse Phillips and Alexander Kurtinov round up row number eight. Matvey Durganov and Kanish Krau go from the ninth row of the grid. Efim Durganov and Nikita Nikoshov complete the top 20 on row 10. Andrea Marni and Tobias Zuzeni start on row number 11. Paul Andriotis and Archie Lovett starts on row 12. Thomas Gender had a difficult day yesterday, starts this one from row 13. It's joined by Sky Parker, Mary Barryberg, and David Minichuna starts on row 14. Archie Owen and Amir Sabarov complete the top 30 on row 15. And then going from the back, Felipe Rice and Mariano Lopez on row 16. Gustavo da Silva, who had another driver who had a difficult Friday, makes it 33 carts in this one. Say 50 intermediate classification points up for grabs. The scores currently looking like this. This is effectively the start of round three of five for all the drivers. Three Sven Langendonk and Nicholas Schaufler remain the only two drivers unbeaten in OK Junior so far this weekend with 100 points. Christian Costoya there on 94. Noah Baglin, uh, Arias, Letimaki, Craigie, uh, Pradir, Pradier, and Martinezzi all inside the top 10. As we uh, get a quick sight there of Pasquale Lupoli uh, waiting to get this one underway. And this is one of those, I feel one of those key ones that uh, we touched on yesterday here at the circuit, Anthony, about you move through these phases, you see drivers getting that, uh, that, that rhythm going of those results, but eventually you'll get a face off between the front runners. And th this is one of those. Costoya, uh, 94 points out of 100 so far. Schaufler, 100. This could be a, a very telling one in terms of where the positions, the points go in the intermediate classification. Well, exactly. At the end of this one, Costoria and Schaufler could be joint on points or, you know, Costoria could just be a couple more points further away uh, from closing that gap. So, you know, big ultimate one here again as we're going nice and slow into the final corner here, not using the chicane on the opening lap. They use the cut through uh, straight round the final corner as we're looking nice and 
good in the formation. Now, there's a hand up there from Schaufler, but I suspect we're going green. No, we're not. We are going round again. So it is a false start. It looked good from our point of view. Of course, we see a completely different angle of what everyone else sees in our race director, Pasquale yeah. Lopoli, there just sending them round once more. Yeah, there was, I think there was uh, something that Nicholas Schaufler was not happy with there. That's why he just had his hand up to make the race director aware of like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this start. Something is is uh, outside of uh, uh, Let's see. what I deem fit for a race start. Well, uh, it was it was all good. I don't know why I had the hand up. It wasn't ahead there of uh, Costoy. who was in his position. It was where he needed to be. It looked fine from my point of view there. So uh, obviously a driver can't really dictate when the race doesn't or does not start. It's, uh, it's down to the race director to make that choice. So. He uh, obviously saw something that we didn't uh, from a different camera angle or from his position. Well, interesting. We'll take two then. Second false start of the day. And once more, Costoya with a big gap there. Closing in, Filippo Sala. You just see in the background, new helmet design for him again uh, this weekend that was uh, adorned and displayed two weeks ago. Nice to see. Very uh, distinctive helmet livery there, and crucially, with that inside line, I suspect we may see that uh, helmet move up positions very quickly. Gonzalo Plata just saying there to Sala, close that gap up. Let's see, are we going this time around? Again, from our position, this looks good. Into the tram lines, are we going green? Yes, we are. Lights go out and down it towards turn one. Good start from Schaufler. Watch him all the way around the outside. Is he going to go for the lead? He does go for the lead straight away. That's a beautiful move. There's carts off in the background, though. They're off at turn one. Who's gone off the track there? It looks like Filippo Sala has gone off the track. That's a nightmare for the young driver. There as well, another driver who's off the track. That's Noah Baglin, uh, who started on the second row of the grid as well. Baglin off the circuit. This is a disaster. He's pleading with the marshal there. I'm not sure why, but his cart's heavily damaged. He can't start the race. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid no, is he not going to win that uh, that argument? There's a lot of damage to the uh, NASA panel and the uh, the safety aspects at the front of the cart. Even if he did get that one going, I'm pretty sure that would have been mechanical flagged anyway. So, good call from the marshal to say no, that one is going no further. Uh, Salah did get going again, but was delayed, lost about five seconds. Let's count them through at the end of the first lap. Then Nicholas Schaufer with that amazing start. You don't see many leaders come from second place on the grid, especially in dry conditions like these. But Nicholas Schaufer's just proven that it can be done. He's got half a second over Costoya. Good start for Martinezzi up four. The Troyer, we said the Troyer, he needs a good result here. Has had some uh, some good speed. Has been up in the top ten. He needs to convert now. As down the inside goes the two five two of Hugendorn. He's been impressive so far this weekend. But for, but for Detroit, it has to be not just a, a decent result, a strong result to pull him back into the top seventy two, maybe the top thirty six. Uh, by the time we get to the finals, because so far this weekend, it's been a disaster in race trim for the Indi Indian driver. Yeah, 22nd and a 29th place finish for him. So certainly doesn't want to uh, continue that trend over the course of this weekend. Back through the final chicane and on the start finish line. It is a good start then for Schaufler as he pulls away from Costoya. But that gap is closing in. Martinese under pressure from Hugendorn. And uh, the Troja just there as well in that Koski Motorsport cart, looking very, very vibrant there with the colour scheme of that livery as they go down in towards turn at number six and seven. Many overtakes through this uh, place, and we're going to see another one here as Dean Hugendorn dives down the inside of Jacopo Martinese, moves up into third place now. Now he's got to focus. Now he needs to not think about, oh, are they going to send it down the inside again? Well, one person is. It's the Troja down the inside of uh, Jacopo Martinese there as he moves up now into P4. So good results there looking for De Troja, but he's got to maintain this momentum now as they go through, back down the back straight. And uh, well, Martinese there having to deal with Dahlstrom and Spinette just behind as well. Into that final chicane, no moves here. Nice and clean, nice steady start. And I've got to say, Nicholas Schaupler, what a start he's had, but that gap now has closed up. Look at the race lead here. It's two tenths of a second, and Costoya is on that rear bumper now as they go in towards turn number three. No move just here yet, but we are going to see some fireworks here, I think. We definitely are. Costoya knows this could be a big move. He's set the fastest lap of the race of 56.043. Not close enough there to have a go through turn number seven. 
Uh, I've got to keep an eye on Archie Lovett as well. It's just gone purple through sector number one, has gained eight spots so far in this race. Is up to 16th, making some good progress. Forza Racing. Uh, and she's going again, going quickly again. If uh, another team who've done some good work with setup and preparations for this first round of the European Championship, but at the front, Schaufler and Costoya trading sector times at the moment. Bit of work to be done here by Nicholas Schaufler to convert through to a third victory of the weekend. There is a, a, an investigation flag for the 274 out there. That's Andrea Marni. Uh, down in 28th place. There was a warning flag as well for the 203. And now for Jagrat Detroya, the, oh, the the bad weekend for Detroya just keeps getting worse and worse. That is uh, not what he wants to see in this race. No, he doesn't. Well, here we go. Well, it's still kicking off in that battle as well. Look at this. We've come back to it. Wheel to wheel action here as down the inside goes James Anagnostiidis. Uh, nearly kicks up some huge amounts of dust on the outside. Loses several positions there again as through. Here it goes. I think Dunanov Karalchik's there as well. Kortinov is there. Uh, they've all closed back in. Dahlstrom's just gone down back into P12 now as well. This is a huge scrap. This is about uh, uh, P6 out there as well. Dahlstrom sees the warning flag as well. Uh, but as they go through the final chicane, it's all again eyes on these top two. They've not started scrapping yet, but Costoya, I think, is just toying with Schaufler right now. As Schaufler, he's not lost a race so far this weekend. He's two for two. He's trying to make it three for three. Costoya, though, is going to say something about it. It's a 12-point matchup at the moment. If the, uh, if the result was this, uh, stay like this, Schaufler would be on 150. Costoya was, would be on 138. That would swap. That would become a tie on 144 if Costoya can find a way through. Nicholas Schaufler, though, Sector 2 has been where well, he's been doing a lot of his good work so far this weekend. He's just seeming to be able to pull out a bit of a gap that he can then use to, to defend or fend off any kind of attack or thoughts of an attack from Costoya into the final chicane. He's just gone purple again through Sector number 2. Jacobo Martinez is now under investigation uh, by race control for something out there. That's... Uh, the KR driver in the 200, you can just see behind now Burnett and Hugendorn. Good to see Jensen Burnett up at the front of the order. Race for Fusion Motorsport this year. It's had a fairly quiet weekend so far. Has gained five, uh, sorry, eight places in this one so far. And he's up to third place. Down the inside goes Costoya for the lead. And he's got it brilliantly done by Costoya. Perfect turn seven move. What has Schaufler got in response? A instant fight back. That's what he's got in reserve. Straight back down the inside through turn 11. He's not going to give that position up lightly. Crucially, though, they have got a three-second buffer with a couple of laps left to go. They might be OK here, but I suspect Jensen Burnett might have an opportunity here because the gap already down to 2.6 seconds. You lose so much time. Here comes Costoya. Back down the inside they go. Nice and clean. Well defended there, but Schaufler giving up the position. He's got the slipstream again as we go on to lap number eight. We're on the penultimate lap. Last lap board will be out this time for our drivers uh, when the next come round to the start-finish line. But here, Costoya now having to defend for these last couple of laps. He will indeed. What has uh, Schaufler got through sector two? This has been where, where he's been quick, but now he's bottled up. Now he's got Costoya ahead of him, but not for long. Down the inside. Response through turn seven. Brilliantly done by the Austrian. Back into the lead. Yeah, nicely done. They're just chopping and changing now between the two of them. Going defensive sideways under braking there for Schaufler. As he tries to defend, he takes the optimal line there to try and defend from uh, Costoya. Costoya not able to get alongside, though, onto the back straight. So now it's back on Schaufler. Schaufler controlling it. And Costoya just thinking, what are we doing here? What are we doing? They're losing time. Look at that. It's down to uh, less than two seconds here. The gap between third place and Schaufler back down the inside again. Holds on to that inside line, defends it from Costoya. And now the gap's opened up just that little bit as we go on to the final lap. Really good positioning through the uh, the final chicane by Schau for there. Meant that Costoya's exit from the final corner was very compromised indeed. But you're absolutely right. They are losing stacks of time. Jensen Burnett has just put in a personal best. 56.1. That was 1.4 seconds quicker. But... Has there been enough now for Schaufler to just not have to defend? He's got a good gap. It's around four tenths of a second. In fact, it's growing now through that first sector. Has Hugendorn got anything to, uh, to try and wrestle that third place away from Jensen Burnett? But Nicholas Schaufler looking good on his way to potentially a third win of the weekend. 
Certainly so. Well, on to the back straight. Well, there was a hand up there from Costoya just saying, well, what happened? Why have I lost so much time here? Uh, well, we'll never know. But in through that final chicane, it is Nicholas Schaufler undefeated so far. 3-4-3 three, three for Nicholas Schaufler, the Austrian mouse who takes his third win from Christian Costoya. Jensen Burnett finishes in an impressive P3 from Dean Hugendorn. Jakob Matanese finishes in fifth place from uh, Maxim Duranov. Oh, Matvey Derenov, I should say, from Jagrat Tatoja, P7, good result. Still, it's not a P20, it's not a P29, it's a top 10 finish. It's still a good result. You can be happy with that one. Uh, James Anagnostiadis finishing in P8 from Clara Kowalczyk. Jesse Phillips rounding out the top 10, five places gained. Good race all the way throughout. There were dramas, though, in that one, and we'll go over the highlights a little bit later on. But for Nicholas Schaufler, again, a superb start to the weekend. This is looking good for him. Yeah, he's, he's looking so cool at the wheel of uh, of that beautifully liveried uh, DPK racing machine. Go into Park Ferme, go through uh, the processes of checking over uh, the carts, you know, with the with the tech scrutineers, with the uh, the Weybridge as well. Uh, but for provisional results. Nicholas Schaufler takes his third win of the weekend, moves to 150 points. Only Dries van Langendonk can match that in this particular round. There is your provisional result. Schaufler from Kostoya. Uh, most of all, plenty of reasons to be pleased there with that third place for Jensen Burnett. Great performance. Dean Hugendorn in fourth. More good points for the Dutchman. Uh, Jacobo Martinezzi completing that top five. Matvey Durganov in sixth ahead of Jaguar de Troya. James Anagnostiadis. Uh, Clara Kowalczyk up three places tonight. Jesse Phillips in his first weekend in the FIA. Uh, Karting European Championships for Ricky Flynn Motorsport completes the top 10. Uh, in the uh, mid order, Duranov, Kortanov, uh, Lovett up 11 spots. Filippo Sala struggled at the start there, down 11th, finished 14th. Uh, 15th was Nikoshov, Rao, Chesesny, and uh, Hatima all inside the top 20, uh, completed by Hatima and Andriotis. Uh, let's have a look at some of the highlights, though, from that first race. There was drama before we even got to the pinch point of turn three and turn four. Sala running deep and Noah Baglin uh, having to retire on the spot there. Not happy at all. Well, yeah, no, he's, 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 talking, about, look, he's talking to the marshal here on this one. I think uh, the marshal got the car off the track straight away, didn't give him the chance to get it restarted. Mm. But the problem that he's got is that his NAS panel is not attached. Yeah. He would have been given a technical flag anyway, and he would yeah. have to come in. So there was no point of him even trying to, to restart. So I would say Marshall's in the right there of uh, immediately Three. taking the car off the track. Uh, but obviously with Baglin, you know, it's an emotional start. You know, you don't want to retire on the opening lap. You want to continue going. And it is fair play to him. He wanted to keep going. Unfortunately, it didn't go his way. Hugen Dorn making those moves in the early stages. Really been impressed with him over the course of this one. Five places gained in that one. Just had some consistently good results. I'm looking forward to seeing what he could potentially do in the Super Heats and the finals. Absolutely. He seems to have very good race pace so far this weekend. It will continue to reward. Bit of a tight moment there between uh, Dahlstrom and Anagnostiadis uh, going through onto the infield straight. Uh, the battle kicked off on lap seven between Costoya and Schaufler. Uh, only one of them could move to at least 144 points in the IC. And it's, uh, it was going to be key for Schaufler to keep that gap and keep Costoya behind. They traded the lead back and forth. This was a great move from Schaufler, returning the favor to the Spaniard into turn number seven. In the end, wins by just over a quarter of a second, moves to three wins from three, 150 points on the board. And uh, a 12-point gap over Costoya. As mentioned, only Dries van Langendonk with his next race match the efforts of Schaufler so far. Certainly so, and we will turn our attention to that next race. It is the Senior OK category, qualifying Heat B versus F. Once again, 11 laps and 15.5 kilometers. Zach Drummond starting this one on the front row of the grid. Qualifying was good, wasn't perfect like it was two weeks ago, but still finds himself on that front, uh, front row. P5 and a P6 yesterday in his first two qualifying heats. Can he better that over the course of today? We caught up to him after qualifying yesterday. Well, here at the end of the first group for the OK category here this weekend at uh, Valencia with a driver who very much likes this place. A fantastic qualifying lap time there uh, from yourself, Zach Drummond. Uh, talk me through it. Yeah, I mean, same as last week. I did 
the best lap I could. Qualifying really decides your weekend and it's definitely where I show up in the weekends and it's very, uh, I'm very happy with what I've done there again. It's just hopefully we can have the same weekend as last week. Marius Barryberg went out early there. Another driver's got good form round here. Was that expected or a bit of a spanner in the works in terms of the plan? Um, no, I thought uh, we always thought we'd go out around 3 minutes 30 to get the tyres warm and everything. So the tyres at the right operating temperature and stuff for the perfect lap, obviously. And then, yeah, I think the team did very good in the timing. And then, obviously, GFR did really good in the engines as well. It's a lot warmer here in Valencia than the, the last time we raced earlier in the year. You know, you've had a good number of laps around here, but for this FIA weekend, how, how tough is it on the conditions? Spring has very much arrived. Yeah, spring's arrived. Um, yeah, it's very hot. T um, it tends for the track to get very hot, so then the tyres start to slide a bit more and they decrease a lot more. So, yeah, the tyre pressures are really key in this hot weather. Well, good to hear from Zach Drummond there, talking a little bit of technical knowledge there. You know, keeping an eye on all of those little things there. Like I say, pressures are the most important thing out there. Whenever I walk along the dummy grid and I uh, watch what's happening, you know, in the practice and everything, I see maybe tire uh, tire pressures being changed, and uh, they're all hiding the numbers on the on the screen, saying, "No, don't look at this." <laughs> Be like, so it's a trade secret, is tire pressures, isn't it? And, and particularly this season with the new Maxis Racing tires, yeah, like it, everyone's say, it's still. I mean, we've got the best teams in the world here, but they're still learning. They're, yep. they're still trying things out all the time, and uh, especially with the with the change of weather that we've had here this weekend at Valencia, it's very tricky indeed. Let's go through the grid then for this next one. The uh, groups B and F heading out on circuit. Uh, 28 of them here in the OK category. Zach Drummond on pole position. Uh, Vivek Kanthan has been impressive so far this weekend. Is alongside him uh, on the front row of the grid. On the second row of the grid, uh, the driver in this race who's got the best scores right now. Third and first for Sebastiano Pavan yesterday. And uh, a good opportunity for him to build that score even further. He's joined by and Eichmann's on the grid. There is Nigel Edwards, our deputy race director, uh, out there. Where is he? Uh, he's, ah, he's around uh, turn 12, turn 13 again is Nigel. Uh, having a look over what's happening there on the entry to uh, to the third sector. Ooh. There is a problem. Is that That's Noah, Noah Wolf? Wolf? That is Noah Wolf out of the 154 uh, Van Amersfoort racing by Birrell. That is not good news at all. That is a did not start slash DNF either way, it's uh, it's not the Hall of Points that Wolf was looking for. It was due to start this race from seventh. That is a big shock there. What has happened to his wagon? Uh, again, another close-up there of Deputy Race Director Nigel Edwards just watching uh, what is happening out on circuit. Very eagle-eyed. You do not want to get on his bad side of his clipboard, I can tell you that. Uh, right. Drivers then starting their formation lap now. Race about to start very soon. Uh, yeah. A uh, big moment there. Uh, Wolf was supposed to start on the fourth row of the grid. Yeah, he, he was indeed. Just to uh, complete that uh, that grid, uh, Vegard Clemenson and uh, Louis Iglesias start on the third row. Noah Wolf does not start on the fourth row of the grid, so it'll be Xavier Avramidis uh, on his own there on the fourth row. Alexander Bondarev and Dmitry Matviev start on row five. Uh, Michael Ida and Hugo Radjometz on row six. Salim Hanna and Tom Dussel start on row seven. Row number eight sees Sun Zhao Yu and Loveway Sam Budler, Dante Vinci and Marilla De Rocca on row number nine. Tiziana Monza and Lewis Francis round out the top 20 on row 10 from Leon Nilsson and Kai Rillarts on row 11. Emilia Kuivisto and Patrick Ogrodovic round out row number 12 with John Karras and Silenus uh, Kolovos rounding out row 13. Blake Nash and Andy Consani give us our 14 rows and the 27 drivers who will be starting this one with the, the one retirement already uh, with Noah Wolf out of this race. Well, drivers get themselves lined up into the final corner. There is a gap, obviously, that is missing from there uh, with Noah Wolf not in this race, but hopefully we get a nice, clean start and a green flag first time of asking into the tram lines lights are not green they are going round again it is a false start uh, temperature rising here in Valencia 20 degrees track uh, fully dry very grippy about halfway through the uh, the program for this morning 
Hope you're enjoying the coverage here, live from Valencia for the first round of this year's FIA Karting European Championship. Andrew Mather and Anthony Jordan on commentary duties for you. Uh, quick review of results so far for these uh, drivers. Drummond fifth and sixth uh, in the first two rounds of heats. Uh, Cantham a couple of fourths. Pavan, as mentioned, third and a win. Eichmann's third and fifth. Uh, I think Vagar Clemenson will be looking for a big improvement in this one, Anthony. 11th and 13th so far for the Norwegian, uh, starting there on the outside of row three. Certainly so. Spectator viewing areas filling up with drivers uh, and family and friends, and of course, just spectators and fans uh, joining us here this weekend. Uh, brilliant to see. And again, big welcome to everyone joining us from around the world, watching on YouTube, Facebook, or on motorsport.tv. Again, welcome to you all here for the first round of the FAA Casting European Championships in towards the final corner. It's qualifying heat B versus F for the senior OK category that is about to get underway. Again, looking good at the front here as the revs start to raise. The smoke clears and the lights go green. Here we go, down in towards turn number one. Good start from the two parallels. Drummond and Canton wheel to wheel. Down in towards turn number one. Watch out for Pavan down the inside. There's carnage in the background. Five carts off the circuit. And that looked like there was entirety of the back of the grid there. Yeah, Tom Dassault was partially airborne in the uh, in the CRG. So once again, it's the middle part of the pack where an incident has occurred. The 174 is out of this one as well. That's Lewis Francis. who's had a really difficult weekend. What an awful start for the Kart Republics. They've had uh, numerous carts in there. Dante Vinci uh, goes no further. Another one of the drivers towards the back. I think Ogodovchik has had problems, and maybe John Karras as well. We'll, uh, we'll count them through uh, as, they, uh, as they complete this first lap. But again, just shows how, how much risk there is in the, uh, in the start here at Valencia. Certainly so. It is a very fast opening corner there. But again, the marshals have done a brilliant job clearing the track. But there is yellow still down it towards turn number one. So no overtaking allowed this point. Green flags there on the exit of turn, two, of turn one. So overtaking now is allowed as we go on board. A brand new feature for 2024 with Louis Iglesias. Brilliant pictures here and great work from the RGRC team to deliver these live onboard pictures here in the FIA European Karting Championship. As we see here, the work that goes in of what these drivers do. Look at the motion on the wheel uh, that he puts in as they go down the infield straight there as a move down the inside there. You can see a big moment there for all of our drivers. Great stuff here as Louis Iglesias now looks to the inside. He goes wheel to wheel and now he lines astern with Pavan right ahead of him. Yeah, beautiful positioning from Iglesias there, seeing there was going to be an opening uh, to, for a move on Canton down the inside. And as I say, with that new onboard camera, you could not be closer to the action uh, here for the first round of the season. So far as all the move there from Canton responding back down the inside, gets back past Iglesias and through comes Eichmann's as well. Race pace for Zach Drummond didn't look absolutely nailed on yesterday with that, that fifth and sixth. In the early stages of this one, though, a couple of setup changes overnight, perhaps conditions subtly different as well with a bit more cloud cover. But for the, for the Scott, Scott driver at the front of the order, it seems like that single lap pace that we've seen uh, in recent weeks is with him now over the longer format. Yeah, indeed, with VF diving down the inside of Louis Iglesias there, so he's back down to P6 now. As they make their way onto the back straight there, you can see Eichmann's just ahead on the Art with the yellow helmet there in P4, closing in on the American Vivek Canton, uh, who is doing a good job there in P3. Back onto the start finish straight they go, Drummond controlling this race, the gap increasing now, up to five tenths of a second between himself and Pavan as they all close in, the car park there of carts that have been accumulating at turn number one. The start, again, not been great for so many of our drivers. But here, as Eichmann sends it down the inside, finds a gap. Wow, I didn't see a gap there at all, but he found it down the inside of Vivek Canthan. Now Canthan under pressure from Matviev. Matviev not able to get it done, though, through turn number eight. Yeah, there's just some quick drivers in this group. Canton defending from at the of there, and here comes Ooh. Iglesias around the outside. This is where he likes to make the moves. He's going to switch to the inside now. Canton brilliantly done by Louis Iglesias. Two for the price of one. Side by side once again between Matviev and Canton. And uh, Canton loses two, three spots in this lap so far. Meanwhile, at the front of the order, Drummond now under attack 
from Pavan and Eichmann to behind, a second covering the top three. Yep, so go very, very close. It's Vieto uh, seeing a warning flag there. He's got to be careful as they make their way in towards turn at number three. Again, super close on this one. It is brilliant racing that we always see in these qualifying heats. So close, so technical. It's just a fine line of absolutely nailing it or it all going terribly wrong. It is such a, a delicate sport here. These carts are so fragile. They can take a good hit, but trust me, if you get it a little bit too wrong, they do break quite easily. Oh, as I say, we've got some of the best drivers in the world we do. In, uh, in our sports here this weekend. Zach Drummond is definitely one of them. Can he hold on to this lead? This top three don't want to battle too much at this stage. As, uh, let's have a look at a replay. This is, uh, this is the view that I wanted to see on Iglesias weaving his way through. That's switched back beautifully. We've, that's how close it got. I think there was a little bit of a touch between Iglesias and Cantan there. What a move uh, by the Frenchman, gaining positions on both Matliev and Cantan in that move. Superb camera angle there from the live on board. As put two drivers and through goes Eichmann as well. So now Drummond down into P3. The change for the lead has happened. Sebastiano Pavan leading the way for the Tony Kart Racing team. The Italian looking very, very strong here. They didn't lose too much time there in, uh, in all of that, but Sebastiano Pavan has been able to drive off the end. He's been very impressed with how he's been, uh, he's been racing. He's in the top five in the first two rounds of his races. This could be an improvement even further if he can at least hold on to this second place. But I don't think he's going to be thinking about that. I think he's going to be fully focused on making a move on Pavan for the lead. Yep, certainly so. Let's see what happens, though, as the race progresses. We're on lap seven of 11 at the moment, and Pavan leads the way by, well, nothing at the moment. A tenth of a second between himself and uh, Eichmanns, who's there in second place. Drummond's not given up either. He is waiting there in P3, the same as what Eichmanns did when Pavan attacked Drummond. So he's just waiting in the sidelines there for an attack. Louis Iglesias, though, is starting to close in as well. So this could be a four-car battle for the lead very soon. Matviev there in P5, also not hanging back too far. Check over the shoulder. We go on board here with Iglesias there in P4. As you can see there, the racing lines being slightly different between Eichmanns and Pavan just ahead. Eichmanns taking the slightly wider entry. The marbles getting flicked up here. The degradation on the tyres really kicking in now. The track here, so much rubber going down. And you can see there the marbling on the tyre just a little bit there. They've got to start thinking when they want to deploy the fresh tyres over the course of this weekend. But I think this shot brilliantly shows that what the what the drivers are reporting from the Maxis tyres, that yes, there's, there's an initial drop-off that we saw in time of qualifying, but it's then a very it's stable tyre yeah. through this phase. And uh, that looks uh, look like a bit of rubber in good condition at this stage for Iglesias. Back at the front of the order, Pavan and Eichmanns. Eichmanns closing in. That was a good sector number two uh, for the Belgian. Is he going to shape up for a move here into turn one? No, and I don't think this time he's a bit too far back. And there's still the attentions of Drummond, Iglesias, Matliev and Kantan behind. This is a difficult one to, to call in terms of what do you do if you're Ian Eichmanns? Because there's a big reward there of another six points ahead. But it's, it's always risky at this circuit, picking your moment, but particularly when you've got a pack of four so close behind, you could end up losing a good haul of points here. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a big risk here for Eichmanns. I mean, he's going to go for the move. I don't doubt that whatsoever. Uh, you know, you're a racing driver, you see a gap, you go for it. That's pretty much signed, sealed and done. Uh, you know, it's just a case of when he does it. He needs to pick a moment where it's easily... Uh, it's an easy spot to defend straight away after you've done it. And that's usually going to be around the Turn 6 area. Off the track there, that's not gone well for Michael Adir, the CRG driver uh, from Italy, out of this race. Uh, and what's happened to that? That looks to me like that's just a mechanical failure there. It doesn't look like there's any damage. He's just pulled it off the uh, in one of the escape roads. Uh, not good news at all there for Michael Adir. was running in top 20. That is not the kind of results that, uh, that uh, Michael would have wanted. 16th and 9th so far in the first two rounds. That is going to be the worst result of the weekend for, uh, for the CRG driver. Pavan under control, it feels, at the moment. No attack yet from Eichmanns. Pavan has uh, shown some great skill this weekend of managing uh, these races. A bit of a specialist on uh, keeping the tyres in check, but also that gap of around two to three tenths. It's like that, that buffer zone from 
Eichmann's being tempted to go for a, a big one on the brakes. Coming round to complete lap number 10. Last lap board is going to be out. Glazias shaping up perhaps for a move on Drummond's third place. Pavan, again, just doing enough right now. Yeah, exactly that. Controlling the race, not uh, pushing too hard, but he does have to be careful. He can't relax too much because Eichmann's is still within lunge distance. If anything, he's close enough right now to go for a lunge here, but no, thinks against it. Pavan taking the normal racing line Crucially, not going defensive. And we did see this yesterday. The viewers at home, you wouldn't have seen it. Uh, we weren't live yesterday. But uh, we did see Pavan when he was battling with another. He didn't go defensive on these last couple of laps where some drivers, they would go defensive. They would feel that pressure. And that gives the green light to the drivers behind to go for those moves. You don't see that with Sebastiano Pavan. He just consistently holds that position. And that's why he keeps winning these races. Great stuff for him. Here is Louis Iglesias a little further back, but through the final corner, no defensive driving, no contest whatsoever. It will be close to the line, but it's Pavan who takes it from Eichmann's across the uh, finish line. Zach Drummond finishes in third place. Dimitri Matviev finishes in P4 from Louis Iglesias in P5. Avriav Ramirez finishes in P6 from Vivek Kampen. Alexander Bondarev, who we didn't speak about much in that race, he came up into P8 from Lovewey Sam Budler and Tiziano Monza in P10. Brilliant little race there. And Sebastiano Pavan, I think that's a good result. P3 to P1. I would say it's one of the, the racing driver skills that I think is very under, understated of winning the race as slowly as possible. Yes. That was a, that was a brilliant uh, clinic there from Sebastiano Pavan in, uh, in demonstrating just that. Uh, keeping it calm, keeping the machinery in check for the later rounds. He does take the lead in the intermediate classification. Uh, sets the stall out for the likes of Gomez and Shilkunas, Mugato, Turney, to see if uh, any of them can go past Pavan. But 141 points from a possible 150 at this stage for Pavan. That is some very good work indeed. Uh, Pavan from Eichmanns, Drummond, Matviev, Iglesias. That's your top five on the provisional results for the qualifying heat between groups B and F. A good drive from Xavier Avramidis up to sixth place. We've got Canton in seventh place ahead of Alexander Bondarev. Louvre Sam Budler needed that result to the, uh, to the South African up to uh, P9. Tiziano Monza up 10. A great drive from Kai Villarts as well uh, up 11 places. Not the first time that uh, Villarts has done that this weekend. Sun Chao Yu, 12th. Andy Kasani was your biggest mover uh, up 15 to 13th spot. Salim Hanna uh, in 14th ahead of Emily Corvisto the up and down week so far uh, there in 15th. Murillo de Rocca, 16th. Blake Nash, Louis, uh, Leo Nilsson, Vegard Clemenson, Patrick Ogredovchik all inside the top 20. Not a good result again for Clemenson is having a difficult weekend in race trim. Let's have a look at some of the highlights. Very close between the parallels on the entry to turn one for the first time. There was drama in the background. My goodness me, Tom Dussol nearly going over, uh, being caught in effect by the Tony Kart ahead. Uh, this was the onboard view from Louis Iglesias starting P5. Look how close it is there and it's at this point here the exit of turn one into turn two. It really does tighten up. Good moves early on from Pavan down the inside of Canthan there. The first of two amazing switchbacks by Iglesias to, uh, to take that position. It really was a good po portion of the circuit turn 12, turn 13 for Iglesias. Uh, Canton fought back early on lap number three. Ian Eichmann's reading the situation well to get past uh, the CRG as well. Matviev came on the attack. Uh, wasn't looking too good at the moment for uh, Iglesias, but then this was the highlight of his race. On the outside round, Matviev switching to the inside oh. of Canton. So, so close there on, uh, on turn 14, but he got through and uh, gain two spots through that. That was a change for the lead, wheel to wheel. Drummond having to give up not one, but two places there. Pavan and Eichmann's going through. That was the retirement uh, from Michael Adair, unfortunately, halfway through the race. And on the final lap here, you can see how close it got between all of our drivers. Matviev sending it down the inside on that final lap. But this is brilliant stuff here. And this was another angle of that same overtake straight down the inside in towards turn 11. Uh, nicely done there, but then again, just uh, looking to that inside line, not close enough. Oh, big oversteer moment there. Was that contact or was that just the tyres giving up there? Not too sure. Was a close finish though, and it would go the way of Sebastiano Pavan. Eichmann's finishing in second place from Zach Drummond. A bit of a 
a brilliant result there for our drivers and the cleanup operation becomes underway. Well, we'll turn our attention back to the junior category. Now it's qualifying heat C versus E coming up next. Nine laps and back to 13 kilometers in terms of race distance. And starting on pole for this one is Sebastian Letamaki, who had a brilliant result over the way. Uh, here's what he had to say after qualifying. At the halfway point of the timed qualifying for OK Junior today, and uh, Sebastian, uh, Sebastian Letimaki, top of the timesheets from that uh, second group, second in the overall standings at the moment. Lots of reasons to be pleased with that effort. Yeah, well, uh, it was a, it was a lot of uh, slowing down in the first laps, and then I just took my place in the end of the pack, and then I just started to push and did one uh, clean lap and. Uh, that's what I get. You were in the, la the latter half of the group there of 25 drivers. You got over the line just in time to, to get that extra lap in. What was going through, uh, through your mind through the, through the laps leading up to the last one? Well, I was, uh, of course, in the formation lab. I was already checking the time, if I like how much I can slow down. And then I saw that uh, even if I would be in front or if I would be in the back, I still would get only the same amount of laps. So it's better to be in the back because the track all the time gets better and then, uh, yeah. What have you and the Tony Kart team in, uh, or the, the team in general been working on with the Tony Kart chassis the last few weeks? Well, uh, it has been working uh, really good. Like, Tony Kart is a really good chassis and the engines, of course, are very good. Good to, uh, to speak there with uh, Sebastian Letimaki. Second and third so far this weekend in the, uh, in the first two rounds of races for uh, Sebastian Letimaki is on uh, good form. He's in, got a decent position at the moment in the intermediate classification, sat uh, sixth in the points. There is a, a view of the drivers awaiting their instructions to head out on circuit, sat in the, uh, the pre-grid. Uh, good spot to be that this weekend, Anthony. Nice and undershade. Some brilliant uh, uh, work has been done here at Carthodromo International, Lucas Guerrero, in preparation for this event, inclu including that awning. Yes, indeed. That as well as uh, the new briefing room and uh, press room as well. Yep. Uh, fantastic. I mean, two weeks ago when we were last here, it was just an empty container shell. And now it's a, a, an amazing building with uh, some great interior. Uh, there is Kenzo Craigie starting this one on the outside row. Uh, P4 and a P3 for him over the course of this uh, weekend. So again, looking for some good results, keeping that momentum, staying within that sort of top area there. That's what you want to see from uh, all the drivers. Again, it is a fine line of just continuously getting those good results. And then sometimes some drivers just, they lack that conversation and they, they just drop back in one of the races, don't they? You never want to see that. You always want to be right at that sharp end. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's, it's where you want to be. It's where you want to gain these points in the intermediate classification because ultimately it turns into championship points for the start of the season here. Uh, big race this, I feel, uh, mate, for Alfie Slater. Dis uh, yeah. DSQ in the first round of heats, and then a sixth yesterday. The race pace is definitely there, uh, but, but with that DSQ and that zero score, he, he needs to keep going and getting some good results pretty much through the rest of today. Yep, definitely so. Well, let's take you through the starting lineup for this one. Sebastian Lettemarki is at a second and a third over the course of the weekend, starts it on pole position. Kenzo Craigie starting alongside Alfie Slater. Like you said, DSQ in his first race. What can he do today? He'll have Sebastian Mins alongside Oliver Kinmark and Daniel Kelleher. They go from row three with Asher Oshtin and Arjun Kraling on row four. Bosco Arias, who also is looking quick. He's had a race win. He's got uh, Alexander Zulfakari alongside Arthur Huang and Rocco Coronel go from row six with Ethan Lennon and Oliver Rasmussen on row seven. Matt Corby and Zhang Jose round up row number eight. Drew Waltz and Xiao Si Hyun go from the ninth row of the grid. Someone has lost a chain guard out there. We'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, Jarrett Clark and Scott Lindblom on the tenth row of the grid. Lindblom's been brilliant in, uh, in race trim so far. Uh, look out for the Swede gaining positions again. Kazai Oguma and Augustus Tognolo on row 11. Joel Pokola and Travis Teo on row 12. Jill Hama and uh, Marcel Schabo on row 13. Marco Gast and Alexander Usnim on row 14. Mark Brovko and Cole Denham row 15. Manuel Miguez and Philip Planeta on row 16. Kit Belofsky's had a tough weekend so far. Starts 33rd and last in this one. Now, we've seen a chain guard being recovered from the circuit and yes. back to Park Ferme. The much bigger question is, 
Who's lost it? Whose was it? So, uh, biggest question you can take from it, it was silver. Now, what livery does a silver chain guard match with? Well, uh, pretty much every single yeah. uh, <laughs> livery it matches with. But who is missing one? That is the ultimate question. Uh, looking at that picture there, it's a nice angle. Ooh, is it? Oh, no, I, I don't know. I couldn't see any there that were missing. Well, it is a mystery, but I am sure when we see a technical flag go up at some point in the race, we'll know who it is. And I think there, Nigel Edge was just having a, a quick look there as well, seeing if he can spot uh, who that's come off. So, uh, well, wow, very interesting. Well, we're going to get lined up, ready to go on this one. Again, Kenzo Craigie very far up the road here. He's going to have to bring it back a little bit here. Otherwise, they're not going to get formed up and gridded in time. Uh, they're going to come into the uh, very quoted hands of uh, Gonzalo Planta, who I suspect is probably going to be like, what are you doing? Slow down. And there they are on cue. <laughs> <laughs> They're on your screen. Bring it all together. Thank you very much. And that looks like we're good to go for racing here. Into the final corner then. It's Sebastian Lettermarki on the left-hand side of your screen. It's Kenzo Craigie on the right-hand side of your screen. The lights go round again. There we go. It is a false start. I thought we were going then. Uh, there we go. They're toying with us. Well, indeed. Uh, so they'll go round for another formation lap formation not to Pasquale Lupoli's uh, liking. So Letimaki and Craigie on the first row. Slater and Mins on row two. Sebastian Mins impressed this morning. Uh, arguably one of uh, Sebastian Mins' best races so far this year was second. Uh, I, I do wonder, I don't think it's a massive advantage, but obviously the anyone on the outside, second, fourth, sixth, that's, that's your group E's, have raced today in these conditions as yep. opposed to Group C. This is the first time they've been out since the hotter conditions yesterday. Do you think there's a, there's a bit of something to be said about that? Maybe, but I think we'd be looking a little bit too deep into it. Uh, so, but yeah, possibly you could have something there. It, uh, it's not the first time they've not been out today. They will have done warmer True, this morning, warm, so they will yeah. have got somewhat used to the conditions. Uh, but yeah, certainly so. It's their first race of today. So yeah, you can say that they're less into it than what the outside road and would be. And you actually say that the sun is starting to break through the clouds. We're starting to get close to the conditions that we had yesterday. Darlow Planter looking over this uh, this formation. It's a very serious man. Yes. Let's see if uh, this one is good to go. The red lights are on. Will they turn green to start this one? Yes, they do. Away we go then. Four nine laps in OK Junior. Good start for both drivers on the front row. Kenzo Craig, he's going to try and fight it around the outside. Oh, this driver's off towards the back of the field. I think uh, only one driver's not going to get away. It is hey, the two, uh, 694 of Alexander Usneem. Uh, but uh, no, Craig, he wasn't quite able to take the lead there, but it was a mighty good effort. One of the Ward Racing entries is uh, it's Mark Brovko, isn't it? The 250 who's been delayed. But that was a mighty effort from Kenzo Craig to try and take the lead. I think he'll take second place as off there is uh, that's the 692 of Gilles Herman. So it's all drivers in that uh, bottom third who are having problems on this opening lap. Craigie losing positions now, though. Two of the Ricky Flynn's and the Cart Republic have come through. That's 244 Sebastian Mins, who started on the outside. Alfie Slater's going to be in there as well. Someone's kicked up a whole load of dirt through the middle of the circuit. But what a first lap for Letimaki. Leads by a second. Here comes the RFM train, down the inside, Mins taking second place, followed through by his teammate Slater. Kenzo Craigie gains from that as well, is back up to fourth. Yep, Kelleher back down uh, a fair few positions there. Yellow flags briefly out, they're quickly removed as the race continues. But yeah, still good. Ooh, that's a very damaged CRG that's coming into the pit lane. That is the 245, that's Marco Gast uh, that unfortunately will have a bent axle and he's very much out of this race. Well, that's a big shame here. Oh, and there's a nose cone off as well. Now that looks like, uh, is that a VDK nose cone? It is. Mm -hmm. uh, so who's in a VDK out there that possibly hasn't got a front nose cone now? Well, we saw Gilles Herman going for a we bit of rally did. cross in his VDK and uh, is towards the back of the field. Uh, meanwhile, back at the front, Letty Mackey is not being closed in by the pack. Everybody else is fighting over second place. Ian Craig trying to come through there and does get back up to fourth place. Craig is fought through into third. Slater having a difficult moment here because here comes everyone. Rocco Coronel going by. Poor Alfie Slater has gone down to I think, around 10th place and there might be the answer to our 
mystery of who lost the chain guard because Arthur Huang has had a technical flag. However, am I about to correct myself on that one? Uh, because that is an also another a VDK. VDK. So it so could be the nose cone. It could be the missing chain guard. I think it's the nose cone. I think there's too much of a, a similarity there. Uh, to not go for it. Well, there we go. It's been a very interesting opening few laps of this uh, qualifying heat. Led to Marquis, though, leads it by just over a second from Sebastian Mins. Kenzo Craigie, now back in third place, has got control of this uh, battle. Uh, now he's starting to break away. Bosco Adias with some great results as well yesterday, starting to push his way uh, through the field. He's up there into P4. He's got Crailing in tow. Uh, he's got Kelleher there as well. There's another cart off, two carts off the track. It's a fusion. And a CRG, this looks like it is Kit Belowski and possibly Asher Oshtein off the circuit. Uh, and that's not gone well at all for them. Yeah, really rotten weekend so far for uh, for Kit Belowski. A real shame he had some Oof. good preparation for this. It's through again. Arjen Kralin getting past uh, Daniel Kelleher there. Very close quarters through turn number eight. Rocker Coronel reads the situation superbly, gains a spot once more is having a good weekend once again is the Dutchman it's a fast frenetic race this uh, for a qualifying heat we're only at the mid stage of it Alfie Slater having a think there of going down the inside of Daniel Kelleher uh, had trouble with the final chicane it seemed Alfie Slater that's uh, led to the disqualification from the first round of heats yesterday just being a bit more conservative there. I think if it was yesterday, Slater would have gone for that move on Kelleher, but it looks like he's learned his lesson. Just holding back, playing that long game. Yeah, exactly that. And he needs it as well after that DSQ, uh, you know, from his first race. You know, he needs those good results coming in thick and fast. Bosco Arias with the fastest lap of the race at the moment as uh, Zhang Jose now becomes the next driver of uh, many to become under investigation. Uh, so hopefully he'll keep a close eye on what he's doing out on circuits. But Craigie... Uh, well, it says Craig is leading. No, Letamaki's still there. So, uh, yeah, it's Letamaki from Min. So, uh, yeah, don't let the timing screen fool you there. Uh, they are still fine and working away. Here's a replay then of into the pit lane. This was uh, Marco Gast, which had a ghastly rear axle. There you go. Pun definitely intended. Not a, not a double not good moment there for uh, yeah. Marco, uh, Marco Gast. Yeah. Hinge driver having difficulties in this one that's a bit too much to overcome here's Rocker Coronel ahead of Daniel Kelleher and Alfie Slater this is sixth seventh eighth less than four laps to go oh Kelleher down the inside lovely stuff gets past Coronel Slater has to pull out of that one yet the door was always going to shut in Alfie Slater's face there through turn eight that would have been a, a bit too brave to go down the inside at that point, Kelleher checking over the shoulder to see where Coronel is, whether there's going to be a, a response. Uh, I think that we just see an investigation flag for Bruno uh, Bosco Arias, sorry. Yes, we did. So Bosco Arias uh, in the 293 in fourth place has uh, caught the attention of race control. Alfie Slater has got past Rocker Coronel now. That's uh, Slater up to seventh place and a lot of other drivers coming into play. Uh, Lennon. Uh, Kinmark as well. Scott Lindblom has gained spots once more in this uh, in this race. It's up eight at the moment. Some good fights happening out there on circuit. This is the one though for third place. Kenzo Craigie trying to hold off Bosco Arias. Arias took a race win earlier on this weekend, and uh, we're just going to have a look at a replay here. This is the two Cart Republics getting very close together, uh, crailing down the inside. Coronel going through as well. Yep, certainly so. I don't think they will have appreciated that. Travis Teo seeing a warning flag as well. Back with this battle for third place. Arias closing in on Craigie with that investigation flag looming. Oscar Arias needs to be careful here. Into that final chicane then. We go on to, I think, the penultimate lap. Last lap will be out uh, on this lap when they next come round. Ah, there is another technical flag that I can just see going up on our screen. And that is going to the 2-1-1 of, I believe, Scott, Scott Lindblom. Lindblom. Yes, now, has Scott Lindblom been our driver with the missing chain guard? He would check out Tony Cart livery with a silver chain guard. We'll, uh, we'll try and see uh, whether, well, he's made a lot of progress again in this race. Scott Lindblom uh, up 12 spots so far, but that will be the end of that for the Swedish driver. 
Uh, what do we get to have a look at here? This is Slater down the inside of Coronel. That's going to get a little bit Oof. tight. That's going to get very tight indeed. Contact between Coronel and Kelleher there. I think that was through turn number 14, one of the fastest corners on the circuit. And uh, my, oh my, lucky for those all three of those drivers that they're still in the race. Yep, they are indeed. Well, there we go. Drama still happening thick and fast. Uh, we'll keep an eye on all the racing as it progresses as we go on to the final lap here. Sebastian Letamaki from Sebastian Mint. Uh, then it is Kento Craigie still there in third place as they make their way through. Not close enough yet for any action. It's just been a controlled race from the finished driver here for the Tony Kart Racing team. Again, a nice controlled race. That's been a, a very good performance from the Finn here this weekend. But we'll want to keep this, this form going. That's uh, what he wasn't quite able to do in, in preparations for this event two weeks ago. And, uh, I think he left Valencia last time he was here, you know, racing, thinking that there's more to, there's more to be had. Uh, but in a way, that's a uh, good preparation for the European Championship round. Plenty to learn, and he's definitely learned from it. Through the final couple of corners then for Sebastian Letimaki. And it's another top three, and it's a win this time. 50 points to Letimaki. Improves his position in the intermediate classification to third as things stand. Great result again for Sebastian Mintz. That's the second second he's had today. Uh, Follows that up with the 11th from yesterday. And is another driver who's going to be higher in the scores uh, than they were at the start of this round. I thought that might be happening. Black flag for Scott Lindblom. 2-1-1 did not serve that mechanical flag before the end of the race. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep in touch with the, that situation. But that is not good news at all for Scott Lindblom. Third for Kenzo Craigie. Another third, Anthony. Uh, that's two, uh, three results in the top five. Uh, two in the top three now. Again, shown he's got good form this weekend. Yeah, I say, it's, just, it's consistency, isn't it? And yeah. Consistency is key. Uh, in these race weekends and uh, the same for uh, this man here Sebastian Letamaki that's his first win of the weekend a second and a third yesterday so again he's had one two three at the moment so he's uh, he's looking good uh, for some good results here well drivers make their way back to Park Ferme uh, the small cleanup job uh, gets underway now there you can see uh, Alexander Zneem's cart there just being pulled out of the way let's take you through the provisional classifications at the end of that one Letamaki from Sebastian Mintz and Kenzo Craigie Bosco Adias Margin Crailing, Alfie Slater from Daniel Kelleher. It's got Limblom, uh, who did receive that black flag right at the end of the race, finished in P8. Rocco Coronel, Matt Corby, and Ethan Lennon uh, round out the top 11 from Corsair Guma. Derek Clark, is, uh, Iskander Zulfakari, and Oliver Kinmark, the top 15. 16th place down. You see some big movers uh, all the way throughout. Eight positions gained for Travis Teo, who finishes in P16 uh, as well, as uh, Sun Xiao Yu finishing in 17th place. Uh, from through Rolts, Rasmussen, Denham, uh, who gained 10 positions in the top 20. Here's uh, some of the highlights in this one. Great start. Craigie at the start looked like he was going to go for the lead right around the outside at the back of the grid. Coming into shot now, whizzing through. Poor, oh, scary moment at the start, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a very quick entry to turn one. Thankfully, uh, everyone was able to continue from that one. Uh, this was the move, so Craigie did take he the did, lead yeah. uh, off of turn two, but Letimaki responded straight away. Very good move there into turn number three and then four. Fast start for uh, for the Ricky Flynn Motorsport drivers as well. Min's up to third, uh, fighting with uh, Kelleher, Alpha Slater as well. Uh, the rest of them following through, there would not be good uh, moments for Marco Gast and uh, the, two, the, the 692 there. Uh, taking to the gravel. That was Marco Gast retiring with a bent axle. That was Arthur Huang's front bumper off his VDK. He would uh, go not much further. That's another tough race for Kit Bolofsky. Uh, no good points from that one. Asher Oxstein would also retire on the spot there on lap number three. Really good scrap, Anthony, in the, in the top ten once again. Plenty of drivers looking for opportunities to gain points. That was a mighty close moment between Slater, Kelleher and Coronel. They did both all continue on to finish in the top 10. But for Sebastian uh, Letimaki, uh, it's just going from strength to strength now, but it's, it's about keeping that form going through round four and round five. That's what he needs to do if he's going to get those good points for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, certainly so. Well, we turn our attention now to the senior category once again, qualifying heat C versus E. And this driver here, Lewis Werrell, 
He did very well in qualifying. Here's what he had to say after qualifying. Here once again in Park Ferme uh, with Lewis Werrell. Lewis, P1 in that second group, but so, so close to beating Zach Drummond's time. Uh, I'm sure you're happy with being first in that session, but was there any more time out there? Was, was that all, all that was out there in that group? I think um, it was a good lap. I think I could have improved half a tenth, but the problem is it's so close. If you improve, it pushes you up a lo load of positions and stuff like that. But it was a good quality, and I'm happy to be on pole in my group. It, it seems quite a confusing set of qualifying time qualifying from us in the uh, in the box. Like you, you went purple of anyone through the very last uh, sector on that last lap. Just how difficult is it out there to string the perfect lap together? It's hard because you need like a, a great track position. You need everything to be perfect. Um, I think we we got a good track position, but we still could have gone quicker. I would say. It's been, a, it's been a solid start to the season for Forza Racing. Your teammate, Dries van Langenong, is currently the, the fastest driver in OK Juniors. What, what do you think is the key to the performance that Forza Racing have had so far this year? I think everybody at the team's been working hard. We've been working hard. Um, been chipping away every race, learning, getting better and for the most important race this weekend. All the team are quite fast. Well, good to catch up there with uh, Lewis. Well, at the end of uh, his qualifying session uh, yesterday, two races out of two with second place finishes. He's hunting for that first win of the weekend and he's got a good opportunity from his current starting position, pole position on the inside row. But he has got Joe Turney starting just behind him. Starting alongside him, though, is Anatoly Kavalkin, who we saw out earlier on, as well with uh, Matthias Mogatu just behind as well. Some big racing results that we are expecting from this one. But the first time these two groups will be racing with each other over the course of this weekend. The whistle will blow very, very soon as we get ready to go racing here. But right now, it is all down to Group C and E. What can they do in this race? It's going to be a tense time for them again. Welcome to everyone joining us from around the world. If you're watching on YouTube, Facebook or motorsport.tv, welcome. Make sure you hit that like button. Uh, and share it out as well, you know, share the stream, make sure uh, as many people around the world are watching all these fantastic drivers racing here at Valencia for the first round of the FIA Karting European Championship. Here we go then, let's see through the starting lineup for qualifying heat C versus E. It's Lewis Werrell and Anatoly Kavalkin who start this one on the front row of the grid. Joe Turney and Mateus Morgato go from row two with Miguel Costa and Mies Huber on row three. Tain Soleil and Wojciech Roda round out row number four from Mark Dudnitsky and Thibaut Ramikers on row five. Ludovico Busso and Stefan Antonov round out row six with Stefano Padani and Freddie Lloyd on row seven. Marty Wittenden and Guy Alva go from row number eight. Len Nijsch and Marius Barryberg looking to improve from row number nine. Jacob Mikolev and uh, Yerasim Skulinov go from row ten. Santino Panetta and Louis Castellini start on row 11. Vilma Svan and Hugo Marti start on row 12. Lewis Bird and Peter Stiller go from row 13. And then it's Sophia Zanfari and Jensen Graham completing the 28 runners in this one on row 14. Two race winners so far this, uh, this weekend in this, uh, in this group. Turney with his second race yesterday. Uh, Mugato with his first race yesterday. Uh, is this, this is another one that could be quite key for that intermediate classification, I feel. Yeah, certainly could do. I mean, let's see what happens uh, in this one, though. It's going to be a tense time for all of them. I think Turney, he's on good fighting form here, uh, you know, this weekend. Great to see him bounce back so quickly after the World Championships. Obviously, uh, uh, very terrible what happened to him. Great to see that he is back fighting strong here and uh, really putting in the good results. Usually when a, a driver has a, a moment like that, it can really play uh, with the mind mentality of a driver, you know, uh, but not him. He's, he's really got back into it and uh, really pushed really strong. And ever the professional is Joe Turney. And I think what's been key this week is the strong qualifying. Sometimes that's eluded Joe Turney over the years, but uh, he's, uh, he's fighting hard in uh, this first round of the season. We shouldn't forget that Joe Turney has won the first round of the European Championship the last two years. Yep. He won here at Valencia in uh, in 2023, and he took the first round in 2022 as well. So, you know, again, he's uh, he's 
part of the discussion this weekend. He's currently sat fifth in the points on 91. Could move up, could take the lead uh, if results go his way in this one. 11 laps once more for the drivers to decide. Uh, apologies, no, he could. Yes, he could move up to the top, go from 10th to, uh, to the lead. 91 up to Pavan at the moment on 141. Let's go then. Let's see if we're ready for a race start. No, we're not. We're no. not. We're going to go around again. It is another false start. So drivers have another opportunity to get some temperature into those Maxi's tyres. Well, again, you can see there the rubber that's gone down onto the circuit. The tyres have done a superb job of making sure this track is super grippy. There's been so many great reports coming in from the drivers and the Maxis team here this weekend. I've been doing so much work with data and the tyres, really looking at focusing at all the tyres over the course of this weekend. Really great to see the support uh, from one of the partners here, as well as P1 Fuels as well. P1 Fuels are uh, one of the partners uh, for the championship this year and uh, have been delivering. They've got a few delegates here this weekend as well, keeping a very close eye on everything. Uh, and it is great to see the support we've got from uh, some of our partners here. Absolutely. So the drivers, Going round turn 14 now, and uh, we'll form up the grid once again. Lewis Werrell on pole position, a couple of seconds so far this weekend for the driver who finished top of the international karting. Uh, kart ranking, we shouldn't forget, in 2023. Stepping up now into the OK category. Kavalkin alongside will look to bounce back from a difficult race earlier on this morning. Originally... P9 on the road in that one. Turney and Mogato, as mentioned, plenty of experience on that second row. Miguel Costa has had two top fives so far this weekend. We'll look to get a third at least here. Uh, grid not completely compact together. Lewis Werrell, there's a bit of a gap there between Lewis Werrell and Joe Turney. Are we good for a start this time for Group C and E? Yes, we are. Green light. Away we go then for 11 laps here at Valencia. Challenge from the outside there from Kavalkin, but it's going to be the inside line. Werrell and Turney first and second out of turn number one. It's a clean start indeed through turns one and two. Uh, but a routine move from those drivers on the inside. As here comes Cavalca trying to go down the inside of Miguel Costa. Wrestles his way back into P3 there. Mogato's on the outside now and under attack from Mies Huber. It's that run again. Those drivers on the inside into turn one. They've benefited there on lap one. They certainly have. Well, it's a nice clean start all the way through the first uh, main sectors there. And a good breakaway for Werrell and Cavalkin. This is a much cleaner start then from Anatoly Cavalkin. Uh, as well, uh, he's uh, there. You can see just behind, he's in P3 as he tries to push ahead. Turney is closing in, though, on Lewis Werrell. There will be a race for the lead, I suspect, as the two take very different racing lines there through that final which came Looked like uh, Werrell slightly outbraked himself there. Yeah, and a lot more curb for, for Joe Turney on that first lap. As the heat comes into the tyres. Early stages of lap two. Who's had a good start? Santino Panetta's had a good start, up six spots to... 15th place. Uh, Freddie Lloyd has work to do. He's lost four spots in that one, down to 18th. Uh, the rest of them fighting their way through. I think Mark Dubnitsky's on the move. The CRG up to 6th place. Now, great start from the Estonian there in the 1-1-5. Next target. In fact, he's already got past. Uh, he's attacking Mogato now for that next position. But for Werrell and Turney, Straight away, they're getting into the uh, getting into the train here, trying to break that gap away from uh, Kavalkin and, and Costa behind. That's the thing; they've got two teammates there, two parallels that are going to work together through lap number three. Still very much in the balance right now. There is two very different driving styles here between these two drivers. You can see Werrell; he really throws it in and does a sharp, quick action with the steering wheel to just get it tucked in first. And then he seems to stamp on the power and uses that back end to step out a bit. The cart looks so unstable, but it's working for him. It's a very unusual little driving style that we're seeing there. And then you look at Turney, who's an experienced senior driver, and he's just, he's nice and smooth. Uh, again, you, you've got to think, Werrell here is running on the Esprit chassis. You've got uh, Turney, who's running on a uh, Cart Republic chassis, two very different chassis. Uh, you know, you've got uh, a You've got a factory team versus uh, a satellite team, eventually, as well, with Forza Racing, who have really done a great job uh, with their team, uh, really showing that a satellite team can take it to the factory teams in the, uh, in the European Championship. It's not a coincidence that we've been seeing Forza Racing runners in both categories. Yeah. 
at the at the sharp end. The best of them in terms of results, of course, being Van Langendonk in the OK Junior category. But I absolutely agree. I think they've been one of the teams, if not the team of the season so far. Long way to go, though, of course. Long way to go in this race as well. We're on lap number four. Fastest driver out there on circuit is your man in third place. 54.733 for Anatoly Kowalkin. And that gap is coming down. It's a half second between second and third. So Kowalkin in the 54.7s, turning ahead in the 54.8s. Well, again, just keeping an eye on that gap as they go back onto the back straight now it is controlled all the way throughout Kavalkin uh, still there in third place has got his teammate Costa all over his rear bumper once again those two I suspect are in full uh, teamwork mode now to try and close in on these two because if Turner goes for the move these two want to be right there at the right time if they start passing between each other there'll be no chance of them closing up so they do have to be careful here Hubert and Morgato just behind. Morgato's been much more controlled in this race. We saw him die through the order. He got up into a second really quickly earlier on yesterday. And there's the change down the inside. Turney goes for the move, takes the lead of this one. And crucially, they didn't lose any time there whatsoever. If they did, it was so minimal, it's not affected them whatsoever. Very similar move to, to what we saw from Turney yesterday in the second round where he could feel a little bit of pressure coming from third, fourth, fifth behind and decided, yep, yeah, I'm going to go for it now. I want to take this one from the front and control it. Gesture there between the two Britons to say, yeah, let's keep working together. We need to build that gap up to the parallels behind. There's a couple of investigation flags out there to report in on. One of them is the 129 of, of uh, Guy Alberg down into uh, 20th place, the 157 and the 158 as well. Uh, that's written in, in the 157 and uh, the uh, 158 of Svan, so plenty for race control to be dealing with and the stewards likewise. Nato there in fifth place now ahead of uh, Mies Huben. Mies Huben having a, a good weekend so far, uh, well experienced as uh, he's uh, scored points at the Czech event last year, that was in the, uh, the junior category. It's down the inside, Magato on the move once again, uh, getting past Kavalkin and Kavalkin after that early pace in this race seems to be fading right now, Anthony. He does a little bit here, but not too much. He's, uh, you know, still in contention. It's just a case of, you know, slotting in, finding that position there. Marty Ritten and uh, seeing a warning flag as well out there. Uh, back on the start finish straight then. We're on lap 7 of 11 right now. We're in turn one. Nice and calm. This has been probably one of the calmest races we've had so far uh, today. Most of them have been pretty hectic uh, right now I think everyone's just gone right okay I think we need to settle down a little bit here we've had so many interesting races that we're starting to mess the order up a little bit so uh, now I think maybe an agreement between the paddock and say let's all simmer down a little bit in these last few races it, it's, it's getting to that stage I feel Anthony where where drivers are now consolidating the work that they've done so far this weekend they've been fast they've been aggressive you know someone like joe turney currently sat second in the points this is this is the stage where you go right okay well i've got a win under my belt i've got a third you know i'll take a second i'd rather win of course but they're not going to throw everything at this and potentially end up you know outside the top 20 with a, with a scruffy race it's time to really get there get your head down is that a, that's another as a warning flag this time uh, to marty written he said he was under investigation in the 157 warning flag has uh, has appeared for something that's happened out there uh, the 114 there on your screens Miguel Costa well uh, trying to deal with Morgato right now Morgato has already got past one of the parallels now setting sights on his uh, compatriot there in third place as their pace relative to the to the uh, the front two at the moment they're dropping off 54 sevens for Turney and Werrell 54 eight for Costa 54 six for Magato, so quite important that Magato plays this next lap or so correctly, he's going to have any chance of winning this race. Yes, sir. so well, again, eyes are focused all the way throughout this field here. We're all just looking down at something on his cart here, is uh, fading slightly away from Turney again. Everyone just in, you know, conservation mode right now, they're just looking after the tyres. We've not seen any deployment of new tyres yet either. Nope. Uh, you know, we are nearing the half race distance of today you know we've got through so many of the races already uh, as Costa 
beginning to uh, come under pressure here from Morgato. Morgato's now started to come back a little bit in this race. This is more like it. He's looking for a potential third place finish here. Absolutely. I, I, well, we had a chat with some of the drivers yesterday about tyres and, and the consensus was drivers were going to do everything that they can to keep those tyres for the last set of heats, maybe even the super heats. So considering we're still in round three here of five, I think it's going to be a while before we see the front runners. You might see someone a little bit further down the order. Someone who's had two, three bad results go, I've got to play the tyres now to pull myself back into this. Uh, but yeah, I think it's going, to, it's going to be a while, despite the, the temperatures being up here this weekend, before we see a half set being deployed. Watch it, I'll now be completely wrong. And certainly, yeah. half the people <laughs> will do it in the fourth round. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I think you're right. But uh, there you go. We just don't know. But it, it, again, it's a lottery, I think, for a lot of these drivers. Again, learning what they took from two weeks ago, when to deploy them. And, and we saw a, a load of different form factors as well. We saw drivers going for brand new sets on both the left-hand side. We saw drivers going for brand new sets on the right-hand side. Uh, and we saw drivers go for a, a, a mismatch. Now, you're standing up in the coverage box, and I can understand why off screen uh, there is a marshal holding what appears to be a Birrell yes. uh, nose cone. Uh, now, who's that come off? They're going through turn 12 and 13 now. Uh, oh, well, be... I suspect it's Martin Ritter. Ah, yes, that would, uh, that would check out. And uh, I think he's lost his transponder in the uh, process as well, because uh, he's not uh, registered going through turn, well, through the first two sectors. So uh, not a good race for Ritter. Then. Very good race, though, for Joe Turney on the final lap now, in control. And uh, Lewis Werrell as well. We'll have a, a trio of second places if these two can get to the chequered flag for Turney, it'll be a second win of the weekend. We'll move him up to second at the moment on the intermediate classification, actually tied on points with the leader. It'd be Turney and Pavan both on 141. Werrell would move up to third place. Both of them checking over the shoulder. Costa is holding Legato off for that third place, but Joe Turney we said he was back, he definitely is back now. That's two wins from three for Joe Turney and Cart Republic here this weekend. Lewis Werrell in the top two again. Costa third, Magato fourth, and Anatoly Kavalkin back in the top five in that one. Yep, certainly so. A nice controlled race then from the two Brits there. One, two finish for Cart Republic and for Forza Racing. Turney from Werrell. Then it is the Paralin of Miguel Costa from Brazil and Matez Morgato, also from Brazil, the Charles Leclerc Racing team. Anatoly Kavalkin finishes in P5 from Mies Huben, Thibaut Ramikas and Tame Soleil. Round out the top eight from Mark Domniski and Ludovico Busso, the top ten. They will make their way back into Park Ferme. Certainly a nice, calm race. Good to see a little bit of a change in pace there. Yeah, but an important one for all those drivers at the front end. As I say, they've really moved themselves into a strong position now for the rest of the qualifying heats. Drivers returning to Park Ferme then. will uh, go on the Weybridge. And uh, then uh, drivers selected, of course, will, uh, will have their machines checked out by the tech scrutineers. Uh, so this result is therefore provisional, of course. Joe Turney wins by six and a half tenths ahead of Lewis Werrell. And uh, the two Britons were followed by two Brazilians. Uh, Miguel Costa there in third and Mateus Morgato, the former world champion in fourth. Anatoly Kavalk in fifth. Mies Huben, good score again for Huben. Seventh, eighth, and sixth now for the Dutchman. Thibaut Ramakas, uh, a quiet race, but again, fifth, sixth and seventh now for, uh, for the winner here in the juniors last year. Tame Soleil, Mark Dimitski, and Ludovico Busso in the top 10. Stefan Antonov, Maris Barry Berg, Stefano Padani and Santino Panetta in a top 15 completed by Freddie Lloyd. Wojciech Voda, 16th, does see the chequered flag this time ahead of Hugo Marti, Jakob Mikolov, Guy Albag and Len Nice. That was a top 20. Yes, it was. Well, let's have a look at some of the highlights from that one again. Good start from Kavalkin, trying to hold it around the outside. I think I'm understanding why he holds back a little bit. It's so he can get that run in towards turn number one, uh, of course, but not overtaken before that self-finish line. That you, that you don't want. Uh, but, yeah, like you say, initially, it's uh, a good strategy. Werrell then held on to the lead. Turney trying to go in those early stages. He would stay there in second place until later on he would get that overtake done. Valkin back down the inside of his teammate, uh, Miguel Costa, as Costa would have to go defensive uh, from himself and the uh, Charles Leclerc cart there of Matez 
uh, Morgato, uh, who would try to fight through. Then the overtake, the change for the race lead, the only overtake uh, we saw between these two, Turney down the inside of Werrell. That was signed, sealed and done later on. Costoya returning the favor to his teammate, the same place he overtook earlier on, getting back up into P3. As Morgato started to close in. Not many highlights in that one. It was a calm race, but Turney takes the win from Lewis Werrell. A nice, consistent race from the two of them, from Miguel Costa in third place. Well, that's them done for the senior category. We're back with the juniors now, qualifying heat A versus D. And let's catch up with Theresa Van Langendonk, who has had two wins so far. This is what he had to say after qualifying. Here in Park Ferme at the end of Series 1, first group for OK Junior, and a familiar face at the top of the timesheets at the moment, Dries van Langendonk. Uh, big pressure there, Dries, leaving it very close to the end, but you got the lap in. Tell me a little bit about it. Um, yeah, it was a very good lap. Um, I got the time temp in right towards the end. Um, so definitely needed that second lap. and uh, Yeah, just everyone was a bit waiting for me because... Uh, yeah, they all want to slipstream, so I just decided to go because I knew I needed those two laps. And, um, yeah, it played out perfectly for me, and I just put the lap together and uh, pulled it. Conditions very different today to what we've had so far in the meeting and, and in uh, in previous runs around here as well. How how much of a factor was that in, uh, in preparation today? Well, I would say it's a big factor, obviously. Um, the heat for the drivers is very, very, very um, difficult shall I say and also for the tyres it's difficult to know what the track's going exactly going to do and the pre tyre pressures so um, yeah I mean it didn't really change the track that much compared to last week but um, yeah definitely did do some interesting choices to the tyre pressures nice to get your qualifying time qualifying out the way you can relax to an extent now for uh, for the rest of this part of the uh, the competition how are you, how are you feeling ahead of the heats for the qualifying heats later this afternoon um yeah very very confident um obviously i've been very fast in the practices as well and yeah just looking forward to it and uh, we'll see what we can do well, they're good to hear from Theresa Lang and Donk, who is in fine form over the course of this weekend. Let's quickly take you through the lineup as drivers are already on their formation lap. Theresa Lang and Donk and Jack Eilif on row number one, Alex Malota and Vladimir Ivanikov on row two. Then it's Boris Lysen with Roman Kamyab, Henry Domain and Matt uh, Van Ruin. Then it's uh, Remy Samchek and Ily Christian on row five, Bogdan Cosma and Louis Cochet. Then it's Theo Batisi and Devin Voltz on row seven, Luke Corner and Kasper Rajpold on row eight. Alex Martinez and Shenzhou Yu on row nine, William. Uh, Kalaga and uh, Makar Savalev on row number 10. Benjamin Maniak and Amin Kara Osman on row 11. Scott Marsh and Bruno Grick on row 12. Max Endicott and Kara Furhand on row 13. Ahead of Sunan Zay and Meryl Pelders on row 14. Maria Neto looking to respond after a difficult race earlier on this morning is on row 15 alongside Enzo Rizagiro. Uh, Alex Brunner, Vanessa Shulkanet and Francois Cadal completes the 33 runners in this one. Packed grid again. Busy time for a lot of our drivers as they make their way into the final chicane. Uh, relatively spread out, I would say. The front of the grid going into the final corner, the back of the grid still going around turns 15 and 16. So uh, there you can see now getting formed up at the background. So you can see, looks like we are ready to go here. Nice shots from the outside of that final corner. Great work from the camera crew here from RGO and C. Lights go green. We are racing down in towards turn number one. You can see the hand gestures already coming in. Malota saying, you go, go, go to Doris Van Langendonk. Down the inside in towards turn number one. Three wide in the background. And uh, it looks like there's been a bit of a coming together. Cuts off in the background there. Two cuts off at turn number two. Yeah, I think it was one of the energy courses. It might have been Makar Savalev who was having a problem coming out of the uh, first corner. I think Kasper Reipold also has been delayed. Everyone back running again here on lap one. Another great start from Dries van Langendonk. He's been making this look very routine from the front of the order. It's been a good start as well for Boris Lysen, who's in st a really strong race earlier on this, after uh, this morning. And uh, it's straight up into second place in this one. A great start there. Yep, certainly is. And you can see the whole field here so close still on this opening lap as they go into the final corner then for the first time. Out they go. Let's take you through 
the lineup then as they cross. It is Van Langendonk from Lysen, Malota from Eilif, the main uh, sound check. Then it's uh, Ivanikov, Kamyab, Cosma, and Van Ruin, the top 10 uh, so far. Uh, Malota closing in on Boris Lysen, just that little bit as well. But uh, it all looking very close here. Van Langendonk not able to break away. Huge lunge down the inside there from Jack Eilif. Really showing some good momentum there down the inside of Alex Malota and moves up into P3. Yeah, bold move there from the Texan. Great speed in the uh, timed qualifying sessions uh, yesterday. And uh, another great moment for Forza Racing. We talked about it in the previous race with Lewis Whale. This is uh, more evidence of it uh, that uh, they've got some good speed on their wagons so far this weekend. There's the 208 of Henry Domain for Energy Corsa, currently running in the top five. A little tap on the head there to Remick Samchuk behind said, let's keep working together here. Long way to go, end of lap number two. Here are your two leaders, Dries van Langendonk. We've not said this too much uh, so far here in Valencia. Under pressure from Boris Lysen in the Sony cars. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is uh, nice and close here between the two of them. I suspect it will just be a case of let's see what happens with these two. The gap uh, is staying the same. It's not closing in, but it's just too open uh, for an overtake here. I think uh, Boris Lysen needs to be more careful of uh, the fellow Forza racing driver of Jack Eilif behind, who is starting to close in on these two here. Indeed. The moment on the uh, the live points for the intermediate classification. And Langendonk would move back level with Schaufler on 150. Kostoya would move down to third. Letterback in Arias in the top five as well. As here comes Henry Domain down the inside of uh, Tamchik. This is a response to going back through into fourth place. Roman Kamyab. Had a good weekend so far there as well for Ricky Flynn Motorsports in sixth place. They've dropped Bogdan Cosma Christopher uh, behind there in seventh place. Alex Malota has just taken that spot. And uh, there's a new fastest lap of the race as well for Devin Waltz, 55.986. And uh, again, show the Forza Racing entries have got that speed. And the warning flag has just gone out to the 259. That's Scott Marsh. So, well... We'll keep an eye on all the battles all the way throughout the field. You can still see there's uh, action going on in the background there. Bogdan Cosma uh, making moves as well. Just in the background of your shot, you can see he's now leading that next train of carts. As we look at this one now, this looks like a move being lined up here. Down the inside, Roman Kamyab, and gets it done. Moves up into P5 now. Let me sound check. Down into P6. Roman Kamyab looking to improve on fourth place yesterday in the second round of heats. So that's the strongest result so far for... The 2-6-3, back at the front of the order. Dries van Langendonk leading this one still. New fastest lap has just gone in from the driver two behind. His teammate Jack Eilif for 55.934. Moment, Eilif would be moving into the top 10 in the points. 108 with a third place. We'll want more here. It's 50 points for a race win at this stage, 44 for second place, 41 for third. The reward is there if you can get to the front. Another quick check over the shoulder from Van Langendonk. I don't, don't think Lyons is going to be going for a move there, just a little bit too far back. Uh, we've got live on boards here. This is uh, Theo Battisti down the inside. That's into the hairpin of turn 11. A little bit too much speed. Back through comes Louis Cachet. Oh, oh blocking together there. Front and rear bumpers. And, uh, yeah, and Louis Cachet now falling oh down the order and out of the race. There is Louis Cachet. That's at the final chicane. Out as well uh, is the 276. This is all going down the order at the last, the last corner. That's uh, Shen out of the race. And uh, Shilkenate as well. So yeah. three drivers and a lot of damage there to the Lithuanian's uh, TRG. Wow, that is a lot of damage indeed. Well, that is a big shame. So many drivers then knocked out uh, in the midway part of this race, then into that final corner. Unsure what caused that. Certainly, probably a concertina effect. The, the, the speed that you're going into that corner is so, so quick. Uh, you know, the concertina effect can kick in. You know, a driver setting it down the inside, driver defending last second. You know, lots can happen. We just didn't see it here. Right, Van Langendonk, Lysen and Eilif. One, two, three here on your screen. So close between the three of them, but Eilif looking closer to Lysen 
that Lysen's looking to Van Langendonk here as they go into the infield section. Kamyab's got the fastest lap of the race. He's starting to close in uh, on these two as well. The Energy Course and the Ricky Flynn uh, drivers working together in the background. On board of Bar Wow, okay. Ooh. That's a great view of what happened there. Huge moment. That's just a cart, the Constantino effect. Like I was yep. saying, under braking, just mounted that rear curb. Wow. Yeah, that, that'll have been a Shulkane going up in the air and uh, Cachet and Sen Chen out of the race as well on the spot into the final chicane. Two laps to go then in this qualifying heat. Van Lange, oh, Van Lange dogs wide there. This is going to be license opportunity down the inside into turn one. Eilert's going to follow through as well. A mistake. A mistake from Dries van Langendonk. He's human after all, it would seem. And on the attack now, Eilert down the inside. So Forza racing back to the lead of this one. It's going to be a response from Brick to retake the lead. Van Langendonk responds to go back into second place. My, oh my, what a race has broken out here. Yeah, it certainly has. But now it is Lysen who leads the way. But now he's got to be careful because he's got two Forza racing drivers working together now to try and uh, work against him. So he's not out of the woods just yet. They will use that slipstream, that toe, uh, you know, the draft to really help themselves along. And look how close he's all over that rear bumper is Van Langendonk here on Lysen. Uh, keep an eye though, Kamyab is closing in. Keep an eye on Domain as well. Defensive goes Lysen into the final chicane as we see the last lap board come out now. Wheel to wheel, they go side by side. Down the start, finish straight on the final lap of the race. It's the two Forza Karts going through and it's Van Lang and Duncan I left now one, two. Super teamwork from the two Forza racing drivers. There was a bump draft there from I left behind to get his teammate down on the inside lane. Kamyab's right there though. Roman Kamyab is having a very strong finish to this race in fourth place. Could be better in the, uh, in the next few corners. Dries van Langendonk leads it out now, stretches away from Eilif in second place. Eilif defends on, uh, on second place there, down the inside. Here comes Kamyab. Kamyab gets both of them round the outside. Brilliant stuff from Roman Kamyab. Goes past Lysen and Eilif there. Van Langendonk is away on track for another victory here in Valencia. But who's going to take second, third, fourth and the other major points in this one? Dries van Langendonk is going to make it three from three. Matches Schaubler at the top of the table. Second place to Roman Kamyab. Third to Boris Lysen. That is superb. Kamyab there taking full advantage of that battle happening just ahead of him, finishing in that P2. I've got to say, Dries van Langendonk, he cracked a little bit under pressure, but he certainly pulled it back, didn't he? What a uh, recovery from that. Really impressive response yeah. there. That, that's what makes champions. And uh, for Dries van Langendonk, you know, he bounced straight back there, didn't panic. Lesser drivers would have fallen down the order uh, in all of that. But Dries van Langendonk goes back to the top of the intermediate classification then uh, for the OK Junior category. That leaves us with two drivers on three wins apiece. And uh, well, what that also means is that later on this afternoon, there's gonna be one heck of a race when those two meet out on circuit, Van Langen, Donk and Schaufler. Yeah, that's gonna be an exciting one, isn't it? We found our two unstoppables at the moment and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Well, the cleanup job underway. Uh, well, luckily for us, it shouldn't be too much of a delay because it's right next to uh, Park Ferme, the mechanics coming out. There's a look at the uh, provisional classifications at the end of that one. Uh, gone over the top 10 at the moment. Melota rounding out that top 10. Matt Van Ruen from Devon Vault. Uh, Maria Neto and Luke Corda. Uh, Maria Neto, brilliant race there. 16 places gained to finish in P13. Scott Marsh finishing in 15th place. Alex Martinez from Mel Peldis. Uh, Benjamin Maniak uh, from Francois Kerdel. Alex Brunner from Bruno Greek. William Kalija and Enzo Ruggiero. Casper uh, Radtroll, Max Endercott, Cara uh, uh, Armin, Cameron Osman, and Kerry uh, Fairhand, the 27 finishers. Unfortunately, for Theo Atisti, uh, Sun Azi, Louis Cochet, Vanessa Shilkanate, uh, Senja Yu, and Mekar Savalev, all retirements in that race. Let's have a look at some of the highlights then from the, uh, the latest heat in OK Junior. A good start for Dries van Langendonk at the front. There'd be trouble for Makar Savalev in the middle of the pack. Uh, the driver for Energy Corsa would not see the end of lap one. This was the onboard view from Batisti right in the middle of that pack. Seeing how tight it is through 
uh, the uh, middle part of turn number one. It's a relatively clean start for those in the front. There you see in the background in the energy course, the Savalev uh, would retire on lap number one. Dries van Langendonck got into his rhythm. Behind, there was a very fast start from Boris Leiden. was up from fifth place to uh, be in second place early on. Uh, a locking moment there for Battisti into turn number 11. Jack Eilif was having a strong start as well. Another one of Forza Racing's entries uh, showing some a good turn of pace. Henry Domain gaining a position on lap two would uh, be pushing for the top five once again. Yeah, indeed. Back down the inside there. Kamyab trying to follow as well, trying to uh, get past. Uh, Remy Samchek not able to do so again on board uh, with Batisti. That's the moment he locked uh, his front nose with another. Kamyab down the inside, getting that move done. He would move up then. He would work together with Domain. This was the scary moment into the final chicane, the concertina effect. He lost so many drivers. Great little camera angle there uh, with uh, Batisti back down the inside. This is in towards turn number three. Uh, now, what happened here? Just another little angle. Well, this was the mistake from Van Langendonk. Uh, a, a rare moment. And uh, yeah, certainly put him under pressure. Dropped down to third, but certainly fought back first. And he did indeed. Well, having his teammate there in the form of Jack Eilif was key in, the, uh, in what happened on the last three laps. Jack Eilif went for the lead into turn three on uh, Boris Lysen. That opened the door for Van Langendonk to get back through side by side between two Forza Racing drivers into uh, into turn six and Boris Lysen was looking good at this stage Batisti uh, continued to gain positions this is uh, Batisti going past Cara Furhand there into turn number one going on to the final lap of the race uh, eventually you had the two Forza Racing uh, drivers at the front this was a great moment for Roman Kamyab the attack from Lysen down the inside through turn 11 Kamyab would sweep around the outside for turn 12 and uh, in the end, finished in second place. This was a very close moment uh, indeed between Batisti and uh, Sun and C there in the final corner. That is why both of those drivers uh, didn't quite make uh, the finish of the positions they would have wanted. There you go. At the end of that one, it would go the way though of Therese van Langendonk from Roman Kamyab. Boris Lysen just holding on to third place in that race. Well, there you go. Next race coming up, thick and fast, back with the senior category now, uh, with groups A versus D uh, for the OK category. Uh, 11 laps, 15.5 kilometers again. Gomez starting this one on pole position, has got a busy race ahead of him over the course of the next few laps. Uh, but certainly, is a driver who always is a testament to, to pure skill. He's got everything he needs to focus on. He remains focused all the way throughout the setup, uh, the start of the weekend, uh, the build up to the races, and of course, this moment right here, about to get ready. Uh, we caught up with him before the race weekend. This is what he had to say. Uh, I think we can make it this year. Last year, we arrived really close. Uh, we missed a little bit on the last round where we lose it. But I think this year we can do a better job and we will try to do it. I think my last years of my career was amazing, to be honest. Uh, the last two years uh, I grow up a lot and I think I'm getting better every time. I'm more intelligent and get more confident always with my package and I think we are doing a really good job. I think we will try to win more what we can. Uh, we are doing a lot of tests in the start of the year. We try a lot of new things uh, to improve better and better. And I think we can arrive to win some good race this year and try to win the both FAA championships. Ladies and gentlemen, to the FIA Karting European Championships 2024. Uh, there you can see some of the marshals out on track having a good chat with some of our officials out there. You can see uh, Luis Gonzalez there and Gonzalo Plata uh, just having a chat with some of the marshals. Uh, 
Yeah, we just uh, caught up there with Gabriel Gomez uh, before the race weekend, of course, talking a little bit about, uh, you know, the setup, everything, getting focused, ready, what they can do last year, and really focusing on both the FIA championships this year as well. Yeah, it, it's a big year for, uh, for the OK categories. Uh, very much looking forward to, uh, you know, the, the whole calendar we've got here, Valencia, uh, we're off to Val d'Argentan, of yeah, course, in France, next uh, yeah. in, in France, uh, Slovakia. Uh, and Sweden as well, and and a return for the United Kingdom, of course, as well. The, for the first time, PF International hosting the World Championships uh, in September. It's uh, it's going to be a fascinating year. There's your timetable for uh, for the well, the next chunk of the afternoon. The qualifying heat for uh, A and D groups in OK will be out next. Uh, there'll be a lunch break after we've completed the B versus E uh, races for both the OK Junior and the OK Class. Uh, say back around an hour after the end of that uh, that race, kicking off at 13:20, and basically we then do everything that we've done this morning again as we culminate the uh, the final heats when we go through uh, the A versus C, D versus E, A versus F, and then B versus C that will take us up to around 18:00 6 p.m. local time, the last race of the day, due to go off at uh, 5:35 p.m. here in Spain. Whistle blows then as we get ready to go racing. Qualifying heat A versus D. Let's take you through the full starting lineup then for the next race. It's Gabriel Gomez and Marcus Shilkunas on the front row of the grid. David Botaro and Roland Cooklane go from row number two. Then it's Finn McLaughlin and Luna Flusha on row three. David Volta and Guillaume Buzar going from row four. Noel Montero and Jakob Kamenek go from row five on the top ten from Casper uh, Henriksen. And David Cosmo on row six. Row seven, it's Yindrid Peschel and Alpec Soy. Thomas Kinsey and Jimmy Eliasco from row number eight. Uh, Yu Capo and Joseph Smith start on row nine. Kian Fada had a good run last time out. Starts this one from row ten. Is joined by Leon Brunner. Uh, Philip Carras and Dominic Simek start on row 11. Oscar Rapetto and Kuba Reisky start on row 12. Alphonse Mietinen and Matteo Giacardi start on row 13. Nico Lachnalate uh, and uh, Ivo Becerra start on row 14. And uh, I suspect it will be 28 carts on the grid. Uh, Elliot Kaczynski uh, is due to start this one, but yep. hasn't taken the start of any race so far this weekend. And indeed, he's not, he's not taking the start of this one. Cool. Right, so drivers ending their out lap. They'll be going on to their formation lap now again. Tension starting to build. Some good results that we saw earlier on. Gomez as well. This time has got, uh, obviously, a lot of very talented drivers out there he's got to contend with here, but he's not got the likes of uh, Mulgato in this one or anything. If anything, it might be a slightly calmer race for him, and that's no offence to any other driver out there, of course, but he seems to be able to control his races quite well. Uh, absolutely. The, the other key thing is he's got teammates around him. Yeah. The, the top three on the grid here are all CRG factory runners, uh, so... I'm sure that they'll have been told by their team managers to go, just take it calmly, yep. chaps. You know, still have a good fight out there, but make sure that we uh, we bring home some strong results because they don't want to, this. This is probably the biggest risk to the great work they did yesterday in time to qualifying. Yeah, when they're all out together, you know, you want to capitalise on this opportunity for the team. Yeah, certainly. So we we said it in qualifying, didn't we? CRG have done something right this weekend, uh, like they've done on many many weekends. But they've nailed it, and they've—I think—they've delivered that to the whole team as well. And that's—that's that's the benefit of being with, you know, a, a proper team in this one, a factory team. You know, they share data with all your teammates as well. You really do get a, a, a great inkling of that one. And then you can see there's more CRGs just a little further back as well. So CRG really with a big showing there with uh, Guillaume Buzar as well. You've got Yukapo out there also. You've got Jakob Rashki uh, a little further back in the field as well. So all of them there. But these three. At the moment, Gomez, Shilkane, and Bataro on the front two rows with then a ward racing of Roland Cook Lane just alongside on the Tony cart. So three factory carts on the front two rows. Let's see what happens then as they go into the tram lines. Is it green flag first time? Yes, it is. Down in towards turn one they go and it's a great getaway then from the inside row as it looks like uh, uh, Shilkunas blocks then McLaughlin from going through into third place. The three teammates working well then as they go in towards uh, turn number three. It's a CRG one, two, three 
from the VDK of Finn McLaughlin, who's there in P4. That was wonderfully constructed. Oh, it's contact there oh. from... Uh, that's out goes Shilkunas, out goes McLaughlin. No, Montero is involved as well. And another one of the ward racing is entries Kasper is Casper Henriksen. Casper Henriksen, who had problems earlier on this afternoon as well. All of them out of contention here on lap one. Well, that's another one for Noah Montero. Remember earlier on in the day, he was caught out with an incident that wasn't even his fault. You know, he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Can they get it restarted? Uh, well, McLaughlin can't. He's out. Montero can't. Well, that's a very interesting uh, driving style there. He stood up in the cart. Uh, amazingly, he's got it going. Uh, he's now back down, uh, so uh, Chilkun is still in this race. Uh, and I was about to say, it was a wonderfully orchestrated start that first and third, the first of the two CRGs pushed through, and then Shilkunas defended that against the rest of the field, slotted into third, and basically sacrificed his second place for, uh, for the cause there of CRG. But then it all went wrong through turn number seven. The top two are away, though. 1.2 seconds clear of uh, David Walter behind in the first of the Tony cards. What a start for Luna Flusha as well. Is up in fourth place, having a strong weekend on the Prima Racing entry. Uh, and Guillaume Buzar has also had a good start up to fifth place. Yindrik Peschel is sixth. Yep, certainly so. David Walter and Luna Flusha here, though, on your screens. Third and fourth place on track down into that final chicane. Again, no changes there as they go through. Jakob Kamenek seeing a warning flag uh, out on track as well. Uh, big groups starting to form out there as well. Guillaume Buzar has had a brilliant start to his race, uh, up uh, several positions, up three uh, into P5. The same as Yindris Peschel, seven positions gained. He's up to P6. Yeah, David Cosmas also gaining positions out there. He's now up to seventh place. That's an improvement of five. Uh, it's, it's all those drivers who are kind of in the midfield who benefited from uh, from the melee through turn number seven on lap number one. But Gomez and Bataro, not for the first time this weekend, are in the rhythm now. They will know the job in hand, which is to bring home good points. At the moment, Gomez would move back to the top of the intermediate classification. He's standing there on 150 points, nine clear of Pavan and Turney. Bataro would be improving up to sixth place. Luna Flusha would also be moving into the top 10 with this score. Uh, 112 currently good enough for ninth. Warning flag for Evo Pastera. Yes, and so well, we'll keep an eye on these battles. But the top two here, I think, are just in limbo mode now. Let's just get it to the end. Let's push each other along. Don't fight all of that. Well, back here, though, we see Guillaume Bazaar under pressure from David Cosma. Cosma just behind. You can see there with the blue suit, yellow gloves just coming through. Not close enough for a move there through turn number nine. And towards 11 they go, the tight twisty S section here. Famous for its overtakes and lunges down the inside. None so far on this lap as they make their way down the back straight. Keep an eye here. Cosma looking like he was maybe going for a move here into the final chicane. Is he thinking about it? Thinks about it, goes for it down the inside. Wow, found a small gap there and just managed to squeeze through on Guillaume Buzar. That was a sweet move from, uh, from David Cosmo Christopher there. Absolutely spot on in the, uh, in the Chesler liveried Cart Republic. Well, fourth place now uh, for, uh, sorry, sixth place for David Cosmo. Hindrick Peschel, new fastest lap of the heat so far, 54.453. And uh, I'm just wondering here about uh, uh, David Walter. They're in third place. It's really down to him. He's got to he's got to put those sectors and laps in to close this, and he is doing. It, these top two, Gomez and Bataro, they're not going to fight. They're not going to break this formation unless they're forced to. Of course, and that's where David, David Walter comes into play. Well, I think Bataro's dropping off the back from Gomez now. The gap still is increasing. It's gone to just over half a second now. What is it when they next cross the start finish line? Yeah, even more now as well. He's losing a little bit here and there. So Gomez is breaking away. Volta is closing in on Bataro. So this battle for second place could heat up. Luna is still there in P4. Uh, so not able to really close in on the battle up ahead, but still having a really good controlled race there in P4. Yeah, I've been really impressed with, uh, with Luna Flusha's work so far this weekend. New fastest lap of the race by David Cosmo Christopher for Cart Republic 54.312. The gap up to Peschel ahead is 0.2 of a second. A lot of dirt 
dust being kicked off uh, off the curves. I think a bit of uh, the white paint as well. That's what you're seeing. Is we're going to have a look at a replay here. This is of the start, uh, and this is what happened to uh, to McLaughlin. There ground goes Montero. But I think Henriksen. It's Henriksen's turn to be in the wrong place at the wrong time there. But that is uh, how it all occurred. To take Montero, Henriksen, McLaughlin out of this race. We could out of the running as well. Again, that was a properly good move from uh, Contra Christopher into the final chicane. Uh, likewise, I think it was that the 150 or the 180 of uh, Jakob Kamenek. Kamenek going through uh, with a similar move. Ooh, that dear. was the 10th place is out. That is Thomas Kinsey's Tony Cart. Uh, Kinsey out of the cart and to a Marshall post, but that is the end of the race for the Frenchman. And uh, that'll be points for uh, probably 24th or no better. And a change for second place. Now Eduardo has got past Bataro, so Bataro down into third place now and falling into the clutches of Luna Flusia, who is starting to close in as well. Now, how did that happen? Now, down in towards turn at number seven, just straight down the inside. Classic overtake move here at Valencia. Straight down the inside there, no time wasted whatsoever. Now, can Walter close in to Gomez? We're on lap eight of 11 at the moment, and the gap is just one second. Let's keep an eye on that gap. I think it could close down. I think it could indeed, but uh, Gomez has been so good at controlling the race. This, this is that phase where he now starts to think tyres, don't take too much out of them, but also don't let a rival come into play. Let's see, having a little look here at uh, the battle for fifth place. This is Peschel and Cosmo Christopher. Cosmo Christopher has closed in uh, to the driver from Czechia ahead. Will they work together, though, to try and close in on Luna Flusha? Because similarly, they've got enough time here to close down that gap, which is around 0.8 of a second. Uh, but Flusha is getting the benefits of the toe as well off the back of uh, Pataro. So again, this is another one that's all in the balance. With three laps to go. Gomez leading. What is the gap? It's going out. 1.1 uh, seconds to Walter there. So he is well. A close eye on this all the way throughout. Felucia starting to pile on that pressure now. The same as uh, Peschel and Cosmo who are closing in the background. Peschel's come through the order a little bit on this one. He's up to P5. Uh, eight positions gained for Yindrich Peschel. Really just siding his way through the field. He's been uh, just sneaking his way through, hasn't he? Has indeed. Uh, should notice as well, Henrik, uh, Henriksen got moving again uh, after that first lap. So uh, at least it's a couple of points with the demise of of Kinsey out there for Henriksen uh, off the one attempt to get the cart running again. Coming to the end of lap number nine, Luna Flusha closing in on Davide Bataro's third place here. Not quite close enough to go for a move there into the chicane with the Prima racing. It's looking balanced, really nicely balanced and using the grip well through the chicane. Well, the Prima team doing a good job. They've got so many uh, young drivers all within uh, Formula One junior programs uh, within their team. Obviously, the Framer uh, team doing uh, big works in karting and, of course, in the world of Formula Racing as well. So it's a great team uh, to be part of a stepping stone. Obviously, uh, a, a satellite team, they run on the Kart Republic chassis. So uh, a lot of drivers would have used that in their previous teams coming over to Prima. So, yeah, big shake up for them. Luna Felicia being one of them, you know, coming into this one. Really great to see. Uh, them all working so, so hard out there. But English Peschel here just starting to close in a little bit here. This could get interesting in these last couple of laps because I reckon we could see some fireworks here. Absolutely. It takes one moment to uh, to bring this one alive. End of lap number 10 then. Gomez has the lead by uh, three quarters of a second ahead of Walter. Pataro, Blucher. Peschel and Cosmo Christopher. That's the order third through sixth at the moment, but is it going to stay like that? This has been another a great performance from Gabriel Gomez. He's uh, thought well through the course of this race of how he wants to play it out. There's a move down the inside. Peschel on Flusha. Flusha responds back through, and here comes Cosmo Christopher. So that didn't work for Peschel at all. Tried to gain one, lost one in the end. It's good news for Bataro. Bit of a gap now. Uh, behind himself in third place. Can Luna Flusha hold on to this fourth place? There's a lane underneath for Cosmo Christopher. Flusha closes that door. Great racing for, uh, for those, uh, those positions just outside the top three. But Gabriel Gomez remains unbeaten in Valencia here this weekend. Makes it three from three. Goes back to the top of the intermediate classification. A superb drive 
once again from Gabriel Gomez. Yep, certainly so. He can be very happy with that one. Then as he makes his way back into Park Ferme, it was a CRG 1, 2, 3 at the start of that race. They would only get two of their drivers in the top three, though, at the end of it. Gomez uh, taking the win from Tony Kart's David Volta. Davide Pataro finishing in third place from Luna Flusha. Uh, David Cosma finishing in fifth place. Seven positions gained from Yindich Peschel, seven places. Guillaume Buzar finishing in P7 from Roland Cook Lane. Alpac Soy from Jakob Kamenek rounding out the top 10. Alpac Soy gaining five places in that one. So there were big movers all the way throughout that field. Uh, but certainly, again, another relatively calm one, but still five retirements from that race. Yes, uh, as the drivers come back into Park Ferme, they'll be happy with their morning's work. We will see Group A back out around uh, 3.20 local time here in Spain for uh, Group D. Slightly earlier, they'll be out uh, after, immediately after the lunch break. There is your provisional result then. Gomez from Walter, Bataro, Flusha, Cosmo Christopher, your top five, Yindri Peschel in sixth place ahead of Dien Buzar, uh, Roland Kuklain. Alphax Soy, good race from Alphax Soy there, up five spots tonight. Uh, Jakob Kamenek completing the top ten. Uh, positions gained in the midfield for most drivers. Jimmy Elias was in 11th place ahead of Kieran Fardan. Uh, 13th for Leon Bruner. Uh, Joseph Smith and uh, Philippe Karras complete the top 15. Yuka Po, uh, Alphonse Mittenen, uh, Ivo Becerra, Kuba Reisky, uh, Dominic Simek all inside the top 20. Uh, Oscar Repetto. Matteo Giacardi, Nico Lachnalate, uh, all finishing in the main group of drivers. Casper Henriksen did also see the finish, uh, uh, see the checkered flag, but was some 30 seconds back from the leaders. Retirements uh, in the end for uh, Thomas Kinsey, Marcus Shilkunas, Finn McLaughlin, Noah Montero, and did not start for Elliot Kaczynski. Let's take a look at the highlights in that one. Initially, in towards turn one and three, it was a good start for the three CRG drivers, just breaking away from the rest of the field. It was when you get to turn seven on this lap, which is only a few corners away from this moment, the concertina effect comes in, and I'm unsure about what actually unfolds here. All the drivers go to the inside. Oh, it just looked like on the brakes there uh, was the first of the CRGs going through, uh, Shilkunas, and then uh, I think just straight to the back, McLaughlin nowhere to go. It was lucky that Flusha didn't get involved in that one as well. Yeah, they, they, I think there was a, there was a heart in mouth moment for Luna Flusha. Now on lap number one, moves again into the final chicane. This I think was the best of them all. David Cosma uh, going through there and in the end would be rewarded with a top five. Jakob Kamenek also uh, adding to the uh, array of moves, loads of moves in that race into the final chicane. Uh, important move this. This is David Walter getting down the inside of Davide Bataro, breaking the CRG 1-2 apart. Peschel had a good go late on at trying to get past Luna Flusha, but ran wide off the racing line, lost the spot to uh, David Cosmo Christopher. In the end, though, Gabriel Gomez goes back to the top of the intermediate classification. A perfect score so far for uh, for Gomez, 150 points from a possible 159 points now is his lead. Certainly so. Well, three-minute board goes up there. Ross Upton, our judge of facts, on the uh, dummy grid there, showing all of our drivers. We turn our attention now, of course, to the OK Junior and to our grid on this one. Kosturian Craigie starting this one from the front row of the grid. Uh, but earlier on in the weekend, it was the Italian Jacopo Martinese who we caught up with. Uh, he has had himself a really good uh, run of races. Been up there in the sharp end. There you can see him on your screen. Certainly a driver you can't miss out over the course of this weekend. We caught up with him before the weekend started. Here's what he had to say. Uh, there are a, a lot of few drivers now uh, that are quite fast. Uh, for sure, we are not going to be uh, the only one to, to be in the fight for the championship. I think being positive is very important in, in karting because uh, I feel like if I, arrive in, in, if I arrive in the morning with a, with a sad face, everything, I know that everything is going to be, during the day, everything is going to be quite, quite difficult uh, during every session. Uh, so I always try to keep to keep everything positive, so I can I can work very good with the team, with my mechanic, and find the perfect uh, the perfect 
the perfect film for the chassis. As always, I'll try my best. Uh, for sure, arriving P3, arriving, arriving third in the last season was good because it was the first year. But this year, I'm, I'm focusing on arriving higher, every time higher. Um, we are going to try to take the, the best result, trying to, to take the championship, the title. Nothing, nothing is easy in life. Uh, we are going to see how it's going to be this season. Well, good to chat there to Jacopo Martinez ahead of this weekend. Good to see. Uh, whistle blows, uh, I think the one minute board just going out then to uh, the pre grid there before we get going for this next race. Qualifying heat B versus E. There you can see our driver starting on pole position for this one, Christian Costoya. Uh, Costoya certainly having a very good run of races here. Uh, looking very strong this weekend, isn't he? Yeah, it's looking very strong indeed. Is uh, is Christian Costoy with a, with a smile on his face yes. as well, which uh, had a difficult time in the ending of preparations for for this first round of the year. But uh, you know, we spoke to him after his time qualifying, and he's like, he had a bounce in his step that uh, that uh, it was really good to see. And uh, yeah, he's just got to keep that form running and keeping it calm. There's a lot to be decided. Uh, I think this similar can be said for Kenza Craigie as well. Yeah. It's been Really solid so far. Every single race has finished at least fourth uh, on the road. It's uh, another great opportunity to start on that front row. Certainly so is. Whistle blows then, and the carts get fired up. The next race is heading out onto the circuit, qualifying heat B versus E. Let's take you through the full starting lineup. Christian Costoya and Kenzo Craigie starting this one on the front row of the grid. Filippo Sala and Sebastian Mins going from row two. James Anagnostiadis and Daniel Keller on row three with Jacopo Martinez and Arjun Kraling on row four. Dean Hugendorn and Isakanda Zolfakari, they go from row five, round out the top ten. Jensen Burnett and Rocco Coronel on row six. Alexander Dalstrom and Oliver Rasmussen, they round out row seven. And Jesse Phillips and Zhang Jose on row number eight. Matvey Durganov and Xiao Si Yun go from the ninth row of the grid. Efim Durinov and Scott Lindblom start on row ten. Andrea Marni. And Augustus Toniolo starts on row 11. Paul Andriotis and Travis Teo start on row number 12. Tamis Gender and Marcel Chevo start on the 13th row of the grid. Mary Barryberg and Alexander Usneem have work to do from row 14. Completing the top 30 on row 15, you find Archie Owen and Cole Denham, two uh, British drivers there. Felipe Rice and uh, Philip Ponetta go from row 16. And Gustavo de Silva completes the 13th three cart fields here for uh, this one all 33 drivers out on circuit current situation in the intermediate classification at this point two drivers on 150 points so this member is the start of a new round uh, for the juniors so everybody's raced three times uh, so far so van langen dog and on 150 apiece costoya third on 138 with the opportunity here to take the lead uh, after this race, Letimaki fourth on 135. Craigie and Arias tied on 120 for fifth. And it's uh, Lysen, Mins, Martinezzi and Kamyab, the rest of your top ten. Again, packed grid and uh, a lot of motions have been happening within that intermediate classifications. Of course, uh, they will double up to uh, what they get in the, uh, in the superheats. These will determine who makes it into the superheats and, of course, who... Uh, gets into that all-important pole position for the final later on in the weekend on Sunday. But right now, uh, it is a long way to go for a lot of our drivers. We are only nearing the halfway point of today. As uh, Costoya and Craigie, again, just a little bit ahead of the rest of the field. Uh, they will come towards our delegate there, Gonzalo Plata, just slowing them down into formation. Looks good to me. Right into the final corner and into the tram lines. Are we going green? Yes, we are. Down in towards turn number one. Keep an eye on Costoya. Sala to the inside as well. Watch him as he goes through. He's in the middle of two of them as Craigie dives to the inside there. There's James Anagnostiadis also trying to get through the, uh, the scene. Not able to gain too many positions, but he is now with his teammate Kenzo Craigie. Both of them up into third and fourth place now. I've got to say, Rufoli. Oh, is that out? So it's turn four again. Another one of the RFMs is involved. I think a DPK in there as well. Uh, the 2-2-1, two, two, that's going to be Paul Andriotis, Martel Shabo, and Philip uh, Planeta, who all do not go 
further than turn number four. Big shame for three of our drivers then. Marshalls again quick on the scene. Incident already cleared up. Uh, good to see. Uh, looks like our Ricky Flynn man in a bit of discomfort there. Paul uh, Andreas is there. Hopefully he is OK. Right, back to the racing then and down in towards the final chicane. And still a nice breakaway then for the top two. Costoya controlling this one. Uh, Sebastian Mins there in second from Craigie. Uh, or oh, no, from, uh, sorry, uh, Adagnostiaidis there in third place. Rom Kenzo Craigie. Martinese there in P5. He's had a good start. Uh, Filippo Sala down into sixth place. Not the start he will have wanted. No, not indeed. Started from third place. Was jumped by uh, Anagnostiadis down into turn one. Was a mega start from Anagnostiadis, but is losing third place to his teammate there. Kenzo Craigie goes back through, and Martinezzi on the scene there as well in the 200. And this group need to get organized to close into uh, the ever impressive Sebastian Mintz. Here comes Martinezzi down the inside of Anagnostiadis. Takes fourth place, or does he? Because back comes Anaglostiadis, retakes the spot. That gives a bit of breathing room now to Kenzo Craigie in third. Both Craigie and Anagnostiadis, both drivers of the Mercedes AMG Petronas F1 Junior program. Uh, I'm sure the team, uh, the Mercedes team, will be watching this race very carefully, seeing what do these two teammates do to each other now in karting that they might do in the future, yes. potential formula racing. Uh, let's keep an eye on that one. Uh, but as they go through, Defending that position now is uh, Anagnostiadis from Jacopo Martinez, though. Uh, live picture still on the right-hand side of your screen. Race start replay on the left-hand side. Look at Sala right in the middle there. Gets squeezed onto the outside there as uh, Anagnostiadis goes through. It was a great start for the two Premers uh, as they went through. Then we were coming towards turn number three here. What happened to our three drivers out of the race? Yeah, just got all a bit too close in the middle. And, oh, for oh, Planeta just, just unsighted as the... Uh, as the sea of carts parted, and uh, there he found, parked in the middle of the road, a, a, another competitor, all of them out of the race. And what, if we can have another look at that start, have, keep an eye on Sebastian Mintz, because Mintz has moved from the outside driver's left, sweeping in underneath two or three drivers to emerge second out of turn one, was absolutely magnificent. He's now on the attack, trying to catch up to Costoya, and, uh, well, 55.864 for, uh, for Mins is catching up to the race leader. Is he about to add, add another uh, moment to the highlight reel from this race? I certainly could do. Let's see what happens then. Costoya not out of trouble yet as they go down the infield straight. Here comes Craigie down the inside. No, it's not Craigie. This is uh, Anagnostiadis, sorry. Uh, this is a little further back. He's got back past Felipe Sala. Uh, who got into fourth place earlier on, now loses it back down into P5. So this battle is still heating up here. Uh, I mean, not a, an agnoxiitis, sorry, being a good little uh, rear gunner there for Kento Craigie, dealing with the gap. So he's able to focus on closing into these front two here. Battle for fourth, heating up as they still go defensive now, down in towards turn number one. Salah to the inside, round the outside. Here comes Dean Hugendorn, not able to make it work. He tried to get back down the inside. Salah lost out there. Looks like Daniel Kelleher got through as well. Spin there in the pack. And Rocco Coronel is one of them who's gone round. It's the 217 that's gone round as well. It's all gone wrong. Uh, that's Arjun Kraling who's out as well. Oh, that's, uh, that's not what they would have wanted. They were fighting in the top 10 there with uh, Jensen Burnett and uh, Scott Lindblom, who's been coming through the field once more. And it's not a complete disaster for their weekends. You know, they've had some good scores on the board, those two drivers. Uh, but they'll uh, they'll know that they've they've basically used their get out of jail free card for uh, for this phase of the round. They cannot have any more problems through uh, there. That was one of the Cart Republics. I think it was it Daniel Kelleher uh, making a move, going up through the top five. It's one of Martin Nazy was off in the background there. Let's have another look at this again. Ooh, oh, dear. no, say yeah. They just, uh, they just both the drivers left made contact. Two drivers going for the same piece of road. Generally, into turn three doesn't work. It doesn't work, and uh, proof there. Coronel back in the race, though. He managed to get restarted. Arjun Kraling, unfortunately, out of the race. Uh, back here with uh, fourth place, uh, and it seems to have come down just that little bit now. James Anagnosiad is still there in P4. Uh, Kelleher in P5 from Sala, Limblom, uh, and Martinez. Uh, yeah, and you were right in saying we did see Martinez off the track a little bit through that final chicane just before we cut from that replay. Not sure what happened there. This might tell us something about what happened there. Scott Lindblom down the inside. Well, it was a nice overtake, and it just there was nowhere for Martinez to go. He took to the runoff. He did indeed. 
Lap number six then, coming to the end of lap number six. Here are your leaders, Costoya, Mins, Craigie. Only three seconds clear of the rest of the pack who are content on fighting for fourth spot now. As out Ooh. as that is the 271, it's Toniolo. So Augustus Toniolo out of this one for Tony Cart and uh, has a very short walk there back to Park Ferme down there down the pit entry. Yeah, the Brazilian not happy there at all as Col Denham now is the latest driver to be under investigation. We'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, as well as this fight here, Sebastian Mins continuing to close in on Christian Costoya. Not close enough just yet. Craigie has closed in though on these two. A very close little battle here, but we've not seen anything from them just yet. And no one's really in danger. There's that two to three tenths of a second between each of them. Uh, right now, so they're, they're, they're in limbo at the moment and they're doing what they need to do. We're just waiting for maybe a little mistake from one of them to see if anything happens. Back across the chicane again goes Martinese. Now, what's happened this time around? Let's get a nice close up of someone's face there, uh, just as they go through. Uh, very interesting uh, little stuff there. Again, you've got to be careful with that one. Uh, the FIA have been really, really keeping an eye on track limits over the course of this weekend. So many drivers have been caught out by it. Yeah, we, we have seen drivers receive uh, jurisdictions based on uh, on cutting through the chicane there. So uh, I will uh, remain to see what happens, if anything, with that one. Well, there we go, right on cue. Jacobo Martinez under investigation by race control and the stewards. Two laps to go then, including the one that we are on. Let's have another look at it. So this is Lindblom down the inside of Martinez. I think that was the first one uh, going through the final chicane. It's behind uh, the car Republic there of Daniel Kelleher. We, as ever, there's always two sides to every argument. Uh, that race between groups B and E in OK Junior. Christian Costoya wins again, this time by seven tenths of a second ahead of Sebastian Mins. Kento Craigie third. James Anagnostiadis makes it two of the Kramers in the top five. Top five completed by Filippo Sala. Scott Lindblom on the move again. 14 places in that one, two, sixth place ahead of Jacopo Martinezzi uh, in seventh place. Eighth for Daniel Kelleher, ninth for Jensen Burnett. Another good top ten for a. Uh, Fusion runner there, a top 10 completed by Dean Hugendorn. Let's have another look at the start. Solid start, again, for Costoya at the front. But the star of the show is Sebastian Mins going from the outside to the inside and gaining three positions as a result from it. Salah running out wide, kept himself in there and as part of the battle. And once again, turn three and four, Anthony, where we saw drama. Yep, certainly so. This moment here, just in the middle of the track, nowhere for our drivers to go there. Three retirements uh, in that one for Philippe Panetta and there, Marcel Sabo, just unsighted, I think, from the rest of the drivers, unfortunately, and it just causes this to tangle up like this. It was a real big shame for these uh, uh, front three here, wasn't it? Yeah, especially for uh, Andrew Otis, is having those tough starts in the middle of the pack and uh, no good points from that one. Good scrap between the two, uh, the two Prima drivers. Craig getting past uh, Anagnostiadis there. Uh, through turn number seven. Salah on the fight back as well. Seems to have uh, refound his mojo in this round of heats, getting past uh, Martinez there. Uh, this was a, a big moment. Two retirements, big retirements as well. Crailing and Coronel making contact before turn number three. Both of them would be out of contention uh, on the spot there in the middle of the, uh, of the race on lap number four. Good race, that one, I thought, as well, uh, Anthony, for, for Daniel Kelleher. Fought his way through uh, for Scott Lindblom as well, also making a number of overtakes. Martinez taking to the runoff. Oof, big moment there. That is how uh, we lost the Tony Kart driver of Augustus Tony Olo uh, into the chicane. Uh, and again, moment there. Ah, well, again, it was Scott Lindblom again. It was a, literally a carbon oh, copy yeah. of what we saw earlier on. Um, well, again, you've got to be careful with doing that because, like we said earlier on, the FAA keep it a very close eye on track limits, especially in that final chicane. Well, we went on to the final lap, and well, for this man here, it was a brilliant race all the way throughout that one. He would take the checker flag, Christian Costoya, another race win for him. Brilliantly managed. Yeah. yeah, he clearly knew he had something in reserve just for the end of that race to, to push out and make sure that he came across the line first, and then the end took it 5.7 of a second. Well, coming up, uh, another race, another heat for the OK category. It's uh, Groups B and E taking to the circuit shortly uh, for the last race before the 
one hour break in uh, here in Valencia. 11 laps uh, for our senior drivers here this weekend. And there is a man with a lot of expectations this year, Anthony Alexander, uh, Alexander Bondarev. Uh, on the fifth row for this one, but uh, plenty of talent there for Premier Racing once again. Certainly so. We caught up with him before the weekend started. Here's what he had to say. Again, I think uh, the, uh, the team has a really good package, so we, 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 I think we, we did, did a good job to prepare for this, for, for, for this race. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. I think uh, after the World Chess Championship FIA last year, we went straight to, to seniors and we were on the other race, we were p p practicing for to coming into this weekend. I think uh, that the speed I have is good. Uh, of course, the, the, the difference between junior and senior is massive with the, with the power valve. So, and also the, the, the tire change coming into this year. So, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be tough, but uh, I think we, we can do the job. Yeah, Valencia is a hard track. The the, the, the tire the tire deck is huge. Uh, it's very, very difficult to, to 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 keep the tires running for the whole race. Of course, the final is going to be very very difficult. That it's I think 22 laps. So yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to be tough. tough but uh, of course, as you said, we have a lot of experience around this track. So we, we, I think we, we we can manage the weekend in a good way. Well, good to chat up there or catch up with Alexander Bondarev, who starts this one on the fifth row. The grid qualifying didn't go fully his way, but certainly uh, for the, uh, the Williams Junior F1 program driver, certainly uh, showing he's got some uh, pure talent out there. And like you say, stepping up into the senior category, a lot different from the junior category, like he alluded to there with the power valve. It is just there's so much more speed that you have in these ones. Absolutely. Well, he's applied himself very well after that difficult qualifying. It was part of a, the very first group, wasn't it, with the OK yeah. Juniors, who they all left pit lane and the, the pre-grid very late. And it always meant that, that there was going to be one or two who didn't quite get, uh, get the single lap that they wanted. Uh, but he's responded well since. He's had uh, some good speed and the winner last year and the champion in the OK Junior category showing... Uh, that he's, he's definitely got a good chance here this weekend. We had a quick sight there of, uh, of Zach Drummond. We'll start this race from pole position. Alongside him on the front row will be Anatoly Kavalkin. Kavalkin starting on the outside again uh, in this one. Anthony's had plenty of practice from that spot so far today, yeah. and he's had some good results there as well. And I think he's still trying to nail that start of the race. Remember, he always likes to hang back a little bit and then builds it up as they come to the line to try and get that momentum. It's not fully worked out for him just yet, but I think it's just a, a waiting game to see when it gets going. But it is a parallel uh, row one lockout. Sebastiano Pavan, who's had a couple of wins uh, so far this weekend, looking strong. He starts from the second row. We'll have uh, Matthias Morgato alongside as well. Certainly going to be an interesting race, this one. Some proper talented drivers uh, in the first couple of uh, grids as well in this one. Luis Iglesias just behind as well. We'll have Mies Huben. Uh, alongside. Uh, hopefully for Noah Wolf in this one can actually start this race. Obviously we saw earlier one uh, he uh, struggled with a mechanical failure. Hopefully the gremlins have been taken away. He can get a good run in this one. There is the Brazilian uh, Matias Morgato. Uh, curious to see again what he can do in this one. Drops back a little bit at the start. Sneaks his way through. Always looking at a top three finish. Yeah and it's a similar story for what we talked about with Kavalkin. It is very difficult to start you know second fourth on that outside column uh, as you run towards turn number one. But he'll be happy, I think, with the pace so far this weekend, knowing it's still a long way to go. We've got the super heats tomorrow and those finals. Longer races, of course, in the finals. And uh, as long as he can you know, keep himself up there, he'll be in play uh, when we do get tomor uh, to tomorrow's races. Do hope you can join us for tomorrow's races. Uh, whichever of the platforms that you're watching today's action from, we'll be back again tomorrow morning. Uh, for the culmination of the first round for this year's FIA Karting European Championship. Andrew Mather and Anthony Jordan on commentary duties for uh, you this afternoon. Uh, due to go off for this race at 13.20, so uh, it should be less than 60 seconds. In fact, a lot less than 60 seconds. Uh, away we go then. Karts rolling out for this last race, Anthony, before the one-hour break. Yes, indeed. It is qualifying heat B versus E for the senior OK category. Let's take you through the starting lineup. Zach Drummond and Anatoly Kavalkin going for row number one. Sebastiano Pavan and Mateus Morgato on row number two. Louis Iglesias and Mies Huben going from row three. 
from Noah Wolf and Von Tickroda on row four. Alexander Bondarev and Timo Ramikas on row five from Michael Adir and Stefan Antonov on row six. Salim Hana and Freddie Lloyd on row number seven. Sun Xiao Yu and Guy Albag, Al Albagino going from row number eight. Dante Vinci and Marius Barryberg on row nine. Tiziano Monza and Gerasim Skulinov start on row number 10. Leo Nielsen and Louis Castellini start on row 11. Uh, Emily Coivisto and Hugo Marti start on the 12th row of the grid. Then we find Jean Cass and Peter Stiller on row 13. Blake Nash and Jensen Graham complete the 28 strong field there on row 14. Points at the moment look like this. Gomez on 150, Pavan and Turney 141, Werrell and Magato on 132, that's your top five. Remember, everybody before the start of this race has raced three times. Uh, Bataro has mentioned uh, with Magato there on uh, 123. Uh, Eichmann, Ian Eichmann's not in this race, but in seventh place at the moment in the intermediate classification on 121. Miguel Costa on 120. Zach Drummond, 111. David Walter completing the top 10 runners in OK at the moment on 110. Uh, Zach Drummond, starting from pole position in this one, Anthony. Uh, struggled a little bit yesterday with, uh, with race pace, but that seemed to return for his race earlier on, uh, on, on this morning. Uh, this being the, his penultimate race, we've got to see that that form is still there, if not getting even better, and uh, for him to capitalise on the, that strong qualifying he had yesterday, I feel. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, it, it's always good to make sure you're up into that top section. Staying there is, is difficult, don't get me wrong. It's not a walk in the park. You may see some of these races, and you may see oh, some of these drivers just walking away. This looks very familiar to another certain racing championship that we watch. Yes. But, you know, no, it's not that case at all. Karting is such a pure form of racing uh, still. You know, it, there's so many karters from around the world all wanting to, to do the rain thing, but you can't get purer than, you know, grassroots karting. And, you know, here at the FIA, this is not grassroots karting. This is, you know, the top tier. This is the elite of the elite of karters from around the world coming together to go racing. Uh, and, you know, it's seeing them go wheel to wheel like this is such a special thing. Into the tram lines we go then. Are we going? Yes, we are. Green flag goes out and we are away and racing. The two parallels go wheel to wheel, but they slot in behind. Kavalkin into second place. Drummond holds on to the lead as they whiz through turn number one. Through turn two, they go the small kink in towards turn number three. Three wide in the background there. Watch the barrel in the middle. Manages to get through. Very close. Nice clean start. Yeah, all runners still circulating. Uh, through the second sector it was a good start from the Paralins. In fact, probably the cleanest or the least frantic start in the first two rows that we've seen so far this weekend. It's the top four from the grid still in those top four positions. Noah Wolves had a good start. He has taken the start this time in the uh, the VAR by Viral entries up to fifth place in the early stages. Needs a strong result to bounce back after the uh, the disappointment early uh, earlier on today. No breakaway at this stage, Anthony. This has uh, got all the recipe uh, parts for a very close race here. It certainly does. Pavan still there in third place then as they make their way across the line. Morgato there in fourth place. No clean breakaway here. It's still one big group. Uh, you can see Noah Wolf still having a good race in this one there. And P5 is down the inside. Here comes Morgato on Sebastiano Pavan. Wolf trying to capitalise in as well. Just got blocked past there. Bondarev has closed in. Mies Huben has closed in. They've got to be careful. They don't concertina up here. It's so, so easy to just tumble down the order through that tight, twisty section, but they all get through. A little bit of dust gets kicked up in the background, but it's all well. Slight defensive there from Morgato. Pavan follows, and so does Noah Wolf. Yeah, Morgato trying to assert his authority on that group, having made the move on Pavan. Uh, good starts as well for Bondarev and Idir. Idir especially, another one of the drivers who retired from the previous uh, round of heat, so wants to get another top 10, wants to get back on track. Top two breaking away now. So we've got a parallel one, two, working together, Drummond and Kavalkin, and so they should, because it's the former world champion behind them now in third place. Uh, second covering the top three, uh, two seconds covering the top nine. Still very much all to play for here. Who else is coming through the field? I see uh, Sun is on the move for Tony Carts has gained five spots so far and is into the top ten. Very close there as through goes Noah Wolf past Pavan. Now, Pavan seems to be struggling a little bit in this race. He's had great form so far 
uh, and in this round at Valencia. We've been going forward in these races up to, uh, to take wins earlier on in the weekend, but right now seems to be falling back. Yep, a little bit of uh, danger here. Mies Huben and Bondarev starting to close in, but all of them under pressure here from the rest of the field. Now we're starting to see a breakaway here. Drummond, Kavalkin and Mulgato starting to close in. It's Parolin versus the Charles Leclerc racing team. Let's see what happens as they go through. Mulgato on that Birrell chassis, really trying to push hard now as he sets the fastest lap of the race. 54.670, change for the lead. Kavalkin goes through. This gives the green light to Mulgato to go on the attack now. Drummond is on the cards here as they go down in towards turn number 11. Defensive from Kavalkin. Very early to go defensive there straight after an overtake, but still defends that position. Drummond not able to attack crucially. Neither is Morgato. Down the back straight into the final chicane. Are we going to see a lunch here, Andrew? No, Kavalkin had to go for that with a charge of Morgato. Morgato's got the best race pace right now. Drummond defends into the final chicane. Kavalkin, this is his best opportunity to break away. Morgato's surely going to attack at some point soon. There he goes down the inside. Noah Wolf has come into this fight as well for second place. Big lap there from Noah Wolf. He had to put a quick one in knowing that it was going to close up and he put in the fastest lap of the race so far. 54.643. Great response from the Briton after a difficult previous round. Certainly so. Let's see what happens then as the race continues here. Only a few laps to go in this one. We're about half race distance. Wolf looks to the inside. Not close enough for the attack on Drummond. Stays there behind. Nice little battling here. Kavalkin, though, has broken away. The gap is opening up to nearly a second now. So Kavalkin, the one to beat. Morgato trying to break the toe there. Now, that's an interesting thing. We've not seen much of that over the course of the weekend. That's experience from a senior driver there. Uh, you know, he's very familiar in many classes, as well as the KZ class, as well as Morgato. Uh, and, of course, he's uh, thinking, right, try and break that toe, see what I can do. It looks like it's slower, but trust me, it might work out a little bit there. Well, we've already seen it once in this race that Mugato's made a move and then gone semi-defensive just to say, no, nope, I'm holding on to this. Yep. Do not re-overtake me because I, th I think he's backing himself. He's got the best race pace right now as Wolf down the inside of Drummond. Drummond now under attack from Pavan and in comes the one, two, three of Iglesias as well. It's another race where for Drummond, he's going backwards instead of forward. He's fighting back now, back down the inside of Iglesias into turn number 11, retakes fifth place. This is a very key phase for Drummond. He's got to keep himself in there. Certainly does. Back onto the back straight now once more. And there you can see the hand gestures from Iglesias saying to Drummond, right, let's go. Let's not fight. Let's go. Let's catch up. Because they know as well that, you know, Pavan's got ahead. That they've seen that he, he fell back in the order again here. Pavan still might be in a bit of bother here. Defensive goes Louis Iglesias there, despite his, uh, his comments there to Drummond saying, let's go, let's go. He still went defensive. It, is this the phase where we really then start to talk about the wear on the tyres? Because Pavan's yeah. pace has come back. I'm just speculating here. Did he push them too hard in the first lap and overheat them? And he's just brought them back into play now because this is more like it from uh, from the Tony Kart there in fourth place. Bondarev is also on the scene now, towing along the 149. In fact, not towing the 149 of Freddie Lloyd along at all. The, uh, the Ricky Flynn Motorsport driver, that is a great drive from Freddie Lloyd so far. He's up six spots in this one. Looks to be absolutely flying. Yep, certainly is. Back down the back straight again, right on that rear bumper of Drummond. Not anymore. Down the inside through that final chicane. And the Ricky Fiend driver, two positions in one. Now Bondarev is going to go for the move here on Drummond as they go across the line. Peter still is seeing a warning flag, unfortunately, in the race. But still a nice little drive here. Right, now this is looking interesting. Morgato has closed in on Kavalkin. The gap was a second. It's now down to three tenths of a second. Morgato is looking for a race win here. Yeah, it's going to be really hard for Kabalk in this because Mugato has got the best race pace of anyone out there at the moment when he's in clean air. He is pulling chunks of time out of Kavalkin's lead. Although that was fairly even through the first sector. It's sector number two there. That's the dynamic one. That's when you need the grippers out of the race is the 183 uh, out of the side of the road. Uh, that is going to be David uh, Dante Vinci also out of the race. It's Hugo Marti. Hugo Marti's had a, a really tough weekend. It gets no easier here. Now on the scene, Mugato has caught up to Kavalkin. 
Doesn't go for the move yet, though, and I think that's all to do with Noah Wolf sat there in third place, only half a second back, is ready to pounce if these two fight too hard. We've not seen yet Morgato battling for the race lead just yet, but he finds a gap and gets down the inside. Morgato still looking for that first win uh, this weekend. Uh, let's see what he can do. Now he's in a fighting position here. He goes defensive, Kavalkin not able to attack back, takes the different racing line, might be able to get alongside here. No, nowhere near close enough. And Morgato controls this race now. Wolf has started to close in. Uh, Wolf's best result this weekend has been a third. If he can get another one, that's good. If he can get a second or maybe even for first, that'd be even better. Morgato could effectively win this race on this next lap, I think, if he can get a gap ahead of Kavalkin, but that's very much easier said than done. Wolf is right there as well. The top three covered by half a second. Sebastiano Pavan holding in fourth, pulling away from Iglesias and the fast charging. Freddie Lloyd, who's up to sixth place now, and I think he's the biggest mover in uh, this race at the moment. Is there a response here from Kavalkin? No, Mugato just goes subtly inside, make, makes this, sure there's no room down the inside for Kavalkin to go for the lead. Has that compromised, though, into the biggest breaking zone uh, on the infield. He's having a look, is Kavalkin, but Mugato shuts the door, and Noah Wolf is trying to find a way through. It's the problem through turn 12 when you're all in that, uh, in that same racing line. It's very difficult to shift uh, off that racing line and, uh, and find a way through. It certainly is, but they have Constantina back up once again. I reckon we're going to see something very, very soon here. We go on to the final lap then of this race. It's Morgato, Kavalkin and Noah Wolf. One, two, three here. But Wolf is on the attack here on Anatoly Kavalkin. Is he going to look to the inside here and towards turn number three? No, he thinks against it. We could see something in towards turn seven, but who's it going to be from? Is it going to be from Kavalkin or is it going to be from Noah Wolf? They hold that inside line. No changes just yet as they go back onto that infield straight. It's a tentative time. You don't know when it's going to come. It might not even uh, come here. Uh, it's going to be Wolf. Now he looks to the inside. Big dive down the inside for Noah Wolf. Slightly outbreaks himself. And where's Kavalkin? Well, Kavalkin's come through, and so has Sebastiano Pavan. He's come through as well. So Wolf loses out on uh, another position there. That's not worked out at all for him. No, it hasn't at all. It's put him back down to fourth place. But for Morgato, Mateus Morgato is going to take the win in this heat. He's going to take the lead in the intermediate classification as well. What a win for Morgato. Kavalkin held on to second place by 0 0.034 of a second over Pavan. What a, what a run that was to the line. Noah Wolf holds fourth, Louis Iglesias fifth. Great drive as well from Freddie Lloyd, up eight in that one, finishes P6. Certainly a brilliant result all the way throughout, but the Brazilian though will be happy with that one. Certainly a good result for him. Now joint uh, intermediate classification points with Sebastiano Pavan, 182 apiece. Luckily, though, Pavan got that move done yeah. uh, from Noah Wolf. Otherwise, he would have been just behind. So those two now joined on those points. But remember, they are going to have to deal with the likes of Gabriel Gomez, who is still on 150. Uh, they won't see him out again until after the lunch break, though, as that brings us to the end of that one. But we'll go through the full classifications and the race highlights from this uh, one, as well as they make their way back in towards Park Ferme. A brilliant result then for Matthias Morgato, who finishes in P1 from Anatoly Kavalkin. Sebastiano Pavan from Noah Wolf finishing in the top four. Louis Iglesias uh, finishing in P5, where he started from Freddie Lloyd, who eight positions to finish in P6 from Zach Drummond. Uh, Sun Chao Yu from Mies Huben uh, in the top nine from Gal, uh, uh, Guy Albergino finishing in the top 10, six places gained from Salimina and Alexander Bondarev finishing in P12. Tiziano Monza finishing in 13th from Michael Adir in 14th. Stefan Antonov finishing in 15th place. Leo Nilsson, uh, Emilie Corvisto, Marius Barry Bergen, Wojciech Voda all in the top 20 completed by Thibaut Ramakas. Not a good race for Thibaut Ramakas there uh, at all, slipping down to 20th place. Jensen Graham up seven from the back of the grid, finishes P21 ahead of Blake Nash, Louis Castellini, uh, Gerasim uh, Skulinov and Peter Stiller all inside the top 25. 26 finishes in, this, in that one, the last of them being Jean Carras. Two retirements, Hugo Marti and Dante Vinci, but uh, job done for now for Matthias Morgato. And a big 50 points uh, to the tally of the former world champion. Let's have a look and see how he did it. This was the start of the race. Uh, very well 
sorted start for the two Paralins. Kavalkin slotting in behind Zach Drummond uh, to hold P2, hold back on Sebastiano Pavan. It's a good start as well for Magato, holding around the outside. And in fact, they all came, the top four all came out of the first few corners in exactly the same order. Not many times we've seen that uh, at Valencia. Uh, no, again, with those uh, racing lines through turn one, it is quite rare to see, but nice to see uh, in the early stage of this one. Nice little breakaway, but again, they didn't have full comfort all the way throughout this one. That gap was so, so close. Morgato making the first move there uh, in the top four, getting past Pavan. Uh, this is where Wolf tried to get down the inside as well. Then you saw Kavalkin go down the inside of uh, Drummond. That was the second change that kept Morgato very much in contact with the uh, top three. Then Morgato got through. We'd have to wait a little bit then when Morgato went to work to try and close that gap. Big moves down the inside here. Freddie Lloyd getting past, moving up the order as well, really pushing those positions in. Uh, it made several good moves. Wolf down the inside there, getting past Drummond. Pavan got through as well. Louis Iglesias, you can just see squeezing through there, finding the gap. This was Lloyd again back down the inside of Bondarev. Bondarev, unfortunately, in the end of that, he did drop back a little bit, didn't he? Yeah, in the end, uh, it was 12th, uh, was Bondarev. Uh, more moves from Freddie Lloyd. I think I've got to say that's uh, Freddie Lloyd's best race so far this weekend in terms of uh, racing performance. Worked hard for his sixth spot. That was the key moment though for the lead Legato through on Kavalkin through turn seven Noah Wolf went for second place did very well to uh, to keep it on the black stuff nearly overshot and ended up in the gravel uh, but uh, lost out to Kavalkin and also to Sebastiano Pavan a, a key move that for Pavan and he scored an extra three points in the intermediate classification nearly made it another three points on the line there and shares the lead uh, of the IC with Morgato, who, of course, take, took the race win in that one, but in the end, by 1.15 seconds. There you go. Well, that brings us to the end of the first half of racing today. Do not go anywhere, though. We'll be back in about an hour's time with the second round of qualifying heats. We are due to start at around 20 to 2 local time. So, like I said, in about an hour's time. From myself, Anthony Jordan, and Andrew Mather, we will leave you uh, for a short break. We'll be back here in that one hour. We'll see you then.
Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second half of the first round of the FIA Karting European Championship. We are here at Valencia for round one, and I've got to say the first half of today has been absolutely thrilling. So many exciting races, and we are halfway through the day. Myself, Anthony Jordan, and Andrew Mather in the commentary box. Andrew, like I just alluded to there, first half super exciting. The second half is going to get even more exciting. Uh, absolutely. This is where we're going to see the first championship points of the 2020. 24 season here in the FIA Karting European Championships decided and uh, yeah it's very close in both categories we've we've got a situation in the OK senior category where you've got Pavana Regato at the top of the order uh, you know still with a race in hand is, is uh, Gomez and Turney and Werrell but uh, it's very hard to choose between them right now and similar story in uh, in the OK juniors where we're, yes we've got some dominant forces Dries van Langendonk uh, and Nicholas Schaufler both unbeaten but by that definition, they're both unbeaten, really pushing each other for all of those points. They certainly are, and Nicholas Schaufler will be in this next race. It is the OK Junior qualifying heat, D versus F. Uh, they're lining themselves up on that pre-grid now. And there is Nicholas Schaufler, who starts this one on the front row of the grid, but in P2, the Austrian Mouse is his nickname as he dances his way around this track. He is certainly a very quick uh, pilot out on circuit. But all the way throughout this weekend, we've been chatting to drivers in between races, but we caught up with Nicholas Schaufler before the race weekend even started. I think that so far we've made a really good job, a really good start into the season. And for sure, if we continue on like that, we can keep the rank. I mean, of course, some drivers went to OK, they moved up. But for sure, also some young drivers are coming back from the other categories. And it has also been a challenge sometimes with them. But I think we're doing a really well job so far. So of course, 2023 was a really tough year. We had the speed many times, but at some tracks we didn't really find the pace. But so far in 2024, it, the speed, the pace and everything was amazing. And the team is doing a really well job. I mean, of course, we will try to win everything. I think many teams have the dream to like win everything, but we will give our best and try to win. Well, good to catch up there with Nicholas Schaufler. Like you were saying, he's uh, on top form with the uh, qualifying and intermediate classification with his points. So certainly wanting to keep up that momentum uh, going into this one. It might be tricky, though, uh, because he's got some talented drivers all the way around him. You've got Jack Eilif starting this one on pole position as well. The American certainly looking like he wants to get some good moves uh, in this one. There he is, uh, the cheeky chap with his uh, helmet on, getting ready to go out in this one, focused, ready to go. He'll have... Uh, uh, Ivanikov, uh, Vladimir Ivanikov just behind him as well. Uh, on that second row, uh, Noah Blagelin as well, another driver uh, who's had a bit of an up and down one. He obviously had that off at turn one at the start of his race, uh, got a bit uh, frustrated at the start of that one. Uh, but certainly, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can do in this. Yeah, I think for, for Baglin in particular, it's, it's another one of those times just put that moment behind, don't focus on it. Focus on the fact that he's had two second places also so far this weekend. The, the race pace is definitely there. I also think we need to keep an eye on Roman Kamyab. Tenth, fourth and second on the road so far for Kamyab's performances. That's going in the right direction. He can only go one place higher now. It's, uh, it's As you say, there's plenty of drivers in this one who could strike in with another victory. Certainly so. Well, as the engines fire up, they make their way out on track. Let's take you through the starting lineup then for qualifying heat D versus F. Jack Eilif and Nicholas Schaufler then starting this one on the front row. Vladimir Vanikov and Noah Baglin on row two. Roman Kamyab and Thomas Pradier, they round out the top six on row number three. Mats Van Ruin and Jagrat Titrojo, who again is looking for another good result here. He starts on the fourth row of the grid. Ily Christian and Jean-Matteo Rousseau go from row number five. Louis Cochet and Clara Kowalczyk round out row number six with Devin Voltz and Florentine Hatima on row seven. Kasper Rajpold and Alexander Kurtinov, they round out row number eight. Second half of the grid, Shen Zeyu and Kanish Grau start on row nine. Lakar Savalev had an incident at the first turn last time out, starts this one. From row 10 is joined by Nikita Nikoshov. Amin Kara Osman starts on the 11th row of the grid alongside Tobias uh, Sergeni. Uh, the 12th row of the grid, Bruno Grick, at 161, Mins on 158. Those three drivers have all completed 
uh, this particular round, this being round four. So the highest ranked driver who's only done three races is your driver on the outside of the front row there, Anthony. Nicholas Schaufler looking to go back on top with this one. Yeah, certainly so. Uh, really crucial to see what is going to happen in this as they get ready to get going in this race. They can line up into that final corner. Uh, the first race back after the lunch break. Let's see what's going to happen. The track's had time to cool down just that little bit. But let's see what happens. In towards turn one, lights go green. Here we go then from the front row. It's Eilif who's got the inside line. Sweeps to the outside here though, but maintains it. Schaufler has to concede, stays in P2, but crucially that's a fantastic start from the outside row. It really is being able to hold on to uh, second place. I think uh, Vladimir Vanikov's eyes must have been very wide there. There was a big gap down the inside as Eilif covered off the move from Schaufler. Uh, but in the end, a very good piece of driving from the American to close the door once again back on the inside, hold on to the lead. It's a clean start. Everybody running through the first sector on board now uh, with the 204. That is the 203 of Schaufler ahead. So Schaufler has been able to find a way through in the infield on board now through turn 14 onto the back straight. You can see the rubber lining in there it's getting a very grippy surface here at valencia into the final chicane for the first time in this one through the curbs one two and three schaufler leads at the end of lap one but here comes jack island this is going to be an opportunity to the inside into turn one back into the lead for the texan on the 204 fine move into turn one yeah fantastic camera angle that is and now schaufler's going to lose out to ivanikov here he goes through into second place. Kamyab there in fourth as well. Kamyab had a good result earlier on. He's looking for another one in this one. Can he maintain his strong performance in this second half of the day? Back onto the infield straight they go. And again, slight defensive there from Jack Eilif, uh, but not losing out any positions. Ivanikov wanting to close in here, and I think is doing so. But I don't think this is over yet. Schaufler will have another move up his sleeve, I am sure. Absolutely. We've seen him come back from this position before. Ivanikov, a touch wide there, kicks up a bit of the, uh, the paint dust. And now down the inside into the final chicane. Lovely move there from Ivanikov. New leader at the end of lap two. But here comes Schaufler back down the inside. No, he elects just to go back inside. Eilif pops out, though. Down the inside again. Start of lap three, just as he did a lap ago. Anthony, another move, puts himself back into the lead. Yes, it does indeed. Schaufler through as well into P2. And again, is going on the attack here. This has been the closest race we've seen so far today, at least. The top five, very, very close. In fact, it says on our timing that first down to 23rd, it's one big group. Again, uh, I would agree with that. It's a long train of carts all the way behind here. As again, wheel to wheel, Schaufler has got the inside line here into the next corner. Can't quite get it done, but can he on the exit? Goes wheel to wheel, but Eilif just closes that door as they go onto the back straight now as well. So Ivanikov is there. Baglin's closed back up as well. He's in that fray. Roman Kamyab there in third place. Oh, this is going to get very feisty here, I can imagine. Back onto the start finish straight. Look at the train start to form now for the race lead. Yeah, this has very much got the feeling of drivers knowing that it's now or never if they want to get to the front of the superheats later on in the weekend. Ooh. Oh, out are the 276 and the 266. That's Shensei Yu and Sky Parker. Sky Parker on the right. That's a second retirement in a row for Shensei Yu. Not good news for the Parallel Motorsport pilots. Yeah, that is a big, big shame for those two uh, drivers. They're off the track and uh, will unceremoniously walk back to uh, the paddock. Well, that is a big shame. Change for the lead, though. Down the inside, Schaufler. Back into the lead. Now Kamyab going around the outside. Keep an eye on Ivanikov trying to go down the inside. And Baglin as well trying to go down the inside. And he does go down the inside. No, Baglin up into P3 now in that toe of Jack Eilif as they go into the final corner. Anyone going to step out? Yes, Baglin's going to step out. Goes wheel to wheel. Off the track goes Jack Eilif. The American now having to concede that place. And goes wheel to wheel with Roman Kamyab down in towards turn one. Uh, Kamyab has the inside line and you can watch here how many places he'll lose here on that outside line. Look, at they flood through. That's, that's the disadvantage of being on the outside there in turn one. Jack Eilif down to, I think, around eighth place. Both of the victory lanes came through there. Louis Cochet and Thomas Pradier, who, again, they're another two drivers who need good results in this one. That's a good formation to have uh, among teammates. I've got to say, this is a great response from Noah Baglin after a difficult 
Uh, last round is now back down the inside of Roman Kamyab. Retakes second place. Here comes Ivanikov to the outside now, but he's going to be shuffled down. Back through goes Mins. There goes Koshe as well in the victory lane. 2 1 0 back into fourth place. But once again, Nicholas Schaufler is off the front of this group. He's just gone purple through sector number two. He's going to have a lead here. Oh, wide there goes. Uh, that's Pradir in the other victory lane karting effort. Schaufler now 1.7 seconds clear. Yep, this is good stuff then for Nicholas Schaufler. Kind of been gifted this one, timed it perfectly uh, to get that overtake into the lead, back them all up, and you know, Baglin coming through. Now he's having to just defend from Kamyab and Koshe and Christian and Pradir as well, who's slotted back into this uh, battle. Look at the train again forming second place downwards. He's cleared by two seconds now as Schaufler. Just not contested here whatsoever. He's timed this perfectly. He's, he, oh, oh, Kamyab all crossed up there. Is going to have a challenge here from Cachet on the inside. They're going to be three wide through turn 12 and 13. And it's Padir who weaves his way through all of that. Back on board now with Jack Eilif for a moment. Still in there. He's got back up to seventh place. He's been joined by I think one of his teammates now. Uh, Devin Waltz has come through from 11th place on this lap. End of lap seven, Schaufler, Baglin, Kamyab, and then everybody else all up behind Thomas Berdier here. Uh, Illy Christian trying to look around the outside in the Tony Kart. This is going to be someone's big gain, I think, in this race, but at the same time, it's just inevitable someone's going to lose out. Yeah, I think someone in this battle might get third place here because, well, it's all... Getting interested, actually, you no, know, might get fourth place because uh, first, second, and third have kind of broken away now. This is fourth place downwards. So Pradir now leading that uh, as they go through. And it's been a big shock for, I think, so many of these drivers just getting caught out in this huge train here. Again, wheel to wheel just in the background there, down the inside, getting very close. Illy Christian with Louis Cochet again. They just battle wheel to wheel all the way throughout this. So, so close. Committed racing all the way throughout retirement, though, off the track. That is Alexander Kortinov uh, for the Charles Leclerc racing team. He is out of this race. More carts over the uh, the curb there at the final chicane. Oh, this is looking very interesting now as they go down in towards turn one. It is indeed. Christian's got back to the front of this group. Is there in fifth place. Uh, Louis Cachet is bolted off the front of this. Looks to have fourth place secured. New fastest lap of the race for Nicholas Schaufler. 56.115, two laps to go, including the one that uh, the drivers are currently on. What a drive as well from Devin Waltz, up six places so far in this race. This is a big score for the American. Let's have a look at a replay. This is back on board with Jack Harliff going into the chicane. That's going to get very tight there. Contact, slight contact with Padir. Padir takes to the runoff, hops across the kerb. On the brakes again, Jack Eilif now back into eighth place. And yes, a warning flag for the 2 0 4 down the inside through turn 15. Thomas Pradier, bit of an unorthodox place to make an overtake, but he made it work. Certainly did. That's the, one of the fastest parts of the circuit there as we go on to the last lap now. The top three are clear. This is fourth place downwards. And Pradir leads this battle here. Down in towards turn number three, they go. The Constantino effect kicking in. This is your race leader, who is about five corners ahead of that entire battle for fourth place. It's been an incredible drive. Uh, he is, well, two and a half seconds clear from even second place here uh, is Nicholas Schaufler. Absolutely dominant performance. Read the road well. Certainly had to fight for it at the beginning. Back here for fourth place, though. Back down the inside goes the position. And again, Drew Volts just making those positions gain. That was for P5. Was indeed. It's an opportunity for Pradir to break away, going in towards the last couple of corners. But here is Nicholas Schaufler, four from four for the Austrian, up to 200 points, back into first position in the intermediate classification. Dries van Langendonk, over to you, young sir, as to whether that can be matched. Noah Baglin, second. Great response after a retirement in the previous round. Back into, uh, into the high positions, another good haul of points. Roman Kamyab in third, Louis Cachet fourth, two of the victory lanes in the top five, the second of them being Thomas Pradier after that wondrous move through turn 15. But for Nicholas Schaufler, fifth here last year in OK Junior for uh, the opening of the 2023 season, he's looking on course at least now, still a long way to go. Of, uh, of beating that and definitely one of the favourites here this weekend. Oh, certainly so.
Be very curious to see what's going to happen in the second half later on in the day. Nine races to go, but uh, we'll go through the full lineup on this one. Certainly a very close and technical race, that one. You've got to think for the juniors. They're racing at such a, a young age, but the skill level is so, so high. Here's a look then at the provisional classifications at the end of that one. Schaufler takes the win from Baglin. Kamyab finishing in third place from Louis Cochet. Thomas Ferrier from Devon Waltz. Ily Christian from Jack Eilif. Dakar Tetroja again, another good result. Top 10 finishing in P5 from Jamatel Rousseau. Kasper Rajpold from Mats Van Ruen. Vladimir Vanikov from Enzo Ruggiero. Uh, and then the top 15 rounded out by Akat Savalev. And Nikita Nikishov finishing in 16th place. Florentine Hatima, Amin Kara Osman, uh, Bruno Grick in the top 20, completed by Archie Lovett. Mariano Lopez, good progress there from uh, the Peruvian, up 11 spots to 21st, ahead of uh, Clara Kowalczyk, Kanish Grau, Tobias uh, Shazeni, and then uh, 25th place, Meryl Peldes. Kara Fearhand in 26th, Amir Sabarov and uh, Vanessa Chilkadet all finished the race. Four retirements in that one, David in tuna, uh, Alexander Kortanov, and then the incident on the start line. Uh, around four laps into that race between Shenzhou Yu and Sky Parker, they all unfortunately did not see the checkered flag. Well, what a nine laps uh, that was to uh, to round off the D versus F round. As I say, Schaufler goes back to the top of the intermediate classification, 200 points from 200. There is the young Austrian, gives him a 12 point lead in that intermediate classification ahead of Christian Kostoya, but Dries van Langendonck still to go uh, for his fourth race, Anthony. So we could see this all be tied up again in a short while. We certainly could. Here's a look then at some of the highlights in that one. Eilif switching to the outside to cover off that attack from Schaufler. He knows Schaufler has been quick on these early uh, stages of the racing. That was a smart drive there. He would later lose it though in that opening lap, but crucially, it was a good getaway. That's where he lost the position, but it was certainly fight fierce in these early stages. But crucially, they had a good little race there, did Schaufler. He did indeed. This was to the outside of how he did it through turn number five. And uh, well, Arliff came straight back, end of the first lap going on to lap two, down into turn one. It's a portion of the circuit where Jack Arliff was particularly strong, uh, with Ivanikov not too far behind there as well, looking for a way through in his at two, five, four. Uh, which in fact, would go down the inside of Schaufler. At this stage, it was looking a little bit tricky for Schaufler, down to third place, but he responded well, went round the outside uh, of the 204 of Eilif. Eilif held on to the lead. Roman Kamyab had another fast start as well, uh, was up to third place for Ricky Flynn Motorsport, momentarily into second place there. Into the chicane, down the inside. Noah Baglin went for the move on Jack Eilif. Eilif took to, uh, to the runoff there. And, uh, have an investigation for track limits, of course. Everything uh, happening in there under the watchful eyes of race control. Noah Baglin trying to respond back after a difficult start to his previous race. Did just that, would race through to second place. For Eilif, difficult race. Uh, losing a number of positions being out wide there through turn number two. Well behind uh, both of the victory lane karting efforts, which race through into the top five as well. Great fights between Baglin and Kamyab for second place. Ivanikov on the outside through turn 12 and 13, and this was the arrival of the victory lanes. Louis Cachet up to fourth place in all of that. Thomas Pudir would be not too far behind. Back on board with Eilif. This was contact with Thomas Pudir. Pudir taking to the cut through at the end of, uh, of the fourth lap there. And uh, we think it is that uh, Arlef received a warning flag for that incident. Very close again through 12, turn 12 and 13. Thomas Pradier uh, had his overtaking shoes on in this race, putting in some great moves. This was on board with Arlef again. Three wide through a, a tight portion of the circuit. But Pradier would come through and eventually finish in fifth place. Certainly so. A very exciting uh, close race that was a big train of carts all the way throughout it you could see those moves coming in thick and fast all the way throughout the field but the gaps at the front would open up so much that was that incredible move there from Thomas for straight down the inside through turns 15 and 16 one of the flat-out places on the circuit and again you could just see the battles happening for 
there going wheel to wheel with Devon Waltz. But they wouldn't be able to close up to this man here, Nicholas Schaufler, who would just drive away from the rest of the field, taking the win by an impressive 1.9 seconds. Well, brilliant stuff there. We are going to take a short ad break, but do not go anywhere. That is what is going to be coming up in the next few minutes time. Uh, and of course, with the races that we have, uh, it's only very few left that these drivers got to do. So now you're going to start to get into the desperation side of these qualifying heats. Drivers really fighting their way through the field. That's what's coming up. We're going to take a short break. Do not go anywhere. We'll be back with the next qualifying heat group DNF for the senior category in a few moments time. Back, ladies and gentlemen, to the FIA Karting European Championship. The next race is upon us. It is the OK Qualifying Heat D versus F. And as you can see there from that shot, our drivers are lined up, ready to go on the grid. Nicholas Sch oh, Marcus uh, Shilgun is starting this one on pole position. There we go, the Lithuanian uh, starting it on pole. He'll have Vivek Kanthan alongside the uh, CRG driver. Not getting the best result earlier on. I think he was caught out in an incident, wasn't yeah, he, at the opening lap? It was indeed. I, th I think it's been a very positive weekend for Marcus Schulke. Oh, Schilke. it's been very I positive. I think uh, one of the real positive surprises of timed qualifying, uh, benefiting from the great work that we've, we've talked about with CRG and their setup and their team planning and how they've worked together. Had that bit of bad luck uh, in the previous round. But again, it's, a, it's an opportunity to put that behind him get another score. This is another driver who's impressed me this weekend, Anthony. Vivek Kanthan, uh, building on experience last year. This has been by far his strongest run in the, uh, in the European Championship to date. And he's got that second place start on the outside, which uh, strange to say in a way. I think is, is we've been talking about it being a bad place to start in some ways. You're on the outside, you lose out to P3. But the rate at which we're seeing second place starters do quite well is it, increasing, I'd say. Maybe it's a little bit of a change of uh, track dynamic out there. Maybe so, not too sure. It's uh, really a fine line between nailing it and, uh, well, getting it completely wrong. You saw there very briefly our race director for this weekend and for this year, Pasquale Lapole, on the starting gantry, watching our drivers very, very closely as we get ready to go racing. The whistle blows and the drivers make their way out onto the circuit. Let's take you through then the full starting lineup for this one. It is the qualifying heat D versus F, and it is uh, Marcus Shilkunas starting this one on the front row with Vivek Kanthan alongside Roland Cooklane and Ian Eichmann's going from row two, Luna Flusha and Vegard Clemenson on row number three. Guillaume Buzar and Javier Ramirez round out row number four with Jakob Kamenek and Dmitry Matviev on row five. David Cosma and Hugo Rasmujets go from row six with Alpac Soy and Tom Dussel on row seven. Jimmy Elias and Louvre Sam Budler start on the eighth row of the grid. Joseph Smith and Murillo de Rocca on row nine. Leon Brunner and Lewis Francis complete the top 20 for the start of this one. Dominic Simek and Kai Rillard start on row number 11. Kuba Reisky and Patrick Ogradovchik start on row number 12. Matteo Giacardi and Stylianos Kolovos start on row 13. 28 cart field is completed by those on row 14. It's Ivo Becerra and Andy Cassani. Well, looking forward to seeing what happens in this race. Packed old grid in this one. All 28 drivers looking to be out on the circuit, which is good. All 28 still running as well, which is even better. Uh, there is, well, that's the helmet of Yindrich Peschel that you can see there. He is watching from the sidelines, though. He's in the, uh, the gantry. Some of the other teams watching along the other drivers. Uh, again, nice to see that the drivers do watch the other races, isn't it? Well, I think they're crucial. They're gathering intelligence, I suspect, on uh, what's happening on there, seeing if they're going for fresh tyres or not, seeing what they're doing with that, you know. There's a lot of intelligence you can grab just from being at the sidelines of uh, one of these circuits. Absolutely. And I think particularly with the tyres question, and uh, we, we th this is going to be the point where some people maybe take a bit of a gamble of putting the uh, spare half set on their carts, particularly if they need a strong result. 
And uh, yeah, it, but if you can stretch that tire out, if if you can see that it's not perhaps working for drivers, uh, if they are sticking those tires on, then, then yeah, that intelligence might tell you hold it back, try and hold it for either the last round of heats or maybe even super heats tomorrow. So Marcus Chilkunas on pole position for this one. Vivek Canton alongside on the front row. This is a very important race, I feel, Anthony, for Vegard Clementson. Starts sixth in this race, has had two uh, troublesome races so far this weekend. Needs needs a good result, I feel, in the 181 uh, from this one on the Birrell Art chassis. And uh, I'll also keep an eye out for uh, Guillaume Bouzard because he's been running well in the race trim on the CRG this weekend. Yeah, it certainly has. Uh, there are many other drivers you could keep a very close eye on, uh, but the entire grid, very talented. But at the moment, well, they're very spread out at the moment. There are still cuts going in towards uh, 15 and 16, uh, and yet the race leaders are getting ready to accelerate here. Hopefully they bunch up at the back. It looks like they will. It's good to see. Here we go then into the tram lines. Are we going green flag first time? Yes, we are. Down and towards turn number one. Chilkunas covering that inside line. The gap has opened up tremendously and look at everyone go through. Eichmann's on the outside. He's lost so many positions. Look at Luna Flusha up into P3. Yeah, Luna Flusha fighting through there into that third spot. Uh, I think it called Klein had a bit of a moment through the latter part of turn one, but it's Shulkunas leading in the early stages. Canton's still there in second place. Flusha third, bit of an opportunity here for a three uh, three strong breakaway in the early stages that could be very useful. Down the inside goes Canton oh. as he outbreaks himself. Nearly go back into the lead goes Shilkunas. That's going to offer an opportunity now for the others to catch up. Maybe that wasn't the best time for Canton to have a go. I can see that the uh, the 173 closing in behind as well of uh, Kulklain. Canton's having another go down into the chicane and this time it works. He leads at the end of lap one. Well, here we go. It's going to bring everyone back into the fray here. Luna Flusha under pressure from Cook Lane. Roland Cook Lane down the inside, gets into P3, but she's trying to fight it back now, using that front bumper to try and gain the momentum. Not able to do so, staying there in P4 around the outside here. Watch for the switch back, looking to the inside, gets it. Flusha back into third. That brings Buzar back into it. Eichmann's back into it. Avramides back into it as well. Watch them all go through. Back down the infield straight. Breakaway. Canton Shilkunas looking strong now. Yeah, really good opportunity for them to book some uh, strong points in. Flusha has uh, reasserted herself there in third place. Here comes Ian Eichmanns on Kuklain now up into fifth place. Trying to follow Buzar there in the 133, uh, 133 CRG. End of lap number two then. And it's Powerlin Motorsports with Canton leading with nine remaining. Shilkuna still second place. 55.015 is the pace for the front uh, drivers at the front of the field. Who's made good progress? David Cosmas up three spots to eight so far. Lewis Francis for Cart Republic up eight spots up to 12th. Yep, this is good running all the way throughout this field. Bizarre though, fantastic helmet design. The classic, the flames on the helmet there looking so, so quick. So far this weekend, Bazaar piling on that pressure, but also Eichmanns is also piling on that pressure right in that slipstream as they hunt down Luna Flusha. Action in the background there. Cook Lane, Avramides and David Cosma starting to get interesting. Cook Lane down to eighth place now. He lost out at a fair few positions there. But Tviev starting to close in. He'll have Dussel in close proximity. And through that final chicane they go. And again, Canton and Shukunas they are ahead by quite some way. There's yellow flags in the final chicane. You can just see that in the, uh, the background of that shot there. So there's been someone off the circuit. And I think it's oh, Vagar Clemenson. Yeah, Vagar Clemenson, Jakob Kamenik and Leon Brunner. They're all around 10th uh, down to 15th place, but they've dropped out of the top 20 now. One attempt to get it restarted. Can Kamenik get it restarted? Yes, I think he can. So Kamenik's back into the race. You can see uh, Clemetson, we said needed a good result. It all hangs on this restart. Well, Clemetson is back into the okay. race. There's a lot of damage to the uh, the uh, yeah. uh, rear right corner. Uh, the bumper deflected out of uh, factory spec position, shall we say. And uh, well, Fagard Clemetson is going to need a lot of things to happen in the remainder of this race to get a good result, but at least he's not out of the race at this stage. Yeah, exactly that. Eyes on this one. Eichmann's tucking in. A very late lunge there to the inside. A little too late 
everything's against it. Backs out of that move in towards turn one. Eichmann, Zombuzar, the positions stay the same as they go into the infield section. Blucher not able to break away quicker than I think she would like. And I have to say, I think Avramides is starting to close in just behind as well. I think Cosmos just got past, actually. The 138 getting up into sixth place as they make their way through. Here comes Eichmanns, though. This time around, he thinks for the move and goes for it in towards turn 11. Nicely done. Yeah, really nicely done by, uh, by Ian Eichmanns. It's on good form this weekend. One of the most experienced drivers in this field. We're here on lap number five of 11. Stakes rising, the intermediate classification as things stand midway through this rotation. Sharing the lead at the moment, Pavan and Morgato both not in this race. They're on 182. That move would put Eichmann's back up into third place in the, uh, in the IC on 159. One point ahead of your race leader uh, here, Vivek Canton. So Canton in fourth. The big danger to all of these drivers is still Gomez. Perfect through three rounds, 150 scored already, and still with that fourth race opportunity to retake the lead in the IC uh, to come. Shilkunas is up to sixth place in the IC, and uh, Luna Flusha as well, with a strong performance so far, is seventh. Top ten wrapped out by Drummond, Iglesias, and Turney, all still to race those three. We're on lap six of 11 right now. You're currently watching the battle for P5. Guillaume Buzar under pressure from David Cosma. Uh, you can see him there coming through in the uh, UK cart there. You can see just trying to uh, come through, or the Cart Republic uh, cart, I should say. I do apologise. But uh, coming through, look how close he is to that rear bumper. Not going for the move just yet. But, uh, certainly looking so, so strong here is both Buzar and Cosma, both of them putting in some fabulous results over the course of the day. Just keeping up with this momentum now. Nice, strong performance down that infield straight now. No, battles opening up just a little bit. Canton is still controlling this race. It's still ahead by eight tenths of a second. Finally, Jakob Kamenek coming into the pit lane. He's decided to retire from the race. There's now an investigation flag coming out for Patrick Ogrodovcic. Yeah, Patrick Ogrodovcic and uh, Andy Consani both stopped circulating three laps ago. Apologies if we missed that. So uh, they're out of the race as well. I guess for Kamenek, the... the Answer is he was so far off the back of the group, putting wear on the tyres, of course. If you're not going to gain too much from it, save the rubber for the last round of races, especially as Kamenik has got some good scores on the board already. Four laps remaining, including the one that the drivers are on. Canton still leads by just under a second from Shilkunas. Luna Flusha in third. We're watching the battle for fourth place. Ian Eichmann's in control of it at the moment, ahead of EM. Buzar and uh, David Cosma there in the 138, the third of the carts in this group. They are being caught, though, by Xavier Avramidis. I, th I feel Avramidis has been going under the radar, Anthony. He's been putting in some really solid performances, the Australian racing for Tony Kart this season. And he's on for another one here, another strong top ten. Yep, certainly he is. You're right in saying. I mean, so many drivers do sneak under the radar from us because... Uh, they do just, they find themselves at the back and then in those casual races, they just sneak their way through that grid, don't they? Uh, come up and then we look at the uh, screen, we see, oh, look who's up 17 positions in this race. Where did they come from? Uh, so, you know, it's one of those, you always do see them. Uh, but right now, this race, a little bit more controlled. There are big movers in the field. Lewis Francis with nine positions gained. He's there in P11. Uh, Kai Rillart's also nine positions gained. Is up into P13. So there are big movers uh, through the order. Uh, again, the race just finding its rhythm now as the drivers just slot into place. It is that limbo part of the weekend where some drivers are going for a fresh set, some drivers choosing not to go for that fresh set. There is the recovering uh, 181 of Vanguard Clementson, uh, who had that incident earlier on, still going strong, which is good to see. There is your race leader, though, Vivek Canton, in the 146 as we go on to lap 10 now of 11. And what a controlled race for the American here. Such a strong performance. And particularly Mashur as well. Yeah. It's, it's, I think Vivek Kanthan is going to be one to watch this season, stepping up to this level. And uh, as I say, he's uh, showing himself to be a very strong driver this weekend in Valencia. Uh, Marcus Shilkunas there in second place, continuing to score well. He's going to go back into the top six. 
in the point standings with this kind of result, but there is a potential reward up the road if he can find the pace to close down Canton and get by. They would switch positions in the intermediate classification. How about Luna Flusha as well? Had a, had a difficult set of uh, preparation for this first round of the season, but so far through qualifying and in the races, Luna Flusha showing her talents there in the, uh, in the Premier Race in 1 2 4. Uh, it just seems to be getting stronger and stronger. That's what you want at this stage if you are moving through the order. No, exactly that. You learn the cart more as the, uh, the season goes on. You get used to the tyres as well. Everyone's in that same boat with that. And, of course, the tracks as well. Luna Flusha doing a fabulous job uh, in this latter stage of the weekend so far. Really curious to see uh, how she will get on in those uh, superheats and finals tomorrow. Well, this man here, Vivek Canton, though, like we were saying earlier on, what a superb drive this race has been, has kept at bay. Marcus Shulkunas, Roland Cooklane, Ian Eichmann's kept at bay. Some really big names out there, same as Luna Flusha, has kept at bay here. And the American, Vivek Canthan, into the final chicane will only have one more flag to see, and that will be the checkered flag. A first qualifying heat win for the American across the line. Vivek Canton takes it from Marcus Shilkunas. Luna Flusha in third place from Eichmanns. David Cosma from Javier Avramides, from Dmitry Matviev. Then it's Guillaume Buzar, Roland Cooklane from Tom Dussel. The top ten, but a fabulous result for Vivek Canton. And that's one that's going to give him so much confidence for the remainder of this weekend. Looked assured looked controlled and will uh, take a big leap forward in that intermediate class classification up to fourth place as things stand and uh, well i think he's going to hold it in the top five in fact uh, but depending on how results go for the rest of this rotation 58 points on the board now for the american so the drivers returning to pit lane go through the processes of post-race scrutineering and get on the Weybridge, of course. Let's have a look at that provisional result. As stated, Canton takes the win by 0.65 of a second ahead of Marcus Shilkunas. Luna Flusha in the top three for Prima Racing, fourth for Ian Eichmann. Stavra Cosmo Christopher in fifth place ahead of Xavier Avramidis in sixth place. Dmitry uh, Matviev in seventh place. Guillaume Buzar faded a little bit in the second half of that one, finished eighth. Roland Cochrane in ninth. Tom Dussault in uh, tenth place. Louis Francis, Alpaxoy, Kai Rill. That's another good move up the order for the Belgian. Number nine in that one to 13th ahead of Joseph Smith and Marillo uh, de Rocca completing the top 15. Jimmy Elias, Louvois and Budler, Kuba Reisky, Dominic Simek, Evo Bastera all inside the top 20. Stylianos Kolovos. Hugo Radimetz, Matteo Giacardi, uh, all were finishers in the main pack. Uh, Vegard Clementson had the incident down at the chicane. Did get going again at uh, 24th place. Not what Norwegian would have wanted. Four retirements in that race. Kamenik, Konsani, Olko Dobchik and Brunner. Well, a brilliant result there and there. Your race winner, Vivek Canton, will be delighted with that one. Helmet comes off to confirm. Nice big smile on his face. Good to see. Let's take a look then at some of the highlights from that one. The start, it looked like it was going to go Marcus Schilkunas' way. Canton all the way around the outside there. Eichmann's keeping on him in the yellow helmet. You can see the inside line just kicks him out there. And he loses several positions in that open stage then. Down in towards the uh, pinch point here. Bizarre down the inside, forcing the Birolart there uh, to take to the curb. Uh, really pushing everyone up a little bit here. Then... It was this moment here where you could see, this is where you started to see the battle starting to form, the gap starting to open up. Canton down the inside, this is where he secured the lead. And I think it really showed his confidence. The first move didn't quite work. The no. second one, he pulled off sweetly and never looked back across the course uh, of the rest of the race. Luna Flusha was on the attack. This is an entertaining fight between Luna Flusha and, uh, and Roland McLean in the early stages. They'd gone... Uh, to battle on the first lap and they resumed it on the second in the end Luna Flusha won out in uh, in that battle but it did encourage the likes of Buzar and Eichmann's back into uh, the potential fight for third place Buzar got to the front of uh, of the group ahead of Eichmann's he didn't have the pace to clue to close down on uh, on Luna Flusha this was the main incident of the race three drivers uh, effectively out of it Brunner uh, Kamenek 
uh, and Clemenson. The, the latter two would get going again, but uh, Kamenik would be a retirement later in the race. Clemenson uh, would finish 52 seconds off the leader. That leader, of course, was Vivek Canton. 50 points to Powerlin Motorsports. Uh, American driver for that one. A very good effort indeed. And another driver building through the competition as the round goes on. Next race out on circuit. We go back to OK Junior. It's the qualifying heat for groups A and C. Anthony, nine laps, 13 kilometers for this one to be decided. In store for another good one. Certainly are. Three Sun Langendonk, who starts this one on pole position. Again, been an absolutely fantastic one. We did catch up with him before the weekend. Here's what he had to say. Well, um, I think me and the team are in a very good position right now. Um, we've already uh, shown a lot from last year and uh, the speed I think will be good. So it will just be about the consistency. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the tracks as well, they look very good. So um, yeah, I'm ready for it. Yeah, I think it was definitely a, a very good move. I mean, with energy, it was we are good, but not uh, not as good as we were with Forza. And um, yeah, obviously, I've achieved a lot already with the team. And um, yeah, I think it was definitely a, a very good move to go to Forza. Obviously, as a world champion, you definitely feel that kind of pressure. But I don't think it will affect me too much. I think I will just um, keep pushing and um, just let it all come to, towards me and uh, yeah, hope for the best. Obviously, I'm going to try to win the European Championship and maybe do a double in the Euro World Championship. But um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to let it come towards me. And also, we are looking at the international karting ranking as well. So um, yeah, we'll just try to win as much as possible and uh, maybe get a title in the bag. If the European Championship goes well, I think um, there is a possibility to uh, maybe do it at senior, but it's not confirmed yet. Um, obviously, it would, uh, would be very, very special to do it double. But um, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Well, great to chat there to three son Langendonk. Like I say, fully focusing on the uh, series ahead. Obviously, uh, junior world champion in the OK category last year. Uh, held at uh, Francia Corta in Italy. Uh, now, of course, bringing that over into 2024. He's got another chance at the European title as well as the world. Sebastian Latamaki, though, starting alongside on that front row. Again, the Finnish driver having some good results over the course of today. And again, this is going to be an exciting one. Lots of uh, talented drivers who have had good results in these top rows. Whistle blows as the drivers get started up and they head out onto the track. Let's take you through then the starting lineup for qualifying heat A versus C for OK Junior. It's Therisan Langendonk and Sebastian Lettemaki on the front row of the grid. Alex Malota and Alfie Slater on row two. Boris Lysen and Oliver Kinmark go from three. Then it's Henry Domain and Asher, uh, Asher Ostein on row four. Uh, Remy Samchek and Bosco Adias go from row five. Then it's Bogdan Cosma and Arthur Huang on row six. Theo Battisti and Ethan Lennon on row seven. Luke Corder and Matt Corby go from row number eight. Alex Martinez, Andrew Waltz start this one from row number nine. William Kalija and Jarrett Clark go from row number ten. Benjamin Maniak and Kozai Oguma start on row 11. Scott Marsh and Joel Pokola start on row 12. Both of them running on Tony Carts, of course. Uh, Max Endercott and Gilles Hermann start on row 13. Sunanze and Marco Gast on row 14. The top 30 is completed by Maria Neto, who had a very strong run last time out. Uh, complete opposite for Mark Rovko, had a problem and needs a good result here from the, uh, the back ends of the grid. Alex Brunner and Manuel Miguel start on row 16. 34 cart field for this one. Francois Cadal and Kit Belofsky completes there on row 17. The drivers on their formation of coverage of the first round for this year's FIA Karting European Championship. Andrew Mather and Anthony Jordan on commentary duties for you this afternoon. There was a quick shot of Sebastian Mint uh, sat out in uh, beyond uh, turn 15, getting a good vantage point over the circuit. 
Uh, there is a quick view of race control. Head of race control, Chris Lambrecht in the middle, flanked by Joanna Falcao. To this weekend, but uh, the stewards keeping a very close eye on it. And of course, you've got the track covered in experience. You've got Pasquale Lopola, you've got uh, Nigel Edwards, you've got uh, uh, Louis Gonzalez out there as well, Clark of the course. You've got uh, Gonzalo Plata also out there as well. You've got some, uh, some high quality people and eyes watching the track constantly, so you can't get away with anything. Absolutely. So nine laps for this latest group of OK juniors. Dries van Langendonk, the message, the, you know, the, the task at hand is simple. Win this race, go back to the top of the intermediate classification, tied on points with Nicholas Schaufler. If one of the other 20, uh, 33 drivers can beat him, we would have an outright leader at the end of round four. Are we ready for racing? Yes, we are. Green light, away we go for nine laps here. At Valencia, another good start for van Langendonk into turn one first Melota follows through are they all going to be able to make it through turn one yes is the answer towards turn three they go it's another fantastic start Anthony for Dries van Langendonk yep superb already opening up a gap with only a few corners done in this race you can see there the action coming thick and fast cuts three wide in the background but look at the lead already stretching out no drama here whatsoever as down the inside here it comes uh, Boris Lysen in the Sodi cart looking to get a move done into second place. Not going to happen. Now the energy course coming back. Domain to the inside. Again, can't make the move done. Sebastian Letemak has dropped well back in the order here. It's not been the start he will have wanted. You can see Remy Samcek has gained positions. Wheel to wheel. There's Boris Lysen down the inside. Gets that move done. Alex Melota down to fourth and now going wheel to wheel with Henry Domain. Really good start for Henry Domain. Started on the fourth row of the grid by the start of lap two. He's up to third place. Really good. In fact, generally, everyone on the odd side. First, third, fifth, seventh, ninth are now all in the top uh, top five from their starting positions on the grid. So as you say, Letimaki and everyone behind him. Uh, really suffered on that one. Letimaki now trying Oof. to come back through. Alex Melosa being forced out wide there. Alfie Slate is going to be coming through uh, past the driver there in uh, in the 278. That's what Letimaki needs. Needs to fight back in these early stages. He wants to get himself back in this, I'd say, top three is what he'd be targeting, having started second there on the grid. Yeah, certainly so. Again, side by side action there in the background. You could just see just falling down the order there. Big, big shame for Alex Melota, who's really struggled on this lap as uh, they go through. And there is, oh, now who's that? Is that? Is that Drew Waltz I out there? I think it is. Yeah, Drew Waltz, the Forza Racing team, out of this race. Uh, and there's another driver next to him as well, uh, and it's a DPK. He's uh, going to be Alex Martinez. I think so as well. Well, there we go. Both those drivers out of this race in the early stages. That's a big shame. But crucially, uh, with Dresan Langendonk leading this way, he goes joint on points. Uh, with Nicholas Schaufler. So then again, we still see those two drivers uh, neck and neck on the point. I'm really looking forward to seeing when those two go racing with each other because uh, I think that's going to be a really feisty one. And it's going to be their last race as well. Oh, it's, it is. Say, this a is the culmination of, of round number four. Everyone will have raced four times and have one more to go this afternoon. Change for fourth place through went Letimaki. Uh, on Samchik, and Samchik's actually lost more positions now. Alfie Slater up into the top five there for Ricky Flynn Motorsport. End of lap four, let's count them through. Dries van Langendonk leads by 0.8 of a second ahead of Boris Lysen. Is oh, very close moment there for the 273. That was ball down. Uh, Cosmo Christopher trying to find a way past Oxstein. It did not work, and uh, Arias has come through again. Won a oh. race in the first round earlier on this weekend. Bosco Arias has gained a spot. The fastest driver out there at the moment is Matt Corby, who's at the back of this train in the 277. Currently in 10th place. Could it be another good result for VDK Racing on the way here? Certainly could be, and it gets from bad to worse for Alex Melota. He was caught out in an incident off camera there with Forza Racing's Jarrett Clark, both of them off the track. And I think it's two retirements in this race as they tumble down the order. There you can see... Uh, Jarrett Clark being walked off the circuit. There you can see absolutely devastated. Big, big shame for him. A real uh, difficult weekend for Jarrett Clark. Started this race 20th on the grid. But I think it's tough to be positive about this. The speed has been there. It's a long season uh, for everybody. And understandably, Jarrett Clark hoping to get through to the final on Sunday. That's a, that's a big blow to those 
at those opportunities. Boris Lyzen, new fastest lap of the race, 55.877. As down the inside there on the move for VDK, Matt Corby gains another spot back past uh, Bogdan Kosma Christopher for eighth place. Yep, going defensive again, holding that inside line, watches as he gets tried to get the switch back here. Bogdan Kosma doing a very good job here. Green flag's out, which means there's a yellow flag somewhere. Uh, and I can see that there's a car being recovered at turn number one. But eyes focused on this here as they go into the final chicane. They will see, uh, or no, they won't, because the yellow flag's been cleared now. So they're going into green flag racing conditions here in towards turn number one. Uh, but nice big gaps opening up all the way throughout this one. And it's still been a nice clear race. Here's uh, Bosco Adias on that rear bumper of Alfie Slater. This is the battle for P5 here. Slater needing again, good result. He obviously had that DSQ, does not want another one or a retirement or anything like that. And he has been very consistent this uh, today, hasn't he? Yeah, he's, he's another results. driver who's responded well to adversity yep. here in Valencia. And uh, big shoes to fill, of course. Yep. Older brother, Freddy, uh, a fantastic record with Ricky Flynn Motorsports in, uh, in these OK categories. Well, of course, he moved on to uh, KZ and now racing in Formula 4. And uh, no, he's uh, applying himself well, gaining points. Uh, should uh, make the final with these performances, but he'll want more. He'll want points this weekend. That's uh, what he wants to improve on from a strong finish to the 2023 season. Down the inside there, that I think was the 2-3-5 of Benjamin Maniak on the move, getting past Arthur Huang. Uh, that was for 11th place. I think Benjamin Maniak is your biggest mover in this race. Yes, yeah, so up 10 spots. No, incorrect. Kit Malofsky is. He's gained 18 spots as Kit Malofsky is up to 16th. Well, Kip Malofsky's uh, just been one of those drivers who's constantly made moves like that after a terrible qualifying and making moves. Here comes Bosco Arias down the inside, gets past Alfie Slater, moves up into P5 now on the charge towards Sebastian Letemarki, who's on that recovery drive from the front of the grid. But yeah, like I was saying, yeah, Kip Malofsky obviously had that uh, spin in uh, qualifying. Mm -hmm. He then had to stop the session. He, could, he couldn't continue going. He stalled the car. He was out of qualifying. Did not set a time, so yeah, he's starting at the back of the grid in all these races. Certainly has been a driver who's had to work hard this weekend. And as I say, he's had a difficult season in 2023. He's moved back to Fusion Motorsport for 2024. And as I say, it's probably not going to be a weekend where you see Kit Belowski up in the top 36, but there is a lot to be positive, I think, from Kit Belowski from his work here this weekend in terms of race speed and in preparation for it. It's a long year. I'm sure we'll see Kit Belowski back into uh, into the higher reaches later on in the year. Yeah, certainly so. Well, eyes on our race leader. We've not been looking much at this battle here, but Doris Van Langendonk and Boris Lysen. Yeah, say Boris Lysen has closed in just that little bit now. The race leader is under a little bit of pressure here. Boris Lysen working hard all the way throughout that race, just under the radar, has snuck in right behind Doris Van Langendonk with not many laps left to go on this one. Big check over the shoulder there for Van Langendonk. So he is very well aware that Boris Lysen has closed right in, but doesn't go defensive in this stage of the race. They come out of the final corner. They see the last lap board. Now we might see some defensive driving. We might indeed. Oh, Lysen has a little think about it into turn one. We have seen Van Langendonk under pressure in the previous round. He emerged on top in, uh, in that previous race. What can he do here? What has he got left in the tank? Lysen's trying to go around the outside. Van Langendonk's going defensive here. Has Van Langendonk run about of tyres to a certain extent? He's done a lot of racing at the front of the order and very quick racing as well. This is the most under pressure we've seen the reigning world champions so far this weekend. Good defence to the inside again through turn 11. Lysen, there's just no way through on the inside. Shuts the door again. Does Van Langendonk, but this is bringing Henry Domain into the discussion as well there in third place. And maybe even Letimaki and Arias, depending on how the last couple of corners go. Defensive once again goes Van Langendonk. Domain no way through there. Van Langendonk's going to hold on and tie it up. A fourth win goes back to the top of the intermediate classification. Ties the scores with Nicholas Schaufler. But boy, oh boy, did he have to work for it. He certainly did, but what a drive that was from Dries van Langendonk. He secures the maximum points again. He stays joint with Nicholas Schaufler, and that brings us to the last race of the day for the category, and they are going to have one heck of a race. Stay tuned for that one, qualifying A versus F, later on today. Well, 
Boris Lysen, another brilliant result there. P2, three places gained as well for Henry Domain. Really, really crucial drive there from Domain. It was unfortunate that he wasn't able to capitalize on the defensive driving there from Van Langendonk. Stayed there in third place, but still a smart drive. Sebastian Lettermarki, I'm sure not the result he would have wanted, but still a P4 finish. It's a solid result still. It is, yeah, it is it's a solid result. Moves him back up to fourth place uh, in the intermediate classification and uh, with a decent number of points to defend that fourth place yeah. when we get to that final set of heats. Here's your provisional result then for the final heat in round four uh, for OK Junior. Dries van Langendonk becomes the second driver in OK Junior this weekend to take four from four. Uh, but only just less than a tenth of a second ahead of Boris Lysen in second place there. Henry Domain, uh, Sebastian Letimaki and Bosco Arias continue their good form all in the top five. Slater, Corby, Cosma Christopher, Oxstein and Samchik finish in the top ten. And then in the midfield, Benjamin Maniak, Ethan Lennon, Kit Bolovsky. Kit Bolovsky up 21 positions in that race uh, to 13th. Arthur Hyman 14th. And Maria Neto was, again, this is the second race in a row where Maria Neto has been into double figures of positions gained. Super drive to 15th. Yeah, certainly so. The rest of the field as well. Uh, Luke Cornder, your popular seven places gained. Kose Aguma, Jules Herman. Uh, but while we uh, go through that a little bit later, let's have a look at the highlights from that one. And again, great start from that inside row. Worked out so, so well. Led to Marky there, just getting caught out. Getting a little bit tangled on the uh, the wheels there. Just dropped back a fair few positions. This was Domain coming through the field as well. And this was the start of the, well, I, I don't want to say demise, because it's not demise, but uh, certainly it was a very, very tough race. Uh, for your man who was in uh, that car there, just trying to uh, to stick all the way throughout this one. Yeah, Alex Malota lost uh, 18 places yes. down to 21st in that one. It's been a difficult uh, difficult day for uh, for him. Slovakian will be looking forward to a home event later in the season, of course. Let's see, yeah, maybe brewing missed opportunities here this weekend at Valencia. Good move. Uh, from Letimaki. He didn't quite get back into the top three, but fourth place will do. Another haul of points for the Finn racing for Tony Cart. Moves himself back into the top five in the standings. Off there. Now, that was the moment involving Jarrett Clark uh, ending uh, the race for him. And I think was it, uh, it was uh, Francois Cadal as uh, well who uh, didn't see the end of the race. Two other retirements in that race were from earlier on. Drew Waltz and uh, Alex Martinez, of course. Yes, yeah, certainly so. The race continuing, though, but it stayed relatively calm and under the radar. It was Boris Lies is slowly closing in. Again, the battle's happening thick and fast all the way throughout the field. Uh, but so many drivers just trying to get involved in this one. This was all the way down in uh, P13. That was Kip Bolovsky uh, trying to make moves as well. Arthur Quang in that battle as well. But certainly all of the drivers really pushing super, super hard. And this final lap as well, Superb defensive drive from Therese van Langendonk. A brilliant controlled race and taking his race to the win. And, and again, matching the points with Schaufler. It's going to make that last race later on so exciting. And the other key is that Therese van Langendonk will have the inside yes. again for uh, for that race when we get on to it. Uh, if you're particularly interested in that one, I do hope you are. It'll be at around uh, 16.35 local time. But plenty of uh, racing before we get to that point. Uh, the next one out on circuit is the final heat in round four of the qualifying heats for the OK category. It's groups A and C about to take to the circuit for 11 laps, 15 and a half kilometers here at the Cartodromo Internacional Lucas Guerrero. And uh, yeah, this is a great opportunity for Gabriel Gomez uh, to get away from the rest of the uh, the field, I, I feel here, uh, uh, Anthony, because he's got three from three so far. If he was to make it four from four, it would be uh, a big lead for him. But he's got the challenge of this man here, Joe Turney, back in race trim after his uh, accident at the, the World Championships at the back end of last year. And he is a man right in form once again for Cart Republic. We caught up with him earlier in the week before we got going. Uh, here at Valencia, let's hear what he had to say. Yeah, I had a long uh, and intense recovery, so uh, five months it's been, over five months now since my accident in the World Champ, so uh, it's been difficult, but I've had uh, amazing people around me from the team to my, my family, the consultants, everyone's been really good and supportive, so uh, I've, uh, 
I'm a bit ahead of schedule and been able to get back for the first round. I've already had a race back and uh, it we were fast, so hopefully we, we've still still got the speed like I had before. So um, in terms of the racing, it's still going to race hard as always and uh, and try and get the best result possible. Good luck and enjoy it. I know a lot of the senior drivers that are moving up now, uh, well, some of the juniors that are moving up in senior now aren't here for very long. They do a, a year or two and then they move on. So uh, enjoy the time that you're here and uh, yeah, do the best you can. I think uh, more of the same, like uh, all the previous years that I've been here, we're, uh, we're still trying to chase that first European Championship for me. So uh, it's never easy. And um, I've won uh, quite a few rounds in the past, but never done the, the championship. So um, trying to be consistent over the year and um, do the maximum we can to try and bring home the championship. Yeah, it brings up uh, a valid point there again. Joe Turney, always a quick driver, but yet to stand on that top spot at the end of a championship. It's one of those fine lines, isn't it? Y you see those talented drivers who are always quick, but just struggle to put it all together in one year. It, it shows how complex this sport is. It does. You know, for Turney, he w won here last year yep. uh, to start the 2023 championship. He did the same in round one of 2022 as well. So. He's always a driver who's who's quick out the blocks. It's just, as you say, piecing together uh, all those aspects of a full European Championship that so far has a, has eluded the Briton. But uh, you never know; this could be his year. I think whatever is going to happen for for Joe Turney's season, it, it is going to be a difficult one. It's, this race is a, a great epitomisation of that. That Gabriel Gomez so far this year has quite literally been in unbeatable form. He took time to qualifying pole position. Uh, on uh, on Friday, and he's taken his first three races uh, so far this weekend. But he will also know this is so far a, a pretty much exact repeat of his round one from uh, 12 months ago, and it was a round he didn't go on to win, of course. Uh, exactly that. Well, there you can see, judge of fact, Ross Upton showing the one-minute board to our drivers, and there you can see everyone else watching from the sidelines getting ready to go racing for this one again 10 times, but still smiles on the faces from the track staff that have been working so, so hard over the course of the last couple of days. And again, we couldn't go racing without our fantastic marshals on the track. And of course, all of our uh, delegates, clerk of the course, stewards, everything like that to make sure we are nice and safe and in order. This man here though, Lewis Werrell, we caught up with him earlier as well. Again, brilliant young driver, great results so far this weekend, but just again, putting it all together, getting those good results. It's going to be a long weekend, isn't it, still? It is, but it's, for Lewis Werrell is a very exciting talent, top yep. of the IKR uh, at the end of 2023. He's learning. I think yep. he recognises that he's learning, but he's got that really good base of Forza Racing and all the work that they've done uh, underneath him, serving him serving him well so far. He, he, I think he had a bit of a baptism of fire yep. in preparation for this event, but we've seen already he's, he's learning from the mistakes that we all make and even the best of the drivers out there make he's going to be a, a force to be reckoned with in, in this one he certainly is well let's take you through the starting lineup for this one then Gabriel Gomez and Lewis Wells starting on the front row of the grid Davide Vitaro and Joe Turney on row two Finn McLaughlin and Miguel Costa on row three David Volta and Tame Salego from row four Noah Montero Mark Dimnitsky on row five Casper Henriksen and Ludovico Busso go from row six with Yunus Peschel and Stefano Padani on row number seven. Second half of the grid looking to move up. Uh, Thomas Kinsey and Marty Rittenen start on row eight. Yu uh, Capo and Len Nysch on row nine. Kian Faden and Jacob Mikulov complete the top 20 on row 10. Philip Caras and Santino Panetta start on the 11th row of the grid. Oscar Rapetto and Vilma Svan on row 12. Alphonse Mirtinen and Lewis Bird go from row 13. Nico Lachnalate and Sofia Zanfari on row 14. And uh, that will be all the drivers. Uh, Elliot Kanchiski uh, not taking the start, uh, as we've seen for the previous rounds. Uh, not the weekend that the driver who finished top of the intermediate classification in the OK Juniors here last year would have been uh, hoping for. Yeah, no, exactly that. Well, out lap completed, drivers go on to their formation lap here. Weather still looking absolutely fantastic. And what you see here weather-wise is, I think, going to be a carbon copy of what you're going to see tomorrow as well. So if anything, today is such a good day for getting intel 
uh, from the cart, the tyres, everything like that, I, where you could put into effect tomorrow as well. I, I just wonder, is this going to be one of those situations where a team, if yep. they've got a driver who's not having the best of weekends, yep. might become almost a bit of a data analysis tool, throw some new tyres on just to see how they respond in, uh, in this, these conditions, because I think you're right, it's going to be very similar uh, when we get to the finals tomorrow in 24 hours' time. Yes, uh, again, but uh, the only downside they've got is that they only have the half set that, that they can true, deploy. Yeah. They won't have a full, full set, set, so they can only get, well, half the half data the <laughs> <laughs> that, they, we, uh, that they would need. But, uh, you know, again, it's still a very valid point, and I suspect some drivers have deployed those at the moment as, uh, well, on board here, Miguel Costa. This shows you uh, what they go through to uh, warm up these tyres. There you can see the uh, the track here, very, very coarse, and you can see there the marbles that have uh, accumulated on that tyre there. Show very, very rough there as uh, we get going racing in this one. Miguel Castelo starting this one on the outside of row three. This should give you a great example of what it's like to start a race from that position. Absolutely. Miguel Costa has uh, been another driver in good form this weekend. About ready to go then. 11 laps once more. Gabriel Gomez starts on pole position with his teammate Davide Bataro directly behind. Uh, on grid three, they've worked very well together so far this weekend. Are we good for a start? No, is the answer. We go round again. Pasquale Lupoli not happy with the formation there. I think there was a bit of a gap between second and fourth place, so uh, not surprised that we've gone round for another one there. Yeah, exactly that. So one more lap, and uh, again at this later stage of the race, it's not a nice thing to have to deal with because again. You, you, it's cr every lap is vital with these tyres, and again, you just don't want to have to deal with these extra formation laps, warming them up again, keeping the temperature in them. It scrubs quite a bit of the tyre off, and you don't want that. It, it does, but I, I think in, on the whole, the, Mac, the new Max's tyres are holding up very well. A lot of what we've been hearing in the paddock, Anthony, is that for the stability of the tyre across the course of these heats, particularly on a warmer weekend, uh, like we've got here compared to, to the preparations for this event, that the tyres are doing doing pretty well. So Gabriel Gomez will go through the set of operations in his mind as how to start for one of these races. He's had three experiences from the front of the field this weekend. He, of course, did exactly the same last year uh, for the first round of the European Championship when he qualified on pole position in Group A through time qualifying and by virtue had pole position in every single qualifying heat. He's unbeaten in the qualifying heats format at every single heat that he's ever done here, which is uh, quite a stat and a half. But this is going to be a big challenge. Lewis Werrell on the uh, outside there is Gonzalo Planta. Very clear definition. Please close up the gaps, drivers, so we can get this race underway. No tourney as well there. It's going to be a threat from P4. Are we going to be good for a start this time? Into the tram lines we go. Red lights are on, waiting for the green. There it is, and away we go for the start of the A versus C qualifying heat. Good start for Gomez. Covers off the attack from Werrell. On board now with Miguel Costa. Oh, gets a little bit of a touch in the uh, on the rear axle. Joe Turney's had a quick start, is up to second place. A really close moment there for Miguel Costa. Thought he was going to be going round, but they're all still on circuit and uh, traversing. Th oh, no, they're not. The yeah. 131 is out. I think that's before we've even got to the start. Yeah. It's Sofia Zanfari, unfortunately, uh, for Victory Lane, who is out of the race. And there's actually quite a bit of damage to the front of that. Unsure how on earth that happened. Yeah, that's a, that's a confusing one. A warning flag straight away to Davide Pataro. That's the driver who started third place on the grid. And uh, in fact, he's not coming through sector number one. Has there been a problem for Davide Bataro of a more uh, race hampering nature? Because I do not see the second of those CRGs in this formation. He's in P5. He crosses the oh, line, okay. Davide yep, Bataro. Okay. So he is still in the race. But yeah, you're right. He has dropped down, though. Uh, so clearly an incident. Here comes Turney to the inside, dives down through turn number three and says thank you very much to Gabriel Gomez. I will take that one. Now that brings Lewis Werrell back into it as well. This could be close. This is the first time Gomez has not led a race, I would say. He is going to fight back in this one. He will push hard. But now Werrell's going to dive down the inside, can sense an opportunity. Gomez is on the back foot here. Oh, this is a 
this is a very much a change in the situation and immediately Gomez fights back, retakes second place. Now, if the result was to finish this way, it's not a disaster, not at all for Gabriel Gomez. He would still retain the lead of the intermediate classification at the end of round four. Miguel Costa closing in as well in fourth place over the start finish line. It's a near four tenth lead for Joe Turney over Gabriel Gomez. The points change. Gomez would drop to 194. Turney up to 191. So as long as Gomez can hold this position, Anthony, he's still got that crucial lead in the points. Yep, certainly has. Well, keeping an eye on this. Gomez hasn't dropped off the back. He has stayed with Turney. That's the most important thing, because as soon as you release Turney, trust me, that's a very risky thing to do, very. Uh, because he can drive away quite quickly. Uh, but he hasn't this time around. Werrell stuck with Gomez as well. This is, uh, again, an interesting thing. No one able to break away. That's what I'm loving about these Max's tyres. Yeah. They, they keep the pack together just that little bit more. It makes it so, so exciting for the drivers. Miguel Costa there in fourth place is still keeping up with them as well. And for Davide Pataro, all of them very, very close. And as well with the drivers behind, you've got McLaughlin, Tame Soleil, No Montero. No Montero really needs a good result. I, am, my fingers are so crossed for No Montero in this race. Absolutely. He, he's had good speed. He's had no luck at all so far this weekend. And uh, there's hope still there if you could have a good result here and a good result in the, uh, in the final round later on this afternoon in the qualifying heats. You could still... Uh, make uh, a good position in those super heats, but as I say, he needs his luck to turn here. But what I like about these tyres, you're absolutely right, Anthony, it's, it's made a thinking driver sport even harder on the psychological yes. front of, of when do you make your move? When do you push on the tyres? How much risk do you take? It's going to make for a fascinating season. Back on board for a small moment there with our onboard cam with Miguel Costa really showing again the speed you can carry through some of these corners. Back through that final chicane. It's still turning from Gomez. Werrell in one, two, three. As again, the investigation flags coming out thick and fast. There you can see it for the 157 of Martin Itterman, who's currently in 18th place. So again, race control keeping an eye on the field all the way throughout while we watch our race leaders here. Again, the different racing lines. Turney, though, quickest lap. You saw him much wider going into the uh, turns there of turn five and six, choosing for the later apex, while you were seeing Gomez there much tighter into that corner. It's so interesting to see those different racing lines. Isn't uh, it's, it? it's showing the differences in the chassis as well. Yeah, Turney yeah. on the, uh, the Kart Republic, of course. Gomez on the CRG uh, through turns 12, 13 and into 14 they go and uh, I've got to say as well the sector times looking pretty similar at the moment for these front runners to the main meet of this race turning again he takes so much curve through that final chicane but it's working for him a new fastest lap of the race for the race leader 54.481 but change that because Ludovico Busso has uh, just gone and set the fastest lap of the race let's have a look again this is the move by Werrell on uh, on Gomez. Gomez immediately responds with a switchback move. This was on the second lap of the race. And, and right now, with you look at uh, the gaps of turning to Gomez to Werrell, that was a very, very uh, shrewd attack straight away from Gomez. It, it would have been worried of losing time to turn if he'd uh, stayed behind. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the best time to retake a position is as soon as you've lost a position because that, that's the closest they're ever going to be to you if you do let the position stay and yeah, right now, Gomez doing everything he can to try and close back up to Turney. Oh, and I'm just, you know, I'm reminding myself between these two drivers. We were just talking uh, to, to Turney. What happened the last time these two were racing this close to each other? Yes, it's, uh, it was a big part of the a final big, race big of the World Championship big, of big 2023. Part. And here they are facing off again on lap number seven. Gomez is closing in on Turney here, 0.2 of a second. Not going to be an opportunity that time. That's slightly wider line by Turney once more through turn number seven. Onto the infield straight. Not the longest straight here at Valencia, but a key one to get right, and both of them have done so. Who's on the move through the order? No, Montero is up to sixth place uh, for Karts Republic. That's a gain of three. Ludovico Busso has mentioned is up four, one of the fastest drivers out there on circuit. Uh, Vilma Svans having a decent race. Anthony's up nine spots at the moment and into the top 15. Certainly so, big movers all the way throughout the field as we keep an eye on this one. We go on to lap eight of 11. 
And eyes still on this one. The gap still two tenths of a second, just controlling everything. These drivers, Gomez really sticking uh, with turn eight all the way throughout this lap. Again, great insight to what could potentially be happening in a final later on could this be. one. You know, this could be the order of what we see in a final later on. We just don't know. This is what makes it these qualifying heats so vital, I think, for these drivers. You have to learn so much. You have to take in everything that you see, don't you? It, 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 this could be the difference of who starts in Super Heat A and Super Heat yeah, B yeah, yeah. as well. It, it's going to be championship points on the line in, uh, in this 11-lap race. Round on to the back straight once again. Point situation, just to remind, if you're just joining us, uh, we're in the fourth round of five for the OK category here this weekend in the qualifying heats. As things stand with these race positions, Gomez would have the lead with one round to go, 194 points from a possible 200. Turney, 191, and could do no more, clearly, because he's in the lead of this race by a quarter of a second. Pavan and Morgato would move to third and fourth. Lewis Werrell, if he can hold that third place, uh, would settle in fifth place with all of the drivers having one more race this afternoon. So, well, lap nine of 11 in the infield straight here. Still no change between our top three. They stay in limbo mode at the moment. The same as the rest of the field. Overtakes on that last lap. Casper uh, Henriksen getting past Len Nijsch. Uh, Jakob Mikulev getting past Lewis Bird. That was for 22nd place. Uh, the only two overtakes on that last lap. So again, everyone in conservation mode uh, right now as we go on board with Miguel Costa through the final chicane. You can see there just how the gap opens and forms between a driver. It's no bigger disheartening feeling than just slowly seeing the driver ahead of you just eek up further and further and further away, is there? Yeah, fully agree. This, this <laughs> regularly happens to me when I'm in the go-kart. Uh, problem, <laughs> unfortunately, for, <laughs> for the Saudi kart. There it is. Uh, Nico Lachnalate is uh, out of this race, unfortunately. That's a big shame. And uh, that may be the end of any hope for the Finn of qualifying through to the Super Heats tomorrow. It's not yeah, been a good yeah, it's not been a good weekend. A weekend to forget as well. But uh, uh, nevertheless, there are still plenty more rounds to go this year in 2024. I'd say keep your chin up. Well, we're going on to the last lap when the drivers come back to the start-finish line. This is where we might start to see some motion. You see Turney just checking over the shoulder briefly on that back straight uh, to see what the situation is. You can see that Gomez is right there. Are we going to see a move here? I mean, I would think yes from Gomez. He wants to make sure he maintains that perfect score. You know, he's in competition with other drivers here as well. I reckon he might go for the move here if he gets an opportunity. If he gets the opportunity, but I think it's going to be at least like an 80-20 move. It, yes. it can't be one of those of just like, oh, just send it on a 50-50. Yeah, no, no, it's no. got to have that certainty. Because, uh, he wouldn't want to lose uh, more points than he could gain, necessarily. Joe Turney looks so smooth at the wheel of the Carp Republic so far this weekend. That's through one of the overtaking hotspots once more onto the back straight. One more opportunity, you would think, for Gabriel Gomez to keep his perfect record in the qualifying heats intact. I don't think it's going to happen for him. Joe Turney is going to beat Gabriel Gomez here. It's just a qualifying heat, but how key could that be here this weekend in Valencia? Gomez holds on to the intermediate classification lead, but his lead is now only three points ahead of that man there. Joe Turney, your race winner. Superb racing from the two drivers. Turney, Gomez, Werrell in third place as well. Very controlled drive for Lewis Werrell. Miguel Costa as well. Well, he had a pretty calm race he did there, didn't he? So many drivers having a calm race, actually. Just getting into their position and holding on to it. But still, getting two places in that one did Miguel Costa. Finn McLaughlin again. Calm race, started fifth, finished fifth. No drama for him. No Montero gaining the three places into P6 from Ludovico Busso. Five places gained, finishing in P7. David Volta, David Bataro, and Tame Soleil round out the top ten. They were having a good scrap in those last final stages of that race. But this man here, Joe Turney, another good result. Heads back into Park Ferme. Yeah, he could be very happy with the work there. That was uh, professionally done by Joe Turney. And uh, scarily, I think, for the rest of the competition, I would say he's getting stronger I from the way he was at the start of this uh, this weekend and in preparation two weeks ago. This is uh, more like it from uh, the Britain. Wins by nearly a tenth and a half. 
Uh, Gomez Werrell, Costa, McLaughlin, uh, Montero. Great to see Montero, Montero up there in sixth place. He needed that. He needed that. Busso, Volta, uh, Batara and Saleh, as you can say, the top ten. Likewise, Kasper Henriksen for Ward Racing. The Norwegians had a, a tough weekend so far, and there's a bit of hope there with that P11. Kian Fardan, Jindrik Peschel, Len Nijsch, Stefano Padani, all in the top 15. Vilma Svan, Alphonse Mirtanen, Yukapo, uh, Marty Rittenen, and Oscar Repetto inside the top 20. Outside of it, with work to do, Panetta McLeff, Karas Bird, Lachna Latte, uh, into the retirements, of course, Lachna Latte, Kinsei, Dubnitsky, Senfari, and Kaczynski will not start. Here are some of the highlights. Certainly a very good start then. Bit of a dramatic moment there for McLaughlin at the start. That was allowed uh, the top three to really break away on this one. On board at the start with uh, Miguel Costa here on the outside. You can see desperately trying to get to the inside, but having to stay on the outside. Keep an eye of it. There was the moment. That was with McLaughlin. That's why uh, the gap there, you can see, opened up so much. And it kind of stayed like that. Now, Sofia Samfari. Again, completely unsure of how that happened, but that's a lot of damage there, wasn't it, at the start as uh, Turney went for the lead? It was a lot of damage indeed. Joe Turney taking the initiative through turn number three. He likes the overtake through that part of the circuit. And uh, Lewis Werrell then went on the attack. Uh, had second place momentarily, but Daniel Gomez using all of his experience to find a way back past uh, the youngster. We took that second place. Those positions would hold for the entirety of the race. Here's the view again of the Werrell attempt to take second place on board uh, with Miguel Costa. Uh, but for Joe Turney, a big boost, not only in the points, but I think psychologically for the weekend, getting that win over Gabriel Gomez, breaking Gomez's winning streak. Uh, as things stand, they would not meet in the superheats, but they very much could meet again when we get to the final. Certainly so. Looking forward to that one later on in the weekend. Make sure you stay tuned for it. Up next, though, it is the OK Junior qualifying heat D versus E. Nine laps upon us for this one. And again, uh, a brilliant stuff. Jack Eilis starting on pole position for this one. The American uh, really, really showing some great uh, skill over the course of this weekend. He's had some uh, really good results. We'll have Kenzo Craigie starting alongside on this one. Qualifying didn't fully go Jack Eilif's way. He was fastest in his group, was, wasn't fastest overall. And I say it didn't fully go his way. I mean, he was off by a hundredth of a second, if that. I mean, it was so minimal. The competition was so, so competitive, but he did such a good job. Here's what he had to say after qualifying. Jack, a uh, really good lap time for you there, getting it in uh, right at the end. How do you feel? I feel good. I had a good slipstream. I put together the lap well and now we'll be starting on the front row for the heats. And another a great performance from, from Forza Racing. They're looking really strong here this weekend. Yeah, the team's done a great job of the setup and everything Magic Engines have given us a good package for this weekend. And I feel confident that we can do well this weekend. It's not the hottest it'll be this year. You know, when we get to, to the summer, it'll go up into the, the 30s, maybe even more. But this is the first properly hot, warm, whichever way we want to put it, meeting of, uh, of the year. How, how have you prepared for this? Uh, of course, it's getting hotter and more grip on track. Um, but to be honest, the heat doesn't really bother me. I, from, I'm from Texas, so <laughs> um, yeah, it's n no struggle to me. But of course, I've done some training in the winter, and I'm ready for this weekend. And how are you finding racing here in, in the FIA you know, European Championships? How do you find racing against the, your peers? Um, the people that race in the series are the best in the world. I. This series is great, and I'm, I'm ready for the other runs, like Slovak, Christianstad, and PFI. Well, great to chat to uh, Jack Eilif there. I, I guess, always got that cheeky smile on his face, hasn't he? Love it. Anyway, let's take you through the full starting lineup for this one. Jack Eilif starts on pole position. Kenzo Craigie alongside Vladimir Vanikov and Sebastian Mins go from row two. Roman Kamiab and Daniel Kelleher on row three, Matt Van Ruin and RG Kraling on row four, Ily Christen and I I Iskander uh, Zulfakari on row five, Louis Cochet and Rocco Coronel on row six, Devin Voltz and Oliver Rasmussen on row seven with Kasper Rajpold and Zhang Jose on row eight. Shensei, you need a good result here. Starts on row five alongside Zhao Si Yun. Uh, Makar Savalev and Scott Lindblom go from the 10th row of the grid. Aaron Kara Osman and Augustus Toniolo on row 11. Bruno Grick 
and Travis Teo start on row 12, Cara Furhand and Marcel Shabo on row number 13. Meryl Peldez and Alexander Uznim starts on the 14th row of the grid and then completing the top 30 at the start of this one, it's Enzo Rudigiro and Cole Denham on row 15. It's a 32 card field completed by Vanessa uh, Shilkenet and Philippe Planeta on row 16. And once again, nine laps for these drivers. Uh, am I correct in saying yes, I think so, is their last race of the qualifying heats for oh. D&E. There you go. We're going to finally start to determine who's going to be starting where for the super heats tomorrow. That's the ultimate question, uh, isn't it? But again, there are going to be drivers who are going to be eliminated at the end of today as well. Some drivers will not make the cut through into those super heats. That's the ultimate question. But well, they will have to wait until the end of the day to find that out. Uh, the intermediate classification as things stand. Remember, it's Van Langen, Duncan, Schaufler, both on 200 from 200. Costoya, 188. Letimaki, 173. The highest ranked driver in this race is in sixth place. Just behind Boris uh, Lyzen on 162. It's Kenzo Craigie, the best placed driver in the points, who is in this race could be a key one. Into the tram lines we go then for the final time for these drivers. Green lights and nine laps here at Valencia for the qualifying heats. Good start for Eilif. Defending P1, round goes Craigie. Oh. Round goes Kenzo Craigie. Oh. oh, and a big hit as well from the 230. One of the DPKs following in. And just as we said, straight away, drama in the final round of heats. One of the front, front runners in this one is out. That is a big, big shock. Like you were just saying, he needed that good result there to really help him out in that one. Drivers are trying to get started. Not going to happen whatsoever. This is a huge shock for so many of our drivers in that one. That is a disaster. It was Cole Denham trying to get restarted. It's just not happening. Well, the race has been put under full uh, yellow. So we are under the slow procedure at the moment. Uh, yeah, that is being confirmed. I can see the marshals now putting it out. It was updated on our graphics uh, way before they got the call. So, yeah, the whole grid now being slowed down. We are under slow procedure. Right. Let's uh, see who we've uh, still got left. So, Jack Eilif, fine at the front of the order, leads. Roman Cameo second. Let's actually have a look at that first. Yeah, so, look happened? out for Kenzo Craigie on the right-hand side of your screen in the uh, red, white and green Prima. Uh, I presume he's going to get a tip from behind. Actually, that's coming from much further back. Round goes uh, Craigie. And then there's a moment you never like to see. Oh, huge impact there uh, with uh, with one of the DPKs. That's going to be Marcel Schabo in the 2-3-0. Also out uh, on the spot. Vanessa uh, Schilkenate, Cole Denham has mentioned. Bruno Grick, Shensei Yu again. has been an awful weekend for Shensei Yu. And that may be it. Uh, for the 276 cash for Rypold as well out uh, before we've even got to the end of lap one. Full course yellow continues. Well, that is going to really shake up the intermediate classification with that. So many drivers out of it. Uh, so many drivers there who have had like multiple bad results. And, and again, through no fault of their own, just being caught out at the wrong place at the wrong time. Unfortunately, those things, uh, they do happen. Another lap under the slow procedure. So, again, drivers going round once more. Race is neutralised as we go on to lap number three of nine now. Eilif uh, leading the way from Kamyab, Sebastian Mins, Arjun Kraling. Sebastian Mins now goes up to third in the intermediate classifications. Yeah, really good stuff from, uh, from Sebastian Mins. He's uh, in a good position here. Maybe a bit of work to be done with his teammate ahead for Ricky Flynn Motorsports. As uh, back to the pits there, and that's uh, Vanessa Chilkenate, it's been a difficult weekend, uh, had uh, problems in qualifying and doesn't see the end of this final round of heats. Uh, just to mention on Kenzo Craigie as well, Kenzo Craigie is comfortably going to make the super heats and uh, is still in a good place to be uh, up the order for the final as long as that super heat goes well, uh, but drops to eighth place now in the, uh, in the scores, has lost position to Mins Kamiab and uh, Eilif in everything that's happened there on that first lap. Yep, certainly so. Not the way you want a race to start. Unfortunately, so many drivers out uh, before they got going. Right, well, let's see 
what's going to happen here as it looks like we are getting ready to go green flag and racing once again as they go down in towards turn number one in single file formation it's still a good breakaway then for the top three as they go through Eilif leading the way from Kanyab and Sebastian Mins the two Ricky Flynn motorsport drivers working together in the early stages of this race can they pull away from the rest of the field it's then being followed by the triplet of Kart Republic Motorsport drivers, Kraling, Sofakari and Kelleher right behind. But here at the front, it's a nice getaway for Eilith. It really is. He's going to work hard in this one because he's got two sets of teammates uh, up behind him into 12, uh, turn 12 they go. Uh, green flag running all the way around the circuit, of course. We've got 25 carts remaining here in this one. Eilif checking over the shoulder to see where Roman Kamiab is. If Roman Kamiab can find a way through, he would take Sebastian Mint's third place away in the intermediate classification. So there's big rewards to be had here for Roman Kamiab. Defending behind there is, uh, is Sulfikari in the 2-3-2 from his teammate, uh, Daniel Kelleher. They've got Ili, uh, Ili Christian just behind. Scott Lindblom is a, a driver you need to watch out for as well. Uh, Anthony, this one has already gained 11 places uh, from where he started. He's up to P9. Yep, certainly so. Fabulous start from uh, the rest of the field in this one. Big train forming now uh, just behind this one. You know, all these drivers just trying to gain as many positions as they can. Big looks over the shoulder there for Kamyab. And the sign of weakness down the inside. Sebastian Mintz sideways there. And through goes Arjun Kraling. Well, I don't think Kraling was expecting that to happen. What on earth happened there? M Mins went to the inside, but did the was the door closed by Kamiab? I don't think any of them really uh, expected uh, that one to uh, to occur. But uh, meanwhile, it's good news for Jack Eilif because for the first time in this race, he's got a lead of nearly half a second ahead of Kamiab. Kraling there in third now. Kelleher gained out of all of that into fourth place. And again, Scott Lindblom, he is charging now. Less than two seconds off the lead. He's up to seventh. Certainly so. Kelleher now with the fastest lap of the race there in P4. Starting to close in here. Let's see what happened then between these two. As the Mintz goes to the inside. Oh, was that a last second just emergency press of the brakes? It looked like the rear axle locked up. And I think it was with good reason because is there a little bit of a touch on the rear of the 204? Oh, oh yeah. yes, there is. Yeah. There's more than a little touch that was on the rear of Jack Eilif. Jack Eilif has done very well to keep that cart under control. Yep, certainly so. That was a big moment there. Well, drama then for a driver. You can see there the marshals are quick to react to it, uh, but luckily no spins. Uh, well, back with the live pictures now. Eilif breaking away, and now an investigation flag is underway for Sebastian Mins. Well, there you go. That will be for that incident we've just seen the replay for. Uh, but hopefully, uh, all gets away well. Down the inside there is Scott Lindblom going for the move. Uh, he's taken advantage of that fastest lap of the race, using that momentum uh, now behind uh, Daniel Kelleher. And on the charge, getting that move done on Illy Christian. Scott Lindblom now gaining those positions. Well, interesting stuff here as we're in the dying stages of this race. Crucially, though, Eilif with another good positioning there. No drama at the moment. Four tenths clear. Yeah, it's doing a good job at the front of the field. With two more laps to go after this one. It's a high quality order in the top ten. Count them through at the end of lap number seven. There's an investigation flag going out for Devin Waltz in the 228. Eilif leads. Three and a half tenths clear of Kamiab. Trailing third, Mins fourth, Kelleher fifth, Limblom, Christian, Coronel, Solfikari and Koshe are all in the top ten. Enzo Rodriguez, I think, uh, is your second biggest mover in this race. Uh, is up to 17th place now. The biggest mover, of course, being Limblom. Right ahead, the two Cart Republics fighting there uh, over fourth and fifth place. It's all stacking up behind Mins now, Mins defensive to the inside as they go through turn number 11. But you can feel, in fact, no, that's a change for third, of course. So Kraling has slipped back behind Mins to fourth place. Is Kraling having a bit of a difficulty out here as we head to the latter stages of this one? Well, maybe. He, could, he might not have deployed a fresh set of tyres yet. He might be still on the old ones as Kelleher dives to the inside of his teammate. Limblom tries to follow as well. The gap was never going to stay open. Has to stay behind. Final lap time 
Eilif from Kamyab. It's two tenths of a second. Kamyab has closed in. Could we see a fight here for the race lead? I think we, I think we could. The tenth of a second was taken out by Kamyab last time around. Oh, big and Eilif's having to defend now through turn number five into six and now seven. Shuts the door. Doesn't let a path down the inside for Kamyab to appear there. Checks over the shoulder again because he's going to be a little bit weak as they go through turn eight, nine and ten. He's going to have to defend hard to the inside. This could bring Mins back into it as well. Great defense from Jack Arliff. He's got to keep the door closed. He hasn't kept the door closed. Here comes Roman Kamyab down the inside, takes the lead with only five corners to go. Nicely done there. Kamyab read the road perfectly there, but is Arliff going to go for the move down the inside? No, but Kamyab goes defensive. It could be a run to the line here, out of the corner, but it's going to go the way of Kamyab. Roman Kamyab takes the win, and he's happy with that one across the line from Jack Eilif and Sebastian Mins. And uh, for Roman Kamyab, he gains a position in the intermediate classification out of that, moves up to third, displaces his teammate Sebastian Mins down to fourth. So that will convert into championship points. It's just a question of how many championship points uh, of course, because there's still races to be run here this afternoon. Very good stuff from Roman Kamiab. I feel that's been that's been coming. He's, we started we started with a tenth place, then fourth, then second. It's been moving in that trajectory, and he's got his win. Very well deserved. Yep, very very solid drive there for Roman Kamiab. We'll be delighted with that one, and I think yes, yeah, still celebrating it. That's how much of it. It's only a qualifying heat, but it does mean so much to them, doesn't it? does indeed into uh, Park Ferme the drivers go then we'll go on to uh, the Weybridge and then uh, into the technical checks as well let's have a look through the order then provisionally for that last heat of the weekend uh, in this format for groups D and E Roman Kamiab your winner ahead of Jack Isleth with that last lap overtake Sebastian Mintz third Daniel Kelleher fourth are you trailing makes it two card republics uh, in the top five, Ely Christian, P6, Rocco Coronel, good points again for the Dutchman in seventh, Scott Lindblom in eighth, Louis Cachet and Travis Teo completing uh, the top ten. Iskender Sulfikari in eleventh, ahead of Devin Waltz, Oliver Rasmussen, Augustus uh, Toniolo and Matt Sven Ruin. In the second half of the field of those finishes, Marcos Savalev, Sijun Chow, uh, Amin Kara Osman, Jang Jose, uh, Kara Furhand, all inside the top 20. Vladimir Ivanikov, tough race there for Ivanikov. P21, Meryl Peldez in 22nd ahead of Enzo Rudigiro, Alexander Uznim and Philip Planeta. There were retirements, numerous of them, all on the first lap. This race that went under full course yellow. Kenzo Craigie, the biggest of them, also out on lap one. The Caspi Rifle, Shenze Yu, Bruno Frick, Marcel Shebo, Cole Denham and Vanessa Schilke. Uh, Shilka Nates. There is your winner though. Roman Kamyab can be very pleased with that one. So can Ricky Flynn Motorsport. They are going from strength to strength through the course of this weekend, this first round of the year for the FIA Karting European Championship. Let's have a look at some of the highlights then from that race. It was a good start at the front for Jack Eilif. It was all Eyes on Kenzo Craigie, who was the best position driver in the intermediate classification, but disaster on turn one. Big impact as well with uh, the DPK there of Jabo, and as I say, six or seven carts out on the spot. That put the race under a full course yellow whilst the uh, track was cleared. And uh, glad to say as well that all drivers were able to uh, jump out of their carts unassisted. Uh, none of them, unfortunately, were able to get back into the race, but uh, uh, we'll see them again tomorrow in the Super Heats. Race resumed after the yellow flag, the full course yellow on lap number four. And it was all eyes on Jack Isla to see if he could hold off this train of uh, fast teammates, the two RFMs, which had a bit of a moment there. Sebastian Mintz going down the inside on his teammate, actually making contact with the back of Jack Isla. That opened the door. For, uh, for the Kart Republics to come through. Are you trailing? Popping up into third place, Daniel Kelleher as well up to fourth. And uh, the drama wasn't to end there for the course of this one. Moving into the last couple of laps, uh, the Ricky Flynn Motorsport LN chassis uh, drivers were able to pull back through. Kelleher were down the inside on his teammate 
Uh, that was to get up to fourth place. A fourth place, the Irishman would hold. Rocker Coronel was also on the move in that uh, that race. In the end, would be P7 after nine laps. This was the key move, though. Brilliantly done by Roman Kamiab. Not the first time he's made this move this weekend or in preparation uh, here in Valencia. Down the inside of Jack Eilif as Eilif's tyres screamed under the pain there of trying to hold the inside line, but it was Kamiab's lead there on the final lap through the final couple of corners to take a really good victory for the Ricky Flynn Motorsport team. A 1-3 for them with Eilif in the middle there in second place. And then the two Carp Republics as well, fourth and fifth for Kelleher. Incredible. And a very entertaining finish for Groups D and E. That is the last that we'll see of that particular crop of drivers for today. Uh, for the majority of them, we'll see them tomorrow uh, in the Super Heats. For now, though, for the first time today, let's head live down to Anthony Jordan in Park Ferme. He's got our race winner. Thank you very much, Andrew. Yes, down here in Park Ferme with a race winner on that one, Roman Kamiab. Roman, superb race on that one, controlled. And on that last lap, just got the inside line on Jack Eilif. Talk us through the race. Yeah, I mean, the race was going good at the start. I got into P2, nice and easy. Then the slow flag came out. I got a bit closer to Jack. And on the last lap, managed to get the cut back. I'm very happy. First win of the weekend. So, yeah what you need, isn't it? Talk us about the weekend so far. It's been a bit of a hectic one. So many races that you've gone through. Has uh, it's the weekend gone the way that you wanted? Yeah, I mean, yesterday was an up and down day. Quali, very good. Firstly, not amazing, but the last one was decent. Um, today's been a really positive day. Um, we've had a second, a third and a P1. Very happy to end the day like this and go to tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And have you learned a lot ready for tomorrow as well? Tomorrow's a different day, longer races, of course, challenge with the tyres as well. You know, everyone's in the same boat with that one. But again, you're just working hard on this one. What is the plan for tomorrow? Um, Just get a good night's sleep tonight and have loads of energy for tomorrow's laps and stuff. And hopefully get a really good pre-final and set me up for the final. That's what we need, isn't it? We'll wish you the best of luck for that one. But congratulations, first one of the weekend, Roman Kamiya, well done. Thank you very much. Excellent, plenty more races to go. Andrew, we'll head back up to you in the commentary box. Thank you very much, Anthony. Indeed, plenty more racing to go here today. Next out on circuit, it'll be groups D and E once again, but for the OK uh, senior category. Same situation for these drivers. This is their last qualifying heat of the first round for this year's FIA Karting European Championship. The last opportunity they'll have to uh, qualify as well as they can for the super heats tomorrow and a small matter of some championship points to be decided with this round of races as well. There you can see the drivers in the uh, the pre-grid area under the brand new awning here at Carta Duomo International, Lucas Scalero. Uh, Ross Upton at the front of the grid there will shortly, if not already, looking at the time, actually be uh, telling the drivers it's 60 seconds until the green light illuminates at uh, the bottom of pit lane and indicating that it's time to go out onto circuit. There's a close-up view of uh, the drivers in uh, the pre-grid area. You can see Mateus Morgato on the right-hand side of your screen, second cart back, the world champion in 2022. A uh, bit of a surprise to see him on the uh, the entry list here this weekend. And uh, he's been in great form. Starts this race from uh, P4. Uh, Marcus Schilkenas there. There's a close-up of the Lithuanian driver. Starts this one from pole position for CRG. And uh, had a problem in uh, in the third round of heats, but has uh, struck back really strongly. This is another good opportunity for another CRG victory here this weekend. This will be... Joined on the front row of the grid by Anatoly Kovalkin. He's had plenty of speed this weekend. It's just on the right-hand side of uh, your screen. And, uh, he'll be fancying his chance again from that outside position on the front row. He's had a lot of practice starting there in P2. Uh, and uh, has had some, su su some uh, success from there as well. There is uh, Anatoly Kovalkin. And uh, a good opportunity for the Powerlin Motorsport driver to at least get into the top 10, I think, of the intermediate classification here uh, this weekend. Anthony Jordan rejoins me in the box. 
Uh, how's the conditions feeling out there? It's lovely. In fact, I would say it was perfect racing conditions. There's a lovely shot of it there. Bit of a haze in the air. There's a like a really thin layer of cloud up there, which is, I think, actually really helping out. It's keeping that sun from baking us down yeah. here uh, as well. So really, really uh, nice weather conditions. Uh, there you can see what you can expect uh, up next uh, after this race, the uh, junior qualifying heat A versus F. Uh, then it is the uh, OK one. That's where we start to see our drivers go to battle, isn't it? The A versus F junior one. That's where we see Van Langendonk and Schaufler go to battle. The two drivers joint on those points. That's going to be a one to watch, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, it's one I think we're, we're all excited for here at the circuit. There is a close-up of your driver starting this next race from third on the grid. Estonia's uh, Roland uh, Kuklain racing for Ward Racing on the Tony Kart chassis. The uh, satellite team had a good weekend so far, as already mentioned, Morgato. Uh, on the opposite side there, the former world champion starting from P4. But I think, again, we've got to keep an eye on Luna Flusha. She's raced fantastically so far today. Uh, starts there fifth on the grid. Had a great battle with Kuklain in the last one. But it's time. The formation laps are, t are beginning out onto the grid for the final time in the qualifying heats for round one here in Valencia. Here is your grid. It is Marcus Shilkunas and Anatolika Valkin on row number one. Roland Cooklane and Matthias Morgato on row two. Luna Flusha, like you alluded to, been really good at these starts. Starts on the third row with Mies Huben alongside Guillaume Buzar and Wojciech Voda on row four. Jakob Kamenek and Thibaut Ramikas rounding out the top ten on row five. David Cosma and Stepan Antonov on row six. Alpak Soy and Freddie Lloyd on row seven. Jimmy Elias and Guy Albag go from the eighth row of the grid. Joseph Smith and Marius Barryberg start on row nine. Leon Brunner and Gerasim Skulanov start on row 10. Dominic Simek and Louis Castellini start on row 11. Kuba Reisky and Hugo Marti go from row number 12. And then it's Matteo Giacardi and Peter Stiller starting on row 13. It's a 28-cart field here. Once again, in the OK category, it's completed by row 14, Evo Bustera and Jensen Graham. Well, drivers making their way round the track once again, keeping everything up to temperature, sorting themselves out. You can see everyone watching over the track, no more so than this man here, Pasquale Lapoli, our race director this weekend for the FIA Karting Championship. As we get going, ready for this one, you've also been joined by Deputy Race Director Nigel Edwards out on track. Uh, Luis Gonzalez out there as well, our clerk of the course, and Gonzalo Plata, uh, one of our uh, clerks of the course as well. Or actually, I think he's our judge of facts, I think, out there as well uh, on the track. So uh, lots of eyes watching the circuit as we see our drivers getting ready to go. We'll look down there at the cart for Kavalkin by the looks of it. Remember, Kavalkin being deploying those late starts trying to get the run-ups going in someone again i still think it's yet to work out for him but crucial to say I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing when it works out for him yeah it's, it's a difficult thing to do but you've got to you've got to give it to him he keeps uh, keeps trying uh, that tactic intermediate classification situation gomez turney pavan first second third in the ic at the moment not in this race the highest ranked driver in the points at the moment is Matthias morgato fourth in those points, actually equal third with Pavan. And as, uh, as we've stated, starts on the outside on row two. So we could see Mugato top of the order at the end of this race. But uh, I know we've said it before, that very much is one of those things easy said than done. Now, was there one of the Kart Republic uh, uh, Chetela carts heading into pit lane there? Yes, yes, there was. Yes, there was. That's David Cosma Christopher. So a problem for... Uh, the Romanian, are we good for a start on this one? The right lights are green and away we go. On a very good start. There it is. Kavalkin has got the start that he's been looking for from P2 into the lead of the race. Kortschil Kudas uh, napping a little bit, perhaps. Through as well has gone Morgato into second place. Big start. Oh, it's off. There's Luna Flusha. Luna Flusha through the chicane on the first lap is off. Well, there you go into the tire walls there that will be heavy damage to the front of the cart maybe even a nose cone there uh, going straight into a tire wall there so uh, that would be a big big shame she's going to try and get it restarted here it's very difficult to do give it a good push now get it up to some speed 
uh, using that uh, rear throttle just that little bit. No, it's no. not going to get going. Luna Flusha out the race. Out the race. That is not going to be the score that Luna Flusha wanted uh, from the final round of these qualifying heats. End of lap number one then. Anatoly Kavalkin leads the race. Ah, now, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to just cut across you here. There's, okay. a, there's a, the Kart Republic that went into the pit lane. Cosma, he came back out. I think he's just lost a wheel. Oh. Uh, so it's off camera. I'm, just, I'm seeing out the commentary box window. There's yellow flags out again. That's what they're going into now. It's just onto the left-hand side of the shot. He is missing one of his front wheels. Front That's right. probably why he came into the pit lane. They checked it over. They said it was fine. And then ping, it's come off. Well, that, uh, that is not a good moment for David Cosma, Christopher and the team. That is another driver who started in the top half of this one out of the race in the early stages. But uh, we've been talking about it all day. Anatoly Kavalkin has been playing around with how to tackle the second place start. That was absolutely brilliant uh, from the Paralin driver. The question is now, can he fight off? The likes of Mugato, and at least Hooman's had another good start as well. The Dutch driver for Birolart is up three places into third now. And Marcus Silkunas there in fourth. The point situation would be thus. Mugato to the top of the order on 226. Gomez and Turney behind, but still to race. Silkunas up to fourth on 187. Pavan also still to race. <laughs> Down the inside there goes Silkunas. Through past Hooman for third place. So moving up the order, you never know in this, la in this last round. Every position counts out there. A good move from Shilkunas gets him up to third. Robust move, that one, wasn't it? Down the inside, just saying, right, there's space there. I'm going I'm for it. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, Kavalkin then leading the way by three tenths of a second off the track. It's a Ricky Flynn. Wojtek Voda, I it think. It is indeed. Yeah, he's tumbling down the order. Uh, and looks to be in a bit of discomfort. That is a big, big shame. Is there another side pod that's there from another cart? Uh, yes, there is. And you know what? I think it's the 150 Joseph Smith. He lost a side pod earlier in the weekend as well. That's a second time a side pod's come off his cart. Yeah, and there it is. Mechanical problem flag for the victory lane. Uh, karting 150. Thibaut Ramakas has just set the fastest lap of the race. 54.341. That wow. is some really good. Uh, race pace from Thibaut Ramakas is currently in seventh spot and uh, not too far off uh, off the top five uh, but Kavalkin continuing to oh, lead this car. one and that is the 179 that's Barryberg that's Marius Barryberg for DPK out of the race and that's not the first time that the Norwegian hasn't been able to see the chequered flag this weekend has had such promise going into this race uh, into this meeting but it has just not been his weekend. That is such a shame. He is a nice young lad, is uh, Marius Barry Berg, racing for the DPK team. Uh, such a happy chap, and unfortunately, uh, another DNF. Right, there's the wheel uh, in the marshal's hand. That was the uh, the wheel from uh, David Cosma. So, yeah, confirmation that, uh, yeah, the front wheel just pinged off there. Indeed. Uh, 54.335, new fastest lap of the race from Ramakers. Change there for fourth place. Buzar past Huben. That's the CRG moving past the Birol Art. Is there going to be a response from Huben? No, not on this occasion. Uh, indeed. Well, let's see uh, what happens as the race goes on. We are nearing the half race uh, point of this race. And uh, Shilkun is looking strong in this one here. This is Guillaume Buzar leading the next train of drivers. Even Ramakas uh, just losing out there a little bit. Uh, trying to get through, but not able to. Be Jimmy Helias uh, gaining those positions. Mies Huben there as well, splitting the two of them as they go through. Oh, very wide there uh, on the entry, left the door open. Mies Huben might have an opportunity to go down the inside here, but uh, Ramakus tries to do it, makes contact uh, with Mies Huben there. Cook Lane comes through as well. The door slam closed by Ramakus. Very tense moment there. Amazingly, they're still in this. Yeah, I think uh, there was a good bit of driving from Huben just to see. Uh, the, the Ramak is coming down the inside thinking, I've got to give it a little bit of space here. It might get a bit tight through the corner, but at least we'll keep ourselves in the race. There is an invest. Now, that's interesting. That is very interesting. Investigation flag for the 160. Marcus Shilkunas in third place. Uh, indeed, right. Uh, I'm curious about what that was for, actually, now. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to pick our brains about that one. Uh, but here is that battle. Shilkunas right on that rear bumper of Morgato and actually going for the move there just in the bottom of this shot. 
And uh, yeah, confirmation down the inside gets up into second place. Morgato lost so much time there through turn one. He lost so much time. I thought he had a problem for a, for a split second there, but he's got back up to speed now. And Natalia Kavalkin has uh, stretched out the lead. In fact, Anatoly Kavalkin is going to have benefited from that uh, tussle quite well because he pulled a second just in sector one on Morgato. Four tenths on uh, Shilkuna, so I think his lead is going to be over a second uh, at this rate. Five laps to go, including the one that the drivers are on. Moves through the field to report. Hugo Marti uh, has gained 11 so far in this race. He's up to 13th as he uh, fights to try and keep himself in the top 72 and go through to the super heats for tomorrow. Uh, who else has gained? Let's have a look at a replay. This is the this is going to be the move by uh, Shilkunas on Morgato through turn one. Oh, Ooh. now that's why they lost so much time. There was contact. There was contact on the apex of the corner. Here's another angle of it on the reverse. I just clipped that curb, and I think it just it bumped him out wide into the side there of Morgato. And still in the running. What is the gap now? It is indeed a second. Investigation flag for the 150 of Joseph Smith. That's uh, uh, fairly non-news in a way, because Joseph Smith is out of this race. But you can imagine it's for whatever occurred down there at turn 11 with, uh, with Wojciech Voda. Here, coming on to the back straight then, Buzar and Ramakers. And this has been another impressive race for Thibaut Ramakers. We need to keep reminding ourselves that he's only just stepped up to the senior category, of no, course. It, it, exactly, yeah. Really, really strong showing from the young Belgian driver, uh, showing he's got a great future ahead of him here. Valkin, though, looking very strong, controlling the pace. Gap seven tenths of a second between himself and Shulkunas. There, Ramakers now ahead of Guillaume Buzar up into P4. Ramakers looking very strong now. Fastest lap of the race, lap 54 1. Very quick. They're still about uh, a second off what they were doing in qualifying. Obviously, a lot hotter yesterday. You can imagine probably a little bit faster uh, in the conditions. But, uh, and of course, now with uh, all the tyre wear, the, the tyres on uh, their uh, strategic part of their compound, they're really just in the longevity part of it, just going lap after lap after lap. Uh, so not able to set those qualifying times, but still very, very impressive pace that we're seeing from these drivers here. It is a nature that we see here at Valencia. It's a track that, I don't know all tracks rubber in, but this track in particular, it gives a very good base layer yeah. as the weekend goes goes on. We did have a bit of rain here two weeks ago, which, uh, which washed some of that rubber, rubber away, but uh, I'm all very pleased with how, uh, how the tyre compounds are performing here this weekend. So, yeah, having a good chat with the uh, the Maxis Racing Tyres people uh, in the lunch break earlier on. Great reports that they're getting from some of the drivers, really uh, enjoying how uh, long the tyres are lasting as well. Really good endurance uh, with the option and the prime over the course of it as well. And uh, some positive uh, notes about the, you know, the wet tyres from uh, two weeks ago, uh, of course. But that brings that question to the, the finals. The longest race the tyres will do uh, in one sit from brand new and how you push them, because we've not had a final yet on slick tyres, have we? It, it's, it's something one of the drivers was noting to me earlier in the weekend, that, uh, that whilst it was a, uh, a spectacle to see that wet running uh, in preparation for this event, it, they are the best teams in the world, the best drivers in the world. But when we do get to those finals, weather pending, of course, it's going to be fine. Um, <laughs> we are going into the unknown. No, yeah. one, we haven't had a race where the whole field are on brand new, uh, brand new boots, going into race conditions and yeah. how to manage that 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 initial phase of the tyre that we've seen in qualifying. We've yeah. seen, and we've seen how it changes over the first couple of laps. But putting that into a racing scenario is. Very different and very exciting, I think, tomorrow. I think so as well. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. We're on the final lap then. And Anatoly Kavalkin still leads the way from Marcus Shulkunas. Shulkunas has closed in a little bit, down to four tenths of a second. There you can visibly see the gap closing in, but just not close enough for an overtake here. It's going to go the way of Anatoly Kavalkin out to the final corner. Nicely done. He takes it across the line, and that is exactly what Kavalkin needed. Certainly helping him out, bumping him up to sixth in the intermediate classifications. A very strong running there. Couldn't do any better than that. Really good stuff from Anatoly Kavalkin. As you say, Anthony, that puts him in a strong position in the intermediate classification. Uh, still drivers left to run, of course. The likes of uh, Lewis Werrell. Ike Minsk Cantor will be looking to 
and get past Kovalkin's score of 180 there, but uh, he's got a good position there. That's uh, going to give him a decent slot on the grid for those super heats, or for the super heat that uh, we'll see Kovalkin in tomorrow. Drivers coming in to, uh, to Park Ferme in a few moments' time. Uh, good moves in that race up the order. Thibaut Ramek has gained six in that race. Hugo Marty up 12. Uh, Jensen Graham as well uh, can finish this phase of the weekend with a good result up 10 to, uh, to 18. So let's have a look at the full results uh, from the provisional standings there for groups D and E as they culminated their qualifying heats. Kavalkin wins by 0.3 of a second ahead of Shilkunas. Mogato uh, third and takes the lead in the intermediate classification. 223 points from a possible 250 for the former world champion. Thibaut Ramakas in fourth. Uh, fifth for Guillaume Buzar. Mies Huben, fast start, faded a little bit in the second half, finished P6. Roland Kaklein in seventh ahead of Jimmy Elias, Stepan Antonov and Leo uh, Leon Bruner in the top 10. Jakob Kamenik in 11th place ahead of Hugo Marty 12th. Uh, Freddie Lloyd, Guy Albag and Alp Axoy in the top 15. 16th for Louis Castellini, up six places uh, in that one, ahead of Matteo Giacardi, up eight. Jensen Graham, as mentioned, up ten in that one to 18th. Top 20 completed by Kuba Reisky and Gerasim Skulanov. Some of the highlights then. Well, we don't often see drivers from P2 get the lead through this uh, first turn here in Valencia, but that was absolutely how to do it from Anatoly Kavalkin. Did not look back. A bit of a moment there. Kuklain uh, running through the chicane, and it was Luna Flusha who uh, was out on the spot of that one, would have a go. Uh, the one mandatory or uh, allowed go at getting the cart going again, but it wasn't successful. And that was Luna Flusha out of the race. Middle phase, robust move there from the 160 of Marcus Silkunas. Uh, out of the race, and sec at least second DNF of the weekend for Wojciech Voda. Marius Barryberg likewise didn't see the end of the race. Damage to the front left of his DPK racing machine. Side by side as well between uh, the 153 coming through the order. That was Lee Huben after that uh, quick start. Bit of a go from Thibaut Ramakers. Didn't quite pull that one off on Lee Huben. Uh, Kuklain nearly had an opportunity to get through on Ramakers as well, but uh, Ramakers shut the door. Uh, moment here between Shilkunas and Morgato through turn one on the seventh lap of the race. Shilkunas up on the curb, then a bit of contact pod, uh, side pod to side pod between uh, the Lithuanian and the Brazilian. In the end, it would be Shilkunas taking second from Morgato. Ramakas fought back, eventually did find a way past uh, Huben and Guillaume Buzar to take fourth place, but no one was taking the 50 points away from Anatoly Kavalkin. Uh, Kavalkin moves up to sixth place uh, in, the, uh, in the points at the moment. Say Borgato still has the lead. Let's head down to Park Ferme. Anthony Jordan about the thoughts of the drivers in that last race. Thank you very much, Andrew. Yes, indeed, I'm here with our race winner, that one, Anatoly Gavalkin. Uh, Anatoly, great little race for you there. Results are coming in for you now. It's been a, a, an up and down weekend, but from your point of view, how has it all felt? Um, yeah, I'm really happy to be first and last hit of the day for me. I think it's gonna help me in the standings. And um, pretty all the hits were not bad. It was P5, P6, P2, P1. But only one hit I've got disqualified for a bad maneuver. And I think that was my fault. So next time I'm not gonna do this. Even despite those results, you are sixth in the intermediate classification. So you're in a good spot there. You're, you're quite high up in the order. Uh, do you feel like tomorrow could be a, a, a much better day for you? Um, yeah, I think it will be because uh, we're uh, ready for tomorrow. We have a good uh, car, we have good speed, and uh, I hope I'm gonna be top ten after staying, after all the hits. The track is looking super rubbered in now. How is it feeling out there? Is it still pretty grippy? I don't think so. It's like more sliding than grip. I think yeah. I think. Tomorrow is going to be a lot of grip because of the new tires, yeah. yeah. Well, let's see how that goes. For yourself uh, today, nice little win there, some good results. Let's see what you can do tomorrow. Best of luck. Yeah, thanks.
Excellent stuff there for Anatoly Kovalkin coming away with a race win. Again, plenty more races to go. Andrew, let's head back up to the Coverage Rocks with you. Thank you very much, Anthony. Indeed, more racing to come here in Valencia next out on circuit. And it's the last qualifying heat of the weekend uh, of the day uh, before the superheats tomorrow for groups A and F in OK Junior. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a big one. We have two drivers in the OK Junior category who from the first four races uh, here to this weekend, starting yesterday and continuing through today, who are unbeaten, Dries van Langendonk and Nicholas Schaufler. And they are both in this next race and they both share the front row uh, for this one. Dries van Langendonk has the inside line from pole position. Uh, but as we've just seen in the previous race, Nicholas Schaufler starting there second on the grid. You can do it if you get the timing right. You can sweep round the outside and uh, lead here through this first corner, this long right-hander uh, here at Cartodromo International, uh, Lucas Guerrero. They're, of course, not the only drivers on this grid, 33 of them uh, with one more opportunity to score points ahead of the superheats tomorrow. The cutoff will be sev the top 72, of course, in that intermediate classification to form two grids of 36. Uh, so that does mean uh, that around a quarter of the entry uh, will go through this phase of the round. Let's have a look then as the drivers head out for their formation lap at the full grid for OK Junior qualifying heat groups A versus F on pole position. Dries van Langendonk for Forza Racing alongside him on the front row is the only other unbeaten driver so far this weekend. Austria's Nicholas Schaufler racing for DPK Racing. Uh, on the second row of the grid, Alex Malota and Noah Baglin. Both of them have had uh, mixed weekends so far in a racing capacity. Boris Leiden has started every single race he's competed in so far this week very quickly. Starts on the third row of the grid, is joined by Francis Thomas Pradier. Henry Domain and Jagrat Detroya starts on row number four. Remek Samchik and Jamateo Russo start on row five. Bogdan Cosma Christopher and Clara Kowalczyk can be found on the sixth row of the grid. Theo Battisti and Florentine Hatima on row seven. On row eight, it's Luke Corder and Alexander Kortanov. Alex Martinez and Kanesh Grau go from row nine. William Kalija and Nikita Nikashov go from row 10. Uh, Benjamin Manak and Tobias Sajendi go from row 11 with Scott Marsh and Archie Lovett rounding out the top 24 on row 12. Max Endicott and Sky Parker on row 13. Son Z and David Minchuna go from row 14, Maria Neto and Amir Sabrov on row 15. Alex Brunner, uh, Mariano Lopez and Francois Kerdel are the last drivers on the last two rows of the grid. 33 carts out on track. Like you were saying there, this is the one. Van Langendonk, Nicholas Schaufler, both of them 200 points. This is a key one. This is, this is more than a key one, I feel. Yep. This, this is uh, super heat pole position on the line uh, it's championship points on the line yeah and uh, you know it, it's the nature of the scoring system you know it, this could be the decider you never know when we get when we look back at this in that later in the summer uh, this could be a moment that all the drivers competing for this championship look back to uh, it is actually a three-way tie for uh, for the intermediate classification we should know Roman Kamyab uh, has also got 200 points but you would think that at least uh, well, both of these drivers would score points of some form in this one. Uh, but we saw with Kenzo Craigie, drama through the first corner in the previous race for OK Junior. A lot can happen across the course of the next nine laps. Nearly 13 kilometres of this Cartodromo International Lucas Guerrero circuit to decide who's going to be on pole position in superheats tomorrow for OK Junior. The lights are green. Away we go. Good start for both of the front row sitters. Is there a lane on the inside for Alex Malota? No, there isn't. Down into turn one. Dries van Langendonk holds the lead, but it's a good start for Noah Baglin as well. Challenging for second place and taking it. Great start for the Britain there in the Cart Republic. Yes, it is indeed. Schaufler on the back foot now down into third place. We'll have to deal with Malota alongside him now. Ooh, a little look to the inside there. Looked like uh, 
Uh, Schaufler is going to go for a move on Baglin there. Baglin keeping that door firmly closed, going down into the breaking zone of turn 11. Now Key overtaking opportunity, and Baglin goes defensive. Covers off an attack there from Schaufler, but down the inside, Schaufler takes it. Had to do that. He ha absolutely had to do that. Get back into second place, take the initiative, and try and close Dries van Langendonk down. Imagine for Dries van Langendonk, he is going to push on those tyres, those worn tyres, take a bit more out of them if it means securing uh, pole position for tomorrow's super heats and those extra championship points down the inside Baglin responding retakes second place away from Schaufler Meanwhile, there is a warning flag for the 2-2-2 of Francois Cadal. There is indeed well This is playing into the hands very nicely of Drizan Langendonk with uh, Baglin trying to hold on to second place here is just causing Schaufler to lose so much time uh, to Drisan Langendonk. His lead is uh, breaking away and there's carts off in the background. There's dust being kicked up. Who's gone off the circuit there? It's, oh, it's, uh, it's the guy, it's, it's the Detroyer. It it's, is. It's, it's, it's oh. the third time this weekend for Jack Rat Detroyer. He is that. out. He's not going to see the checkered flag. And that is a big, big problem now in his hopes for the intermediate classification. Honestly, I think that is weekend over. I don't think he'll make the super heats with that. That is an absolute nightmare. Absolute nightmare for the Indian driver. He's had such bad luck after a fantastic qualifying as well. Yeah, started this one on the fourth row of the grid. As you say, Anthony, 100 drivers started the round. Only 72 of them will be in the super heats tomorrow. So do the maths. That's more than a quarter of the entry uh, will be uh, ending things here uh, for the first round of the European Championship season. Meanwhile, second and third place. What is their pace relative to the leader like? Well, comparable, but not closing. All of them through the first sector on a 14.4. Uh, a tenth here, a tenth there across the whole lap. Said that, Schaufler has just gone purple through sector number one until Boris Lysen went through uh, the same sector even quicker. So uh, it's not completely done yet for Baglin and Schaufler, but you imagine you've got to find not a lot of pace, but a bit of pace to start clawing away at what is now an eight and a half tenth gap for Dries van Langendonk. Yes, I think so. But again, we'll just keep an eye on the uh, momentum of these drivers. You know, Baglin uh, has got probably a little bit fresher tyres. Remember, he had one race where he was out at turn one. So again, he would have had uh, an extra... Well, it had one race less than everyone else. So, again, good results here, but he's left the door open. And Schaufler goes through. Nicholas Schaufler now with an opportunity to close up to Van Langendonk. Big second uh, sector and third sector feel this for Nicholas Schaufler. He can show that he's got the speed to start closing in on Dries van Langendonk. He has a chance here. But I think this is where there will potentially be a difference for Dries van Langendonk. We have seen him quite happy for drivers to close into him, to be about three, four tenths behind. And then he just manages the tyres and, and keeps that gap. I don't think he's going to want to do that with this one because there's so much riding on the line here for this particular race. He wants to keep that gap more at seven, eight tenths, not give Nicholas Schaufer a hope of getting down the inside, go for the lead of this race. Exactly. Well, we should see what happens. Uh, half race point of this race. Baglin still there in third place. Tom Schroeder now fastest lap of the race is looking quick. Thought he was going to go for the move there through turn seven. Thought against it just at that last second. Making their way down the infield straight now. Tom Schroeder, the driver from France, looking very, very strong with the victory lane karting team here this weekend. He's had some uh, tough moments as well this weekend. Everyone has. There have been ups and downs all the way through the paddock. But either though, keeping it nice and strong and in control. Uh, replay here. What happened here then? This is at turn 11. Big move down the inside. Oh, bit of a bump and squeeze. And uh, very robust moves going on here. Four wide. Wow, look at that. And that's through turn 14. That's, that's right. incredible. It's uh, Detroit in the middle of all of that. I thought that was going to be uh, how uh, Detroit ended up out of this race. Yeah. But uh, that occasion continued on through. It was Clara Kowalczyk on the inside as well. So that's the battle for P10. And they're four wide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Some really good moves uh, up through the order in this one. And uh, I think that's particularly good because we've only had one retirement as well in this one. David Mintuna up 11. Maria Neto again up 11 spots. Uh, Scott Marsh has gained 12. Is in, well, nearly into the top 10 now. And uh, Benjamin Maniak as well. Uh, is in such good form at the moment for Biral Artis. Gained eight places so far in this race. He's up to 13th. 
And just to make matters even worse, uh, on the side of the road is Jagrat De Troya and is now under investigation by the students. Yeah, indeed. Well, back on the start-finish line. We're on lap seven of nine now. Schaufler is closing in. The gap's half a second. I'm going to wait to see how quick he's closed up again in the next sector. Is he closing in at a quick enough rate that he could battle for the lead here? Yes, he is closing in. It was only uh, five, um, five hundredths of a second he closed in by. So uh, it's close, but I reckon it's going to be a tight one. Sector two, last time around, Nicholas Schaufler was particularly strong. Let's see what uh, he's doing. Oh, he is again. Oh. He's really closed in. This is a very good... Uh, middle phase or latter middle phase of the race from Nicholas Schaufler. Now, is Dries van Langendonk able to control this? We have seen this scenario before with other drivers and he's been able to hold and control the lead for the rest of these nine lap heats. This is a different factor though. This is the driver behind him who can wrestle away P1 in the points in uh, the only driver at the moment who can wrestle P1 away from him and he's right there now as Schaufler. 0.165 the gap last time around. In other words, it's less than a car length down the inside. Goes Schaufler, he's done it. He's taken the lead. Surprising Dries van Langendonk there through turn number five and into six. And that is a big moment here in Valencia. Absolutely vital move there for Nicholas Schaufler. He needed that to take the lead of the intermediate classification. And Baglin goes down the inside as well. Van Langendonk is fading here. With the last two laps remaining of this race, he's down into third place now. He is losing his points advantage now. He is losing, starting on pole position for Superheat 1 tomorrow. This is a disaster. Baglin goes defensive. Van Langendonk's being pushed into the back. And Thomas Bredeer is going to have a chance here, maybe down in towards turn number one. And it Look could, at this. It could even open things for uh, other drivers in the next race. Christian Costoya in particular. If Dries van Langendonk loses more positions here, he just seems to have no push off the corner. He's really struggling out there. Down the inside is Bredeer. Padilla takes third. It could be fourth now. Here comes Lysen. Van Langendonk is losing points everywhere here. Meanwhile, Nicholas Schaufler, 1.4 seconds in the lead, is on his way to being top after Saturday. Well, this has been a superb one. I didn't think there was going to be enough time as again Boris Lysen. Uh, and I think that's uh, Jean-Tierre Rousseau going uh, wheel to wheel there. But actually, no, tell a lie. It's Pradier who's uh, he's battling away with. Uh, it looks like Van Langendonk's got back up into third now again, so that's helped him out. Benjamin Mannix under investigation. I think he went off the track with uh, Scott Marsh, but the checker flag is going to come out. It's going to come to this man here, Nicholas Schaufler, the Austrian mouse. He will start on pole position tomorrow for Superheat 1. Maximum points. Five out of five wins. And what a way to do it as well. He reeled Driesman Langendonk in and pounced for the lead and set his uh, rival here this weekend back in the order. Nine laps completed. There is your winner, 250 points. He cannot be beaten by anyone in the remaining OK Junior groups yet to run. Noah Baglin, second. One retirement in the five races, but every single other race has been second place on the road for Noah Baglin. Dries van Langendonk, third, does move up to second place in uh, in the points of course on 241 but there is uh no that means he's secured second place so it that's uh, those two moves right at the end means that Dries van Langendonk by our early calculations will be uh the second super heat pole sitter as well that's a key couple of points just pulls him beyond uh, Christian Costoya who's still to run let's have a look at the provisional result then in a very important qualifying heat to conclude things for groups A and F. Nicholas Schaufler won the battle of the undefeated drivers and remains unbeaten here this weekend in OK Junior. Noah Baglin second, Dries van Langendonk fights back to take third. Boris Leiden in fourth ahead of Thomas Pradier. Good drive from Gian Matteo Rousseau up to sixth place, gained four in that. Alex Malota, another top 10 ahead of Bogdan Cosma Christopher. Uh, Florentine Hatimer and uh, Clara Kowalczyk as well. Great start from the Ricky Flynn Motorsport driver in another top 10 indeed. Uh, Theo Battisti in 11th. Big moves from Archie Lovett up 12 in that one, uh, but uh, not quite as good as up as 15 uh, by David Minshuna. Uh, 12th and 13th respectively for those two. Kanish Grau up 4 to 14th. Scott Marsh 
uh, faded a bit in the second half, uh, finishes P15. Another great drive from Maria Neto from the back, gaining 13 spots, finishes P16. Uh, also in the top 20, Nikita Nikishov, Alexander Kortanov, Benjamin Maniak and Alex Martinez. Sky Parker 21st, ahead of Francois Cadal. Max Endicott, Mariano Lopez and Henry Domain in the top 25. Not a good result there for Domain. Let's have a look at some of the highlights then. You knew that Dries van Langendonk was going to have to defend from Nicholas Schaufler into turn one. Did so and crucially held on to the lead. That was the first part of, uh, of the difficult job out there done uh, early uh, elsewhere on lap one. This was uh, the moment with Detroit, uh, Kowalczyk and others going through uh, four wide, sorry. Uh, through turn number 12 and 13. They all managed to continue on at that stage of the race. Unfortunately for Detroit, uh, the retirement would be on the way later on in the race. No Baglin in the early stages of that race was a thorn in the side of Nicholas Schaufler and taking second place away from him at that point. It was looking all good for Dries van Langendonk there on lap two was the retirement of Detroit, his third retirement of the weekend, making things at least from our perspective, very difficult to see how the Indian driver will be in the top 72 for the Super Heats tomorrow, despite a strong race pace and good qualification. This was the key move, though. Schaufler reeled Van Langendonk back in and then pounced before one of the main overtaking spots, went for it through turn five into six. And uh, Dries van Langenhoek, unfortunately, just didn't have anything to respond with. In fact, lost more positions. Noah Baglin got down the inside to turn 11 on his way to a fourth second place of the weekend. Thomas Pradier uh, went through as well. Uh, Boris Leisen, and at this stage, it really wasn't looking good at all for Dries van Langenhoek. Even his second place in the intermediate classification was looking under threat uh, from drivers still to race. But... A bit of an opening for Dries van Langendonk. The fight between Lysen and Pradier there opened the lane on the inside up for the Belgian to retake third place. And at least he retakes second place and locks that in in the intermediate classification. Uh, no other driver per our understanding can overtake that score. But for Nicholas Schaufler, 250 points from a possible 250 points. You could not ask any more than that. Let's hear from our race winner with Anthony Jordan, who's down in Park Furbank. Thank you very much, Andrew, with our race winner, Nicholas Schaufler. Nicholas, what a race that was. I thought it wasn't going to go your way. You were battling with Noah Baglin. Dries van Langendonk was driving away. What were you thinking at that point in the early stages of the race? I mean, in the early stage, I knew that I had to wait a bit because uh, we had a low tire pressure. But then Noah pulled me a bit, and after the third lap, I decided to overtake him. And then I just pulled away, trying to catch Dries, which worked in the end. Uh, it was also a really good race from Dries, because he was really fast. But the team made a really well job, and the chassis works well. But I think tomorrow is going to be a long day, and we will see what happened. It is going to be a long day. And uh, for us, that was probably the longest race for us because we were thinking, oh, Van Langendonk, you, you're a maximum points. Who's going to take the win? And just on those uh, last few laps, how vital was getting that overtake on Dries Van Langendonk? How important was that to get it right? I think it was really important overtake also for the championship points because the championship is really long. But Dries made a little mistake. But then in the end, Noah overtook him too. So I had like a big gap and that's the race practically. Well, congratulations. Well done. You'll start on pole position tomorrow. Best of luck. Thank you. Excellent stuff there. Well done to Nicholas Schaltzler. The carts have started. Andrew, back over to you. Thank you very much, Anthony. Yes, indeed. Groups A and F for the OK category heading out on circuit four. Uh, their final heat of the qualifying heats phase. Another key race, another race that could decide who starts on uh, pole position for the first super heat tomorrow in this category. Here is your grid, Go uh, Gabriel Gomez, second in the points at the moment, but uh, could take uh, victory here in this one and leave his score 
unbeatable by uh, anyone in the final race of the day. Starts on pole position, has got Vivek Canthan, who's been a revelation so far this weekend, starting uh, for Parallel Motorsport on the outside of the front row, but uh, won in his previous race. Davide Bataro and Ian Eichmann start on row two. Finn McLaughlin and uh, Vagar Clemerson start on row three. David Walter and Xavier Avramidis start on row four. Noah Montero and Dmitry Matviev start on row five. Kasper Henriksen and Hugo Radjamet start on the sixth row of the grid. Uh, Yindrik Peschel and Tom Dussol start in the midfield there on row seven. Second half of the grid looks like this. Uh, Thomas Kinsey and Lufway San Butler start on row eight. Yukapo and Murillo the Rocker start on row nine. Kian Farden and Lewis Francis complete the top 20 on row 10. Philip Karras and Kai Rilla start on row 11. Oscar Repetto and Patrick Ogradovchik start on row 12. Alphonse Nietzsche and Stylianos Kolovos start on row 13. Nico Lachnalate, retired from his previous race, starts this one from row 14, is joined by Andy Consani. And the 29 runners would be formed up by Elliot uh, Kaczynski, but Kaczynski does not take the start here, so it will be 28 runners here for 11 laps of the Cartodromo Internacional. Uh, Lucas Guerrero there out at turn 12 is Nigel Edwards, deputy race director here this weekend for the first round of the FIA Karting European Championships. And for Gabriel Gomez, it's his familiar territory. He was the top driver in the intermediate classification here last year for the first round of the 2023 edition of the European Championship. If he wins this race, he moves past Mugato's score of 2-2-3 and there would be nobody else able to beat that. But if he finishes off of first place, it's an opportunity for Joe Turney in particular to strike back through. That's all still to come. We're going to focus here on the race four groups A and F into the tram lines. Are we ready to go? The answer is no. We're going to go round again for another formation lap. Anthony Jordan rejoins me in the commentary box. It, it sounds so simple. Win the race. Get P1 for the superheat, but if this sport has taught us anything over the years, it's not going to be that simple. No, karting is not a simple sport, ladies and gentlemen. It may look it, uh, you just think, well, it's just four wheels, a uh, steering wheel, uh, uh, two pedals and off you go. But uh, no, it's, it's quite the opposite. There's uh, lots of variables to think about. Well, uh, in this one, there is uh, 28 variables to think about uh, with the amount of drivers out there. Uh, you know, you have no idea what the drivers around you are going to do. Uh, you know, you've got no idea what the cart's going to do again. You know, they're, they're only two strokes, you know, two strokes are renowned for not being the most reliable things. But I've got to say, uh, the OKs, uh, they are a, a fantastic engine, a fantastic package uh, that mm. you can use. Uh, but uh, certainly they've proved all the way throughout this weekend to be super, super reliable. So, uh, you know, really, uh, really good to see. Uh, but just a case of it, you know, just so many variables. You, you just can't say for certain who's going to win it. It's just one of those things. Really slowing the pack now. Gomez controlling this one. Canton, who took a race win earlier on, again, looking uh, very, very strong. Can he maintain that one? If he does get it, like you say, puts it into Joe Turney's side of the court, could potentially come away with starting on pole here. That'd be impressive for him. Past the, uh, the red line then to indicate no more overtaking uh, within those columns second time let's see if we are good for a start here 11 laps on the board then last race in the qualifying heats for round one here in valencia are we good for a start no, no. we're gonna go around again another false start well one more and uh yeah they're gonna be in trouble it's re-education time mm, with a clipboard yeah. uh so uh yes uh, that's not what they want to see. They'll go around again, hopefully third time's a charm. And uh, again, is this a tactical side of things? I'm not too sure. It, it's really a fine line, I, I think, of getting it right, isn't it? Indeed. Uh, other drivers with opportunities in this race, well positioned in the points right now. Uh, Ian Eichmann jumps out. Uh, ninth place at the moment. He's only one point ahead of Vivek Canthan, so in effect, those two drivers on the outside uh, of the first two rows, whichever one of those finishes high up uh, ab above the other is going to gain positions in the IC uh, 
over the other. So that's going to be a battle to keep an eye on alongside everything else that's going to be going on in this race. On to the back straight again. Gomez slowing the pace down to a near crawl. A little bit of communication with Davide Pataro, his teammate starting in uh, P3. Not the first time that we've seen that today. This is it then. Third attempt. Are we going to be good for a start this time? Third time's a charm, one would hope. Canton lines up alongside as they come towards the red line. Uh, there you're seeing uh, Gonzalo Planta just saying to the drivers, like, what are you doing? Get in formation. You should be two by two right now. You're not. Get in formation. Start to close up. That's exactly what he's trying to tell the drivers. Hopefully the message comes across. Right, here we go then. Back into the tram lines. Is it third time's a charm then for OK qualifying heat A versus F? No, no, it's not. That is a third false start. And something tells me that they might be getting a bit of a telling off now. Yes, there it is, uh, I think. Is that confirmation? No, I'm not going to confirm it. Uh, it showed up on our screen there. It's false start. But are they going to be stopped now? Are they going to be stopped and getting a telling off? Because what is the cause of this formation not going? Uh, because from our angles, it looks OK. Is it the back of the grid? Is it the front of the grid? We personally don't know in the commentary box. Our race directors do know. Actually, I might put my intel on in my ears. There is uh, Pasquale Lupoli on the uh, on the gantry. The race officials will be in communication with each other. Uh, Nigel Edwards on the far side of the circuit through uh, turn 12. Uh, the drivers are going by Nigel Edwards. Uh, so it's not Nigel's clipboard coming out quite uh, at this precise moment. This is the penultimate uh, heat for the OK category. Junior category uh, B versus C race following up after this. And then, of course, the B versus C race for, uh, for the OK uh, category still to run. And uh, we wait to see what's going to happen here as uh, the drivers once again come through turn 15 and then quickly through turn 16. It's double apex right-hander before we get to the final chicane. This is the moment of truth, Anthony, as to uh, whether we're going to have another go at this one or whether uh, we're going to have a little bit of a discussion. Well, let's see. I mean, again, this time, I mean, it, it, it looks OK. But again, that's only from our perspective here. We can't see the entire grid right now. We can there. And it looks good. Into the tram lines. Lights go green. Here we go. Down in towards turn number one. Great start then from Gomez. Holds on to the lead. Keep an eye on Canton. He's there in second place. He's slotted in. That's a great start from the outside row from row one. Brilliant getaway. Pataro there in third place. Eichmann's up to fourth there. McLaughlin in P5. Yeah, that's potentially a big problem for the CRGs. They've done so well so far uh, today and yesterday to get a 1 2 scenario off the start. But for this time, Vivek Canton in the power and has managed to slot himself in between Gomez and Bataro. That could be a very telling moment for this race. Gomez holds the lead into turn 11. Bataro's trying to fight back. Well, that's how you respond. But here comes Canton once again on the inside. This is key for the early stages. Canton wrestles second place back in here. Ian Eichmanns has uh, had a good start, is there in fourth place. Canton knows he's got to hold this. He's got to hold P2. And in fact, Pataro has been overtaken by Ian Eichmanns. Finn McLaughlin's now down the inside. You've got to give it to Vivek Canton. That was hard defence, but key. He had to keep himself ahead of Pataro because you can imagine for the CRGs with what's on, on the line, there would have been a bit of team play in there. 100% and again well Canton's just left the door open a little bit there but crucially has the defensive line keeps Eichmann's back McLaughlin comes through now keep an eye David Walter trying to get past as well not able to get that cart down the inside into the braking zone now Volta goes wheel to wheel with Eichmann's. Eichmann's again blocks the charge and here comes Bataro again to the inside not able to Volta goes through, Eichmann's down another one. It's one of those, you can tell that this is the last... Whoa, oh, it's oh, out dear. there. Three drivers, two Sonys uh, at least involved. This is going to be Andy Consani. That is going to be the end of Consani's That's miserable uh, weekend. Kai Rillers and as you say, Keenan Farden all out of this race. Yeah, again, Keenan Farden's not had his uh, best introduction there to the Sony team. Uh, this weekend, McLaughlin down the inside, gets into second place, gets past Vivek Canthan, 
and this may also affect the intermediate classifications just that little bit. Cantham there, third at the moment, but that might change. He might drop down a couple here uh, if McLaughlin can break away as well. Now, McLaughlin might have a chance to benefit uh, Joe Turney here uh, in his, Joe Turney's next race that he'll be coming up. If he can get past Gomez, he will certainly help him out. He's going to have to fight really hard, though, because the gap is over 1.2 seconds right now. Apologies, it wasn't uh, Kai Rillard's involved. Uh, the third cart involved was, of course, Hugo Radramat. So the two, uh, the two Sodis and the Viha involved there. There is your race leader, Gabriel Gomez, currently in a position that would give him pole position for Superheat number one tomorrow and the first haul of championship points. As he achieved 12 months ago here in Valencia, it would be move his score to 244. The closest challenger still to race would be Joe Turney, who has 191. So the best that Turney can do is 241, of course. Fastest lap of the race, still in the early stages. Ian Eichmann's there in fourth place. Good pace at the moment for the Birrell Arts. Can he find a way past Vivek Canthan there in third? Well, that's the ultimate question. Canthan uh, doing his level best to try and stay in that position. Look at the body language from McLaughlin. Oh, he's 100% going to try and go for Gomez here. Look how much he's hunkered down in that cart trying to drive away. This is going to be a close race at the end of this one. The gap. Oh, it's just eking down a little bit there, but we're really early stages. Well, you've got to remember as well that Finn McLaughlin uh, had an early retirement in yes. uh, one of his previous races, so probably he's got some pretty Fresh. good tyres at this Fresh stage. Tires. But because of the, the low score in that one, has kind of got to just throw caution to the wind right now mm -hmm. because you know the six points difference between second and first in one of these races for McLaughlin could be the difference between making the final on Sunday or not. We know he's got speed around this circuit. His preparations have been fantastic for the opening round of the European Championship. Oh, down the inside. David Walter on Ian Eichmann's. That's going to open the door for Batara to get both of them. Bold move down the inside through 11, 12 and 13, but it didn't quite work out that time. Certainly didn't. Uh, here's the gap. It's down to exactly one second now between McLaughlin and Gomez as they go through in towards turn number one. It's in coming down even more. He's gained three places so far, has McLaughlin. Eyes on this battle here. Volta, Matviev, Eichmanns. Matviev uh, splitting the two of them apart now uh, as they head down in towards turn number three, looking very strong now. We've not seen much of Matviev as uh, he leaves the door open there. Eichmanns just squeezing back through in the recovery drive now. It's been, it has been a bit of a strange weekend, isn't it? We've seen a big names just been falling down the order just that little bit, haven't we? Uh, we, we have indeed, and I, th and I think uh, the unknowns have given the drivers some uncertainty of perhaps when to push or, or when to take those risks. So they're, they're just keeping themselves, they're keeping something in reserve, I think, which is, uh, which is an understandable decision at this stage. I think when we get to the super heats tomorrow, that's when we'll really start to see the drivers going, right, enough of, the, of being conservative out there. We've got to go for this now and uh, uh, do it now or never. We'll wait for a Bell Darsh and Tom uh, in around a month's time. There is Finn McLaughlin. What is the pace like? A 54.253 last time around. That was two tenths quicker than Gomez. So at that rate, with the number of laps to go, he is going to catch the race leader. Yep, certainly is. This is going to be an interesting one now. Stay tuned for this one. Gomez versus McLaughlin as they get themselves sorted out here. Down into towards turn number 11. Just again, look at the different driving styles. Look at the different racing lines between these two drivers. Again, like we are saying, McLaughlin, uh, you know, he's got the slightly fresher tyres after that retirement he had earlier on, early stages. So again, he's just pushing that little bit harder, that little bit further all the way throughout. Can he maintain it? The gap down to seven tenths of a second. This is going to be a good one. It's coming down even more now. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. But Gabriel Gomez, he is the master around this place of tyre management. We saw that last year as he stormed to that big haul of points in the intermediate classification stage and the superheats, arguably. It was one of its, his highlights of the season. Uh, through that phase. He didn't take the round win on that particular occasion. He finished fourth in the final, but he is very, very hard to beat uh, in this format. Into turn 11 once more. The gap is down to under seven tenths of a second right now. It's hundredths that McLaughlin is taking out of Gomez right now. I think with the laps ticking on by, it needs to increase. But if he can get into the slipstream as well, 
especially through sector three at the end of the, the lap here and through down into turn one. That could be turbocharged McLaughlin's uh, inroads here. Let's see what the gap is now. Well, it's down to 0.5. That was a really good third sector for the Irishman. Certainly was a gap in coming down each and every corner. McLaughlin on an absolute charge here. Looking so, so strong, using all the Oof. track and a little bit more, kicking up a little bit of dust on the exit there. How hard is McLaughlin pushing right now? This is brilliant stuff. Gomez is going to have to really think about these last few laps of this race. Yeah, McLaughlin lost a little bit of time there. He lost half a, half a tenth on Gomez. Got to keep, uh, keep himself under control here through turn 14 once again. He's taking a bit more time out of the leader through the second sector. Now he can start to get in the slipstream of the 102 through the chicane. Look how much curb the BDK racing car is being punished to there. Lead is less than half a second, but only two laps to go. Right now, Gabriel Gomez just is doing enough. Certainly is. Watch them again through this infield section now, the difficult racing lines. No dust being kicked up this time around. Oh, gap's gone up a little bit again through the next timing, babe. Oh, I reckon McLaughlin's pushed them a little bit too hard now. He's trying so hard to close up. Did he push just that little bit too hard, or has he got it left in him to really close this gap back in towards turn 11? Gomez, McLaughlin, nothing between them. What's the next beam going to be? It's uh, five tenths of a second. Oh, it's up to six tenths. I think McLaughlin's given up on the charge here. It's not going to happen. The, the the rear axle of McLaughlin was sliding all yeah. over the place in turn 11. He just can't push off the corners anymore. You might have got those rears a little bit too warm right now. Gabriel Gomez leads. It's gone out to three quarters of a second. He knows if he completes this lap in this position, he's got pole position for the superheats tomorrow. Certainly, and I think he's remembering as well that, oh, wait, I've got to use these tyres tomorrow as well yep. for the superheats. So, uh, again, that's uh, probably just came into his mind uh, a little bit there. Well, Gomez now uncontested. The charge from McLaughlin has started to fade away now uh, as he stays in P2. Canton's still there in third place from David Walter. Uh, there's not been really any big movers in this one. The biggest mover, seven places. Louis Francis for Cut Republic has had a good old race in that mid pack. Uh, there is a few other small movers as well in the field. But for this man here, Gabriel Gomez. Well, it's going to be flag to flag here and a superb round of qualifying heats. Only one second place. The rest is wins across the line. It's Gabriel Gomez for Brazil. He takes it and he will start on pole position for tomorrow's Super Heat 1. Really, really good stuff yet again from Gabriel Gomez. Bouncing back from the disappointment of the previous round of heats. He had things under his own control he knew he had his own destiny uh, in the palm of his hands and he's delivered again here at Valencia takes the race win from Finn McLaughlin by a second Vivek Canton strong again goes up to third place in the points right now with that third place uh, in his final heat but can he hold on to it the, the drivers in that last race uh, of the day that uh, will be looking to beat a score of 199. David Walter, great drive once again from the Dane in the Tony card to finish P4 ahead of Davide Bataro for CRG uh, in fifth place. A good fight from Davide Bataro. I do wonder with that uh, disruption in the, uh, the battle for second place, how key that was to allow Gabriel Gomez to get that lead and do his classic style of controlling these races from the front. There is your provisional result uh, for the qualifying heat between groups A and F. Gomez from McLaughlin by a second. Canton third, Walter in fourth ahead of the tire. That's the top five. And Eichmann's uh, goes up to fifth place in the points with that result uh, in sixth. Let's have a look at some of the highlights then. First job for Gabriel Gomez, hold on to the lead. And he did that uh, with relative ease. Bataro trying to fight into second place to form the CRG uh, train, but it was Vivek Canton who sport the party on that one. I was able to early take second place. Bataro fought back, but Canton went, no, I'm taking this second place. I want to be the guy to chase 
Gomez down. Ian Eichmann's got involved in the act, went through into third place, but Finn McLaughlin with those slightly fresher tyres than everybody else after his retirement in a previous race, previous race was on the charge, moving up past Mataro there, then set about making a move past uh, Eichmann's good opportunistic driving there from the VDK Racing pilot to move up to third, and then was patient to try and find a way past Vivek Kanthan. The battle was raging on behind David Walter and Ian Eichmann's fighting over fourth place. Mataro trying to find a way through there. Not a good moment for the two Sodi carts of uh, Andy Kalsani uh, and Kian Farland. They ended their races along with Hugo Radimets on lap two uh, down at turn number 11. McLaughlin got through past Canton, then set about the charge getting up the road. Meanwhile, Bataro was fighting back, getting through on uh, David Walter there on the fifth lap of the race. Ian Eichmann, who'd lost a couple of positions, had his own fight back, getting past Dmitry Matviev there for sixth place. But after a, a good charge from McLaughlin, he was closing in on Gabriel Gomez. It was Gomez's win to be had. That last couple of laps is where he really uh, performed at his best and he takes the top spot in the intermediate classification. Let's head down to Park Ferme, where Anthony Jordan has Gabriel Gomez with him for uh, a few thoughts from the Brazilian. Over to you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Yes, with our race winner for that one, Gabriel Gomez. Well, Gabriel, what a weekend it's been for you. Some fantastic results, and you secure pole position for the Super Heats tomorrow. That's uh, a great feeling for you. Yeah, I think we are doing a great week so far. Uh, we made only one hit to be perfect on every hit. We win everything and make one P2. I think it's really going so well. Uh, we are just missing a little bit. We are testing some things and now we will try to put everything together for tomorrow final. Yeah, it's certainly going to be uh, an interesting one, isn't it? Uh, talk us about uh, what you've been going through today. Obviously, you've been fighting at the front, but you've not had to fight too much. Does that mean managing the tires has been actually quite a, an easy task for you? Yeah, it was a bit easier to manage the tires, but not so much because this is now in the last hits. We fight a little bit with the rest. And we're seeing, I think tomorrow will be really tight because tomorrow we don't have a lot of tire management for the final. And I think we'll be really tight between the top five. Let's see how it will be. That final might be interesting uh, tomorrow, mightn't it? Because obviously the last time we had the pre-round two weeks ago, it was a wet final. So we've not had a full race with everyone on a brand new set of slicks. How do you think that's going to go? Yeah, it will be new for everyone. Nobody try other race with the new tires. And I don't know how it will be. We will see tomorrow in the final and let's see how it's going for us. It's going to be an exciting one. But uh, congratulations, Gabriel Gomez. Well done. We'll see you on pole position tomorrow for the Super Heat. Thank you. Excellent stuff there for our senior category. Two more races to go. Andrew, let's head back over to you. Thank you very much, Anthony. Cool, calm and collected Gabriel Gomez there. His uh, hard work is done for the day and we'll see him uh, back in Superheat A action tomorrow morning. Uh, one more race to go for OK Junior here this afternoon and it's groups B and C remaining to complete their qualifying heats programme. Nine laps, 13 kilometers uh, for this uh, group of 34 drivers to have their last opportunity at scoring points ahead of those superheats tomorrow. Remember the situation for the OK Juniors. We started with 100 drivers uh, here for round one in Valencia. Only 72 of them will compete tomorrow in the superheats. That'll be halved again uh, tomorrow for the final. So really, if you're in that top 50, this is a race combined with the Super Heat tomorrow that you've got to hit your run of form now to make sure that you get through to the final on Sunday. And uh, a lot to be decided at the top of the order as well. We know who's going to be on pole position uh, for the Super Heats tomorrow. The, uh, a great win for Nicholas Schaufler uh, to take P1, 250 points from a possible 250. We know who's going to be polling the other one as well. That's Dries van Langenonga 241. But everything else further back is all up for debate and decision here in this one. Time, uh, 17.25 here local time. Uh, it's just a, a couple of preparations happening out there on circuit. On the left of your screen, there is Christian Costoya. Very well positioned in the points right now. Looking for another race victory. 
the green light and uh, the green light has been illuminated the whistle has been sounded out go the drivers for their formation laps bit of a delay there for uh, one of the dpks that was uh, bosco arias uh, but out onto the circuit roll the drivers let's have a look through the grid then for this qualifying heat groups b and c christian costoya starts on pole position alongside him is finland's sebastian letimaki Filippo Sala and Alfie Slater start on row two. James Anagnostiadis and Oliver Kinmark on row three. Jacopo Martinezzi and Asher Ockstein on row four. Dean Hugendorn and Bosco Arias complete the top ten on row five. Jensen Burnett and Arthur Huang start on row six. Alexander Dahlstrom and Ethan Lennon go from row seven. And then on row eight, it's Jess Phillips and Matt Corby. Matvey Durdanov and Drew Volt then go from row nine. Efren Durdanov and Jarek Clark round out the top 20 on row 10. Andrea Mani from Casa Aguma. Then it's Paul Antriotis and Joel Pokola on row 12. Thomas Gender and Gilles Herman go from row 13. From Marie Barryberg and Marco Gast on row 14. Archie Owen and Mark Brovko go from the 15th row with Felipe Rice. Uh, Manuel Miguez, Gustavo da Silva and Kip Belowski. And in the pit lane there is Gustavo da Silva. His car has not fired up. He'll have to wait until the grid has gone past. Uh, luckily for them, a Tony Kart mechanic has come to help the Beryl Art team out. Uh, there you go. That's always nice to see. Uh, right, they're going to get the attempt to go here. Good push. 100% effort. Get it going. Is it going to go? Don't go over the line. Don't fall over as well. Nice save. Look at that. And they both stayed above the uh, white line. A good sportsmanship That's a very there good between, sportsmanship uh, between there. the two mechanics on opposing teams. Because as we say, the, the white line is right in front of us here in the comments box. And we have seen... Uh, drivers and mechanics quite literally fall foul of that before. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, Gustavo da Silva will be able to join the race. We're back up to 34 runners. We are. Now, my eagle-eyed walking from uh, Park Ferme back to the commentary box, I go mm -hmm. past via the dummy grid. Uh, and on my trip past there, I was able to spot some tyres. Uh, Excellent. And I can tell you that the front row have both deployed. Brand new set. Uh, I think Costoy has gone for a brand new set on the left-hand side, uh, or the right-hand side, sorry. Sebastian Latimarke has gone for a brand new set on the left-hand side of his cart. Indeed. So the points already decided at the very top. Uh, Schaufel on 250, Van Langerdonk on 241. They can't be beaten. Uh, Lyzen on 200, as is uh, Kamiab. All four of those drivers are done. Minz is done as well on 199. So the best-positioned driver in the intermediate classification is your pole sitter, Christian Costoya on 188. If he wins this race, he takes third in that IC. Are we good for a start here? Yes, we are. Green lights. Oh, there's contact already in the middle of the pack. It's chaos. Oh, wow. Absolute chaos before the drivers have even got to turn one. One of the CRGs is off there. That's the two. Four nine. That's Miguel. Um, uh, that's Manuel Miguez. But that all came from the middle of the pack. Matt Corby's two seven seven is locked together with the two eight eight of Ethan Lennon. They started on the seventh and eighth rows on the outside. But what happened there? That was a really dramatic start there. Amazingly, the uh, rest of the back of the pack avoided it. Well, there you can see a very furious Ethan Lennon, not happy at all uh, with Matt Corby. Now, well, yeah, they, look, the cuts are still tangled yeah. together there. That's uh, an incredible impact that they've had. Well, the race has continued. Uh, big hats off to the marshalling team. They've cleared that quickly. Very dramatic moment. And it is still your man, Christian Costoya, leading the way. Across the line they go. It is Costoya from Letamaki, Sala from Anagnostiades, Martinez from Slater, Hugendorn, Dahlstrom, uh, Burnett and Arthur Quang, who uh, lead the top 10 out there at the moment there. Letamaki uh, under pressure from Filippo Sala. Sala not able to get the move done just yet, if he can at all. Yes, he can. Down the inside through turn seven. Nicely done. Yeah, really good stuff from Filippo Sala. The point situation then. Uh, Costor and Letamaki obviously would, would like to win this race. All of the drivers would uh, like to win this race. It's a good spot, though. They've got some, uh, some strong points over that next group from 200 down. Uh, so uh, for Filippo Sala, I, th I think that's why... Letimaki didn't fight that one too hard. He doesn't need to win this race. He doesn't necessarily need to finish second. A top five will do in uh, this situation because he's got 17 points at the moment over Boris Lyzen in, uh, in, the, in the intermediate classification. It certainly does. Well, Matt Corby under investigation for the start of that one. I do hope we can go back and look at a replay of that start because it certainly was 
an interesting one as we uh, stick with the live pictures here. Top three uh, clearly breaking away there. Jacopo Martinese under pressure from Slater. Slater also deploying a new set uh, on the right-hand side of his cart as well. Uh, and here's a look then at the start. Right, so have a look back to the, about the seventh or eighth row. Uh, right. Oh, and yeah, it was just straight up the back. So it was Matt Corby went up the back of uh, Ethan Lennon there uh, as they went in. And that just forced other carts to go off there. And that was a big shame. And Manuel Reguez all the way at the back of the grid and nowhere to go. He had to avoid. And unfortunately for him, I think he came off worse there. Yeah, he's uh, uh, obviously not too happy about that at all. It's Arthur Huang who moved into the middle first. It, that's, that's the thing. It's so tight. 34 carts all running down, down yeah. towards turn one. We talk about inches in this sport. This is like sixteenths of an inch in this case. Uh, yeah, unfortunate uh, for both of those drivers. But the most important thing is they're both okay. Yep, that is indeed. Well, Sala going for the move there for second place uh, as well. Another one of the uh, replays there. But Latamaki getting back through. Uh, I think Sala got it done. All oh, the debris when they came across there as well. Look at the stones that got kicked up. It's quite a risky one because you don't want to get one of those to the shoulder or the arm or even the fingers out there as well. That can seriously cause a bit of injury there. Yeah, great control from the drivers to uh, not have further incidents through that first corner. We're on lap number four then. Routine race so far for Christian Costoya. Uh, he had some dramas two weeks ago in preparation for this event at this stage. Uh, had problems getting out of the pit lane and uh, I'm wouldn't blame him to think if, the, if those were on his mind uh, in this race, but he's out there on circuit showing what we know he can do here in Valencia. Leads by 0.4 of a second. His defensive gap is back to Letimaki in the points, and it's 24 points. It's, it's quite a healthy gap that Costoya has got, but from a, from a race mentality point of view, he's going to want to win this race. He can keep that form going before he gets into the super heats tomorrow, where he'll most likely at the moment be starting on the outside of the front row. Yeah, certainly. Well, uh, we'll have to see what will happen with it. But certainly, Costoya doing everything he needs here. Salah's going to make it a little bit difficult for him here. Felipe Salah, uh, who's not within the top 10 of the intermediate classification, I think at this point is really just saying, right, I need to just gain as many positions as I can. And like we were saying, the points difference between first and second is quite extensive and could mean the difference of making it through to the final or not. Absolutely. At the halfway stage then, five laps down, four to go. Kostoya, Sala, Letimaki, Martinezzi, Slater. That is the top five. Alexander Dahlstrom has improved well so far in this heat, up six places to seventh. Uh, Kit Belofsky, it, it's a sh such a shame that Kit had the, the, the bad qualifying, there's no other way of putting it, with the, with the spin in turn three or four as someone has just uh, left the circuit, I think. I observed there, there's a yellow flag out at Marshall yeah, Post 3. Jules Herman is off the track. Uh, yeah, it was just right in front of us. Uh, there he is in the uh, 692 BDK. Straight off at turn three. Not sure what happened. Uh, but yeah, it was just outside the commentary box. That's the problem with having massive glass windows <laughs> in the commentary box is that you do see something out there. Sometimes it's difficult not to react to it. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, sadly for Herman, out of the race, was running in 19th spot. Um, to, just to finish the point, Kibalowski on the charge again. He's gained 17 places so far in this race. He's done exactly what he needed to do, of course, this weekend. Bad qualifying. Right, get through these heats, get those results. I mean, he's still he's going to have uh, accumulated not many points uh, from this one. Of course, you get more points uh, for a race win. It's 50 points and so forth. So you still need to gain those uh, points still as uh, Martinez down the inside, moves past Letamaki, gets up into third place. Good uh, run on this one. Uh, started seventh, currently uh, now third. So uh, gained four positions, had a brilliant race so far. Uh, yeah, no, like, like you're saying, Kibalowski d uh, done a brilliant job. He might still have a bit of work ahead of him here, but I think he's certainly secured a spot into the super heats tomorrow. Yes. But he's going to have to seriously come through in those. But I guarantee he's deployed his fresh well, set of tyres already. He's getting some good overtake practice yeah. at least, because that's what he's going to need to do. Two laps to go then. Costoya leads by nearly half a second ahead of Sala. Martinezzi now up to third place. Good move past Letimaki on that last lap. And uh, Martinezzi is, uh, well, has crept into the top 10 in the intermediate classification. Uh, so P9, I'm doing the maths in my head right now, that would be uh, fifth place, I think, for one of the uh, super finals tomorrow. And on the inside, not a bad spot to be in. 
And, uh, well, at the moment, the points would read like this in terms of the order. Schaufler van Landingen Donk, we know that. Kostoya, Letimaki, as down the inside, Slater this time on Letimaki. Letimaki's going to return the favour through turn 13 and before 14. Uh, remember, he has quite a gap over both uh, Lysen and Kamiap in the points. So losing the position to Slater doesn't matter too much for Letimaki in the grand scheme of things. Uh, Lysen and Kamiap, as mentioned, fifth and sixth, both on 200 points. Mins, Arias, Martinez, Baglin. That would be the top 10 at the end of all the qualifying heats for OK Junior if nobody changes position on this final lap. Uh, and judging by the size of the gaps between the drivers, something tells me that ain't gonna happen. That ain't gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's that's gonna be all she wrote on this one. Christian Costoya, brilliant weekend from him. Some fantastic results in this. He will secure uh, a uh, front row uh, start, not a pole position. Will be on the outside of Superheat One. Uh, still a, a brilliant, uh, brilliant result that him uh, he'll have accumulated. Really looking forward to seeing what he can do tomorrow. But yeah, he's just going to have that difficulty of starting from the outside. And we've seen the difficulties of that. We have seen difficulties, but we've seen them be we've overcome the as, well. as well. So yeah. I, th I think for Christian Costoya, he can be very positive about the work done over the last two days. Christian Costoya wins the final heat of the day in OK Junior. And he takes it from Filippo Sala. Jacopo Martinez in third. Sebastian Letimaki fourth. And likewise secures a spot on the front row of Super Heat B by our calculations, provisional calculations, I should say, in the box uh, for tomorrow. Fifth for Alfie Slater. Uh, some really good races from Slater today, uh, bouncing back after a difficult start yesterday. There is your winner, Christian Costoya, on home soil for Powerland Motorsport, takes another victory. Uh, I'm going to be building in confidence, I think, when we were at this stage two weeks ago. His confidence was definitely not, and he didn't quite bounce back, but he's going to be in uh, full vigour, I think, particularly tomorrow with the conditions being the same or near the same uh, as well. Into the pits come the drivers. Uh, Alfie Slater making a quick dash for uh, Park Ferme there. But after nine laps, let's have a look at the provisional results from that last qualifying heat of the round for the OK Junior category. Groups B and C finished in this order. Costoya from Sala, Martinez, Letimaki, Slater, that's your top five. Bosco Arias has had a good uh, two days and uh, scored a lot of points. Their eighth place in the intermediate classification with that sixth place in the final heats. Dean Hugendorn will be a factor in those super heats as well. P7 for the Dutch driver in that one. Alexander Dahlstrom, Jensen Burnett and James Anagnostiaris, that is your top 10. Uh, Matvey Durganov in 11th, ahead of Oliver Kinmark, Asher Oxstein, uh, Jarrett Clark, and Arthur Huang inside the top 15. Jesse Phillips, 16th. Kit Bolofsky halved his uh, grid starting position up 17 to 17th. Uh, 18th was Efim Durganov. Joel Puckler, 19th, ahead of Drew Waltz, who completed that top 20. Uh, Andrea Mani in 21st ahead of Paul Andriotis, uh, Coseo Guma, Marco Gast and Gustavo da Silva after that uh, uh, moment getting out of uh, part, uh, out of the pre-grid for Gustavo da Silva is in the top 25 in the end. Marco Brovko 24, uh, 26 ahead of Owen, Barryberg, Rice and Gender. Those were your top 30 runners. Here are the highlights and it kicked off mere metres from the start line. Uh, five carts off, two of them kept running, but it was out of the race before it had even started for Manuel Miguez there, uh, but quite spectacularly for Matt Corby and Ethan Lennon. Their carts locking together. They've only just uh, been separated as the, uh, the clear-up happens uh, after that race. Battle for second place, Letimaki with the good work earlier on. You didn't need to fight too hard for second place. Uh, Salo recovering after a DNF earlier on in the round needed those points. Uh, a lot of debris at the start of lap two through turn one. The drivers did very well to keep control of things uh, through there. On the move in uh, on lap two as well, Martinez down the inside on Anagnostiadis for fourth place. Out of the race on lap six went uh, Gilles Hermat. The uh, VDK racing drivers had a tough weekend, was one of four retirements in that one. Martinez, he continued to go on the move, this time down the inside of Jakob, uh, down the inside of Letimaki for third. 
but no one was to challenge Christian Costoya in this one. Arguably his most comfortable victory of the weekend so far. He takes it by three quarters of a second ahead of Filippo Sala. Let's head down to Park Ferme where Anthony Jordan has the race winner, Christian Costoya, with him. Anthony, over to you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Yes, with our race winner on that one, Christian Costoya. Congratulations, well done. You've got a front row start for Super Heat 1 tomorrow. You've secured points. It's not pole, it's the outside row. But talk us, that's going to be a fun day tomorrow for you, isn't it? Yeah, of course, the important is to stay in the top five. And uh, it's a weekend that start uh, very good. Uh, uh, every hit uh, improving the constantly and the performance, and that's important for me. And uh, let's see tomorrow starting P2 in the Super Heat A with Schaufler, and uh, let's see. Let's see indeed. Well, today's been a roller coaster of a day as well. Uh, talk us about all the way through today because there's been some uh, interesting races, isn't there? Yeah, of course. Maybe the some the first some races it was a bit more difficult to me to adapt it uh, the track. Now with a half a set of new tires, it's getting better. So for me, I think in the final with uh, four tires, it's gonna be good. Yeah, certainly so. The plan for tomorrow then is just to focus on managing those tyres, managing the race and see what you can get away and how you're going to start from that outside row really, isn't it? Yeah, these tyres a bit, uh, they go down earlier, so let's manage a lot and uh, let's see. Let's see indeed. Well, congratulations. Well done. We'll see you on the front row tomorrow in Super Heat 1. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Excellent stuff there for Christian Costoya. He can have a nice rest now before they start their races tomorrow. Just one more race to go. It's back to the seniors. And as I looked on that grid, there's a fair few new tyres that have been put on those carts. Thank you very much, Anthony. Indeed, one more race to go here this evening. A lovely evening here uh, in Valencia. It's the qualifying heat for Groups B and C in the OK Seniors. 11 more laps to uh, decide all the remaining positions for the Super Heats uh, tomorrow, which you will be able to watch live on your platform of choice. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here today. If you've missed any of the action, you can uh, watch it back, of course. But one more race to go. And uh, as we say, a lot to be decided in this, uh, in this one. There is the 118 of Sebastiano Pavan. The Tony Kart driver will start this one from third on the grid. And uh, the crowd very much looking forward to this one. Uh, it's one of those spots on pole position for Super Heat uh, B still to be decided. We know what's happening with Super Heat A. We know that Gabriel Gomez has got enough points uh, to have locked that one out. Uh, but who's going to be on pole position in the other one? Is it going to be Joe Turney? You can see Joe Turney there in the 105, the Cart Republic on the right-hand side of your screen, starting once again behind Lewis Werrell. Uh, on the outside of row number two. Let's have uh, one more race this afternoon to culminate all of the qualifying heats for round one of the FIA Karting European Championships here in Valencia. Let's look through the grid then for this last one. Zach Drummond has pole position for it. Mega in the timed qualifying yesterday and has got another opportunity here from the front of the grid. Lewis Werrell as mentioned, is on the outside of the front row. The two Britons form up that front row. Sebastiano Pavan on row two is joined by Joe Turney, who has an opportunity here to get past Bataro, Eichmanns, Canton and Legato. Take second place in the IC and with it, pole position for Super Heat B tomorrow morning. Luis Iglesias is on row three, is joined by Miguel Costa, Noah Wolf, and Tame Soleil on row four. Alexander Bondarev and Mark Dubnitsky on row five. Michael uh, Idir and Ludovico Busso on row six. And then on row seven, it's Salim Hanna and Stefano Padani. Sanjao Yu and Marty Rittenen round out row number eight. Dante Vinci and Len Nice on row nine. Tiziano Monza and Jekyll Mikalev, they round out row 10. And the top 20 from Leon Nilsson and Santino Panetta on row 11. Amita Clubisto and Vilma Svan go from row 12 from John Callas and Lewis Bird on row 13. Blake Nash and Sofia Sanfari start at the back of the grid, row 14. Uh, like you talk about there, Gomez obviously did exactly what he needed to do. He secured that pole position, nothing that Joe Turney could do. He can certainly help himself out though, like you said, 
to get on pole position for Super Heat 2 tomorrow. Absolutely. The, uh, to the top five in the intermediate classification right now. They're all done. They're in the clubhouse and uh, hopefully enjoying this race from the sidelines. Gomez, as mentioned, has the lead, 244 points. Magato second on 226. Canthan on 199. Eichmann's 193. Bataro on 191. Turney starts this race on 191. Uh, so a, a decent score, you know, a top 10 would, would get him past those, uh, those four drivers. But Pavan isn't that far behind. Pavan's only nine points further back. So Turney does need to, is almost in a bit of a race with just Sebastiano Pavan from a points perspective to see can he defend that nine point lead over the Italian and can he get enough points to get past, as mentioned, Magato. Canthard, Eichmann and Bataro. We're going to find out in the next 11 laps. We certainly are. On my brief uh, walk again past the uh, the W grid, I did have a inkling at the first couple of rows. I believe the top three rows have all deployed brand new set of tyres on the left-hand side of the cart. Uh, so that should make it nice and interesting in this race. It's the final race. It's the final qualifying heat of the weekend before the Super Heats and Finals. And we go round again. It is a false start. Oh, there we go. That, that, why do they have to do it on the last race of the day? Oh, couldn't they go green flag first time of asking? No, no. There we go. Well, drivers will go round again once more. They'll get themselves sorted out and lined up. Obviously, our race director, Pasquale Lopello, not happy with the start of that one. Uh, they do go round again. They do indeed. Uh, just the rest of the rundown for the top 10 in the intermediate classification before this race. We've talked about the top seven. Uh, Shil Kunas is 8th, Kavalkin 9th and Buzar 10th. Those three drivers are all uh, like the top five uh, done for today. So we'll see if uh, any of the other drivers in this one can punch their way through, particularly the likes of Lewis Werrell, perhaps Zach Drummond, uh, not in the top 10 right now. Noah Wolf has had the DNF, but apart from that, it's been pretty good for, uh, for Noah so far this weekend. Uh, Louis Iglesias as well. A lot could change across the course of these 11 laps. Second time of asking then. Zach Drummond at the front of the order will control the pace. Lewis Werrell will join alongside two drivers who know each other very well, of course. Pavan and Turney on that second row. Costa and Iglesias on row number three. How are we looking this time? There are some gaps uh, in that formation. If they can close up before we get going, we should be good. The right lights are red. Nope, they go around again. Yep, hands uh, going up in the air. They are going around again. Uh, well, this is an interesting one. Uh, I've got uh, the FIA in my ears at the moment, and uh, yeah, I'm hearing a, a lot of chatter there. They're, d they're just not happy with the gaps that are in the, in the field at the moment. That's the main thing they're talking about. That's why we're not going racing. Absolutely. So, well, um, the uh, hand gestures, the instructions will, uh, uh, will of course, be given from the sidelines. We've seen that uh, a couple of times today to uh, close up those gaps. And uh, we'll hopefully get this going on third time of asking. Drummond again on the front row. Werrell alongside. Uh, who are we looking further down the order who could be uh, coming through the order? Uh, Dante Vinci can have a good finish. He's had a difficult weekend. The Australian starts uh, P17 uh, in this one. Vilma Svan, we've come through, seen come through the order as well. Starts P24. And uh, as we've seen with other with other races under the categories, you know, this could be the difference between a driver making the top 72 or not. Uh, 85 drivers in the seniors at the start of the weekend. So uh, a, a stronger percentage of drivers from the initial entry will be going through, but nobody wants to be uh, one of those 13 drivers who will not be making the super heats. How are we looking this time then? Looking a bit better as the drivers go into uh, the tram lines from our uh, angles here. 11 laps on the board for the OK senior drivers. Right to green, away we go for the final time today here in Valencia. Very even start, Werrell challenging Drummond for the lead through the first corner. He's going to be challenging through turn two as well. He's going to at least hold on to second place. 
Very well done by Werrell. Here comes Pavan down the inside, though. Takes the P2 away. Joe Turney's fighting for fourth place at the moment with Iglesias. Ooh. And still fighting oh. with Iglesias. Contact with another one of the CRGs has just about been able to survive. But for Joe Turney trying to get the pole in Super Heat B, that's not the start he would have wanted. No, not at all. And I suspect all the way through that sector, all he will have felt is Cut hitting him in the back there just as he's trying to get round the corner. Well, amazingly, they still continue to go as they uh, exit out. Uh, there's been uh, no drama in the background at the moment, so everyone's still going as we go into the final corner for the first time. Look at the advantage that Drummond's got as Louis Iglesias sees a warning flag here. Yes, indeed. So, end of lap number one, Drummond from Pavan, Werrell, Turney, Iglesias, uh, Soleil, Adir, uh, Costa, Bonder, Evan, Hanna. That is the top ten. How are the points looking? Well, Gomez, we know, has secured first place. 244 points. We'll come back to that in a moment because there's changes in the top ten. Bondarev all over the curb there, fighting with the uh, with the CRGs. The Taint Soleil is coming through the order as well. Uh, in there, and it's Padani. Where has Padani come from? In the Cali card, was uh, in 13th place at the start of lap number two. I think he's gained uh, two, three, four, maybe five positions uh, through the initial phase of the second lap. So let's just get quickly go down the points. Gomez in first place. Turney is in second, but has lost six of those nine points that he had over Pavan. So it's Turney now on 229, Pavan 226. That is enough on a tiebreaker to give Pavan third over Legato. Werrell's up to fifth place in the points as well with this decent start on 214. Zach Drummond as well, moving up the order, is now seventh in those points. Certainly so. Keeping an eye on this one, though. Pavan there in second, holding at bay. Lewis Werrell, Werrell not able to close in just yet. I can see Marshall's running to the final corner out the commentary box window. Something tells me uh, there may be a stricken cart out there. We'll try and figure out what is the situation uh, as we watch here. And it may be Noah Wolf because Noah Wolf has not come through at the end of the last lap and is now showing us in pit lane, the 154 the VAR by Birrell entry. It's had a difficult time so far this weekend. That is a bitter blow to Wolf's hopes. Look at this fight for second place. Pavan, Werrell, Turney. Here comes Werrell down the inside on the Tony card. Sweet move there from Lewis Werrell back up to second place. Yep, nicely done. Here comes Turney, wasting no time, sensing weakness and Pavan checking over not one but two shoulders there's a left hand side right hand side right okay this time i am clear uh no one around me but uh louis iglesias is closing in turney on that charge it's helping him out nicely here now with them points well that uh, not only restores his nine point gap that he had at the start of this race over poan he'll now be extending uh that nine points can he set about overtaking uh, Lewis Werrell has had a lot of battles with the uh, the younger Britons so far this weekend. They've been in every single uh, one of their heats together, grouped together, of course, in uh, in Group C. And it's a 1-2-3 for the United Kingdom right now. Drummond, Werrell, Turney at the front of the order. Zach Drummond, we've been talking about his race pace a lot. We know how quick he is over a single lap round here. Do you think he's got enough to hold off Werrell and Turney for me, it's 50-50 based on what we've seen so far over the last two days. Yeah, I, again, it's a hard one to call. It is around that midfield section, but uh, again, I think tomorrow will explain so many things to us. I yeah. think we're just going to have to wait to see what happens with those super heats. That's where it's going to really going to matter, see who's really looked after everything. I've got to say, Werrell's on one right now. Yeah. He looks so much stronger now than what he did earlier on in the day. He did indeed. And he's, uh, there's potential here for Werrell to move further up the point standings through these heats has got three points uh, it was three point deficit to Pavan so if he makes this move past Drummond that'll be plus six it'll give him fourth place in the intermediate classification over the line to complete lap number five I don't think he's close enough this time to have a go on his compatriot there in the parallel and he's just holding in second place there's a mechanical problem the flag out for Vilma Sarn that is going to be the end of the race uh, for the 158 difficult weekend for Vilma Sarn so far yeah, currently sitting in 27th place uh, at the back of the grid. So, yeah, clearly something's not gone well there at all. Uh, you, you know, looking at this right now, Drummond looking comfortable. Uh, but Werrell, again, also with that fresh set of tyres on the left-hand side, looking 
uh, even faster in this stage right now. He still has to worry a little bit about Turney. Joe Turney and Lewis Wuerl have had some good battles, but Turney's always been on the upper hand of the two of them. Uh, again on that one, uh, I think uh, senior experience coming through there uh, just a little bit. Wuerl still in his uh, first year of senior racing, so still has a lot to learn from the category, doesn't he? He does indeed, but he's learning fast. He is he's learning, learning fast, very yeah. fast, uh, is uh, Lewis Wuerl. Great support from the Forza Racing team. We've had a strong weekend. Joe Turney quite happy. I think Joe Turney's just happy at the moment to sit here in third because gaining positions doesn't, uh, well, say that down the inside, takes second place, does Joe Turney. I was about to say it doesn't gain him anything in terms of uh, in terms of positions. It does extend his gap over Mugato, but, but we're talking a scenario now. If Mugato's going to be super heat, uh, B pole position winner. It's going to be a case of Tony's got to fall back and fall back numerous positions well, for that to turn around. Let, let's think about it in a, in another way. Tony's thinking about the gap between himself and Gabriel Gomez. You know, yep. if, if he can close the gap up to there, it means that he doesn't have to finish so far True, ahead or lower piece, or anything yeah. like that. You know, he needs. You know, he can finish in a good spot. That's what he's thinking about right now. He still gains something from gaining these positions. Absolutely, that's a very good point for the final intermediate classification, where there is another batch of championship points. There is Phil Svan out of this race, and I think the body language it says everything for uh, how the Swedish driver is feeling right now. Yeah, certainly so. Never want to end your last race of the day as well uh, with a technical flag. So, yeah, that is a uh, big, big shame. Well, eyes on this one. Joe Turney closing in on Zach Drummond. Look at this for a battle. This would be a critical one here. Look how dark that rubber racing line is. The marbles that have collected on the outside of turn 14. It's incredible, isn't it? It's uh I think the drivers are very thankful that there's not too much of a oh, turny all over the curb there. She loses out a bit. I don't think he was expecting Drummond to have, well, I think he was expected to have a bit more corner speed. Uh, Drummond is very quick down the straight, but it's through the tight and twisty bits that the power seems to be not quite on full song. Turney is right there now through turn six. Is there going to be an opportunity into turn seven for Joe Turney? He's going to no, he's just going to hold there for now. Good defence from uh, from Zach Drummond. Just to come back to the point on turn 14. Not too much wind here this weekend. We have seen a crosswind. As down the inside goes Turney for the lead of the race. Takes it away from Zach Drummond. Now through turn 14. Need to keep it on the line. Keep it on that rubbing line. Look at all those marbles off to driver's left. You do not want to be there. But Joe Turney doing what Joe Turney does, Ooh. but here comes Zach Drummond back down the inside, oh. where he takes the lead. Lewis Werrell trying to fight through into second place. Once again, Pavan's there, Iglesias is there. Turney now having to defend from the youngster there in third place, and it's a great opportunity for Zach Drummond to break away. I've got to say, Turney did a fantastic job there to keep it within track limits through that final sector here. Here's Iglesias down the inside now of Werrell. Werrell starting to uh, drop down a little bit here, Pavan. Uh, right on that rear bumper. So again, now that's just left a two horse battle, Drummond versus Turney. And Drummond certainly showing his cards. He's gone defensive there in towards turn 11. And again, Joe might have a chance here to get down the inside on the exit. He does keep an eye on Drummond. He does not want to run out onto those oh. marbles. Look how much the back end stepped out there. And that's why you don't want to be on them. There's no grip out there. And thankfully no crosswind this weekend. It would have been really tricky in that part of the course. Joe Turney has the lead. End of lap number 10. Last lap board is Altiziano uh, Monza in the 108. Has received the warning flag uh, from race control. Can Joe Turney come home for another victory? It would move his intermediate classification tally to within three of Gomez. It won't overhaul Gomez at this stage, but it'll give Joe Turney an opportunity in the superheats tomorrow to make the difference and take first place in the final EIC and, of course, pole position for the final on Sunday. He's doing the job. He's ticking these corners off, but Drummond is still there. And if Drummond gets a big slipstream through turn 14 and onto the back straight, he could have a chance. Oh, I don't think he's got the legs in him here. Turney has done what he needed to do. Really smart place to go for the overtake there, I think. You know, squeezing someone out into those marbles. You can't fight against that. And Turney will take the final win of the day here. 
at Valencia. A brilliant drive for Joe Turney. He secures pole position for Superheat 2 tomorrow and he helps himself out massively. Just three point deficit between himself and Gabriel Gomez tomorrow. That's the exciting bit. It is indeed, because of course the uh, the point, the intermediate classification points for those super heats go up by a factor tomorrow. It's 75 points for a win in a super heat as opposed to 50 for the ones that we've seen here today. So uh, not only does the, the, the total number of points goes up, the gap of the points as well. It's a, it's a nine point difference between first and second when we have those super heats tomorrow as opposed to six today. Joe Turney, very good job from uh, from him. The uh, Kart Republic driver will enter uh, the Park Ferme for the final time today. And uh, we'll see Tony and the others back out tomorrow for uh, Super Heat B. Let's have a look through the uh, the provisional order from that last race today here in Valencia. Joe Turney takes it from Zach Drummond by uh, three to four tenths of a second. Louis Iglesias, great drive from the Frenchman into third place. Sebastiano Pavan fourth in that race and also secures fourth place in uh, in the intermediate classification will be on the outside of the front row for Super Heat B tomorrow. Lewis Werrell in fifth also takes fifth place in the IC. That's not a bad spot for uh, the young driver there will be on the inside of row two uh, for one of the Super Heats uh, tomorrow. Miguel Costa sixth, Tame Soleil seventh, Salim Hanna eighth, Marty Ritten in ninth. In, uh, Sun Chao Yu there in 10th uh, place. Let's have a look at some of the highlights here, Anthony, from that last race of the day. Yeah, very interesting race here. The start was an interesting one. Keep an eye on Werrell on the outside there. The 104 trying to hold it round the outside. Runs just that little bit wide, gets on the dirty stuff. Pavan able to get alongside, but through turn two, able to hold it. But again, just snuck down the inside there. That's the critical moment there, down the inside, over the curb. It was a big moment there. Luckily, he didn't lose that chain there through the uh, turn three. We have seen it before, through turn three before. and four, that uh, it can be a, a, a chain breaker. There's a bit of a ride-up moment there uh, for Iglesias, considering where we finished up in this race. It could have been very different there on lap number one. Noah Wolf trying to fight through in the pack. It wouldn't be the kind of race that uh, Noah Wolf would have wanted. He would retire uh, midway through the second lap. Uh, Bondarev, a bit of a quieter race for him this time, with one of the drivers hopping over the curb there in the end would be P14. Very impressed with Lewis Werrell in that race, Anthony. Uh, he took it to some of the most experienced drivers in this category. Uh, getting past Pavan there, holding off Turney for a while, attacking on uh, Zach Drummond as well. I think he could be very pleased with his efforts here today. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's always good to uh, see drivers really biting their way through this field. We've seen some really solid results from some drivers as well. And there has been a few surprises out there as well, but there is some familiar names in that sharp end as well. And that's going to make tomorrow really exciting. This was uh, the exciting moment here. Drummond back down the inside. Uh, and we thought, oh, OK, it's going to get interesting. This was the really dramatic moment. Watch how sideways Drummond goes here. He's on the marbles. We <laughs> look at it go out wide there. But hey, it would all go the way of Joe Turney. Happy result for him. He's done what he needs to do. Qualifying heats went absolutely superb for him. He was sixth at this stage one year ago. Second tonight. He, of course, went on to win the final last yeah. year. Uh, but uh, a lot to happen tomorrow, of course. Six races uh, for us here at Valencia. It all starts at 10 past 10 local time for Super Heat A for the juniors. 10.35 uh, for the, uh, the comparative race for the OK seniors. 11 o'clock start of Super Heat B, first the juniors, then the uh, the OK seniors. Uh, a bit of a gap between the then and the finals. The first final goes off from 1.20 p.m. here in Valencia. It'll be the juniors first with the podium immediately following. And then the final for the OK category as well. That goes off from 2.25 here in Valencia. Uh, do, of course, calculate what that means for your own local time. Uh, but what a day. It's been a brilliant day and a uh, pleasure once again for us here in the box. Yeah, indeed, it has been a big thank you to all the track staff, the marshals out on circuit, to all the stewards, timekeeping, camera crew, everyone here today. It's been an absolutely fantastic day. Thank you so much to everyone watching from around the world. We will see you bright and early tomorrow morning for our Super Heats and Finals for the first round 
of the FIAK, FIA Karting European Championship here at Valencia. We'll see you tomorrow.